What's up everybody, it's your boy Wings of Redemption and I'm back and I'm bringing you another exciting painkiller ready. We have Joe Lowe's on with us today and I think his name is Jimmy Quinlan. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Nailed it. Uh -huh. Nailed it. I thought I was going to say it wrong. Brought to you by Kooky, Kooky Noodles. Noodles. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Best goddamn channel on YouTube. So what does Kooky Noodles play? He plays Battlefield and Minecraft, right? That's right. Battlefield 3, Minecraft. He, he plays all sorts of Minecraft survival mode, adventure maps, uh, multiplayer, hunger games, survival, parkour, etc. Um, check him out. Man's a beast. Absolutely. How do you spell Kooky Noodles? Because that sounds difficult. <laughs> it's K-O-O-K-Y-N-O-O-D-L-E-Z. But they'll see it on the screen. Like a, so you, people in the show don't see the same thing that the... Uh, that that's you guys right. do, yeah. Yeah, see, see, we don't, we don't get all the fancy graphics that you guys do. No, that, that's just for the listeners. We're so, bare bones. Yeah, they're on bare bones. But anyway, yeah, Cookie Noodles, check him out. He's a beast, and um, he supports PKA, so I like him. I, I got a question with, with the graphics, since we're on them. Yeah. Are we still doing the Rust graphic? Yes. Okay. I like the Rust graphic. You do too, a lot right? of people don't. <laughs> a lot of people suck at the game. That thing's terrible. <laughs> you know, you know there, there's a thing called opinion. And a lot of people don't know the difference between an opinion and a fact. And they, they need to it wrap their heads opinion, around that one. I think it's pretty much a fact that a lot of people agree that it's terrible. <laughs> All right, now, well, you know, once you nail down what a lot is, then I think what you've got, and you have this a lot of times, is a vocal, uh, a vocal minority. Well, let me say the opinion. And a silent majority. In the comment section. Well, oh, oh yeah, those guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, oh, so there were a couple to choose from, and this one I thought was the best. I can switch it up, um, but it, it might be a downgrade in my opinion. You know, you, you got to pick from what you get. I, don't I know. think anything other than what we're using right now. Like would ten be a year olds out there with finger paint. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Dude, Wait. it's awesome. I don't know what you're talking Wait, about. I mean, I can understand that you don't like it, but there's no need to shit on it that hard. You... <laughs> yeah, Wings is like has something personal against the graphic artist. Apparently. I got nothing yeah. against the graphic artist. I have no clue who designed it. Wings he's like, it are... almost looks like that faggot Jimmy Joe did it. And he's like, Jimmy Joe did do it. Yeah, I know. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Wings treats our graphic artists like Lefty treats black people. Oh, yeah, right? God. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Racist Lefty. At least you got it out of the way. There we are. It's, we're not done yet. Damn it. <laughs> and, oh, and by the way, if you want to advertise on Painkiller already, send an email to heather at woodysgamertag.tv. Not your penis. She doesn't like yeah, that. No, definitely do not send your penis pictures to heather at woodysgamertag.tv. Yeah, no more penis pictures. Pen you know, pictures like of that. your junk to heather at woodysgamertag.tv. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, Joe. We want you to weigh in on the uh, Wings of Redemption Woody's Gamer Tag Wrestling match. I gotta hear. So, how did this come about? No, let me let me let me fill this one. Mm. The idea was this. All right, I'm not a good fighter. I'm not, I'm not even remote that I'm any kind of good fighter. I'm a cheap shotter. But somehow, Woody thinks he can stop me from choking him out with me starting in the choke with my weight about to go onto him. Yeah, so we're in a standing position, and he's behind me with what might be an RNC. Uh, I don't know if he knows what that is. Rear naked choke. All right, and uh, but like you know, does he know the grip? Does he? I don't know. I don't know. But um, that's where we start, and the question is, where's your money? I'm still gonna go on Woody. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Because wings, if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna just fuck it up, or maybe break Woody's neck. But <laughs> well, there's a possibility. Decapitate. Yeah, I mean, there's a good chance I'm stronger than Woody. Yeah, almost for sure. Even if, even if it's sunk, are you going to know if it's sunk, though? You know, like, you, if, if you don't know what you're doing, you won't know if you have him or not. You could have him in the choke and then adjust and let him go. Like, well, <laughs> let me ask you this. Let me get some personal advice while we're here. No, no. <laughs> what should I do? You need to, you want your elbow lined up perfectly with his chin. Fuck okay. You, Joe. And you don't want to choke him with your forearm <laughs> on his neck. You want to get him with your bicep in your forearm on each side of his neck. Yeah, I was going to actually use the uh, the joint. Yeah. The, the well, joint? I think that's what he's saying though. To line up the joint with yeah, his. That's why I was going to hook him in with the joint on the elbow. Yeah. Last yeah. time, like, last time Woody choked me, he used his forearm. It hurt like hell. I did not. I know how to <laughs> drop an RNC. Bullshit. Dude, I'm I'm, I'm over there. I'm going. It hurts really bad. Like, I was gonna, I was gonna oh, your baby. I was going to like do the wrist, <laughs> like like grab my wrist. That won't uh, work. Okay, so... Let me God damn you, Joe! 
<laughs> I, I mean, one, of, one of the scariest moments of my yeah. life is when oh. Joe was like, Joe was like, all right, I'm going to choke you out now, yeah, and I'm not going to stop well, no matter what. I was actually worried about is the actual take. <laughs> I, I, I picture him flailing. Wait, let like, Joe demonstrate the choke hold that they, you are planning to kill Woody with. Okay. One, grab your bicep, back of the head. And then the super secret pro move is put your chin on top. Ooh, I like that. Because if I'm just here, he'll pull my hands off. If I put my chin on top, he's got nothing. And that, uh, if you do, if you can get there, Woody's going to sleep. I, I think Joe's just <laughs> lowered my chances of winning by a lot. But he, here's, 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 the, here's the thing. I want to get him to the ground when I, when I sink it in. Because that's where my power is. Like, if I get my weight <laughs> on top of him with the choke, I don't think he has enough power to get out of that. I love it. That's where my power is. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he reminds me of like God of War, that uh, that one god who was like Mother Earth made out of like <laughs> rocks. Wings' and power and stuff. is harnessing I, I, the I'll Earth's gravity. Wings has got a lot of potential energy stored up. In his body. If he gets it, if he gets it turned into kinetic, you better watch the fuck out. Wings is like, I want to have a battle, and basically, I'm gonna start at the top of a ramp like Indiana Jones, and I'm gonna come rolling after you. <laughs> Can we not discuss the Spartan going prone? Can't fucking momentum. Yeah, you know, I was uh, pretty much like eighty percent of my strategy was on wings, not knowing how to sink a choke, like not like it. Yeah, but but he just said like I was halfway there with my choke. I was going to do with no experience. Kind of. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, also, what he was banking on you not knowing how to keep him from getting out of it. It doesn't and, matter. And Joe just kind of helped you on that. But the funniest part about the genesis of this fight is that every single time, Wings would put himself in a more and better yes. and better advantageous position. Like, okay, well, w well, wait, what if I started behind you? Well, because I know, I, know it's, <laughs> right. it's, it's, I have no endurance whatsoever. I'm 400 pounds. But, like, I mean, hold on, hold on. First, we were standing. And that was that. That was cool. And then we were standing yeah, with you behind me. Like, yeah, and then you were standing right, with you behind you me with the choke. And Let's now we're standing with you behind me with the choke sunk, your chin on your fucking other hand. <laughs> just walking yeah, this yeah, in. We'll, we'll start this fight off mano a mano with me with a tough stun gun. Right, it, it, it's going to get to the point where like, all right, before the, the fight begins, I put a knife in your lung. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that. I don't need that kind of. Just give me some face and stun gun. Maybe a maybe one of those horns. <laughs> I uh, want to see this fight. I want to see this fight. This would be an epic, uh, epic uh, live stream. The would live you stream. Pay, would you fight. pay money to see this fight, Kyle? I would pay money to see that fight. I would. <laughs> Nine I would. I, I would throw. I would throw five dollars down like it was nothing just to see that fight. Damn. That puts the money down on your wings. Depends on what kind of action I would get again, but <laughs> well, I put money on wings. Two to one on me. Two to one. How about three to one? <sighs> three to one? I I don't know. It's kind of low for a novice taking on somebody that has had some trade. Even with Joe Lozon giving you pro tips, I still it. The, 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 <laughs> the thing I'm the, – my, my, my ace in the card is obviously if I sink the choke in, you're going to lose half your power. A lot of your strength is gone at that point. And then once you get to the ground case, where all of your I've power is. Every, every time I've ever been choked, I just feel weak. Mm -hmm. I don't think is that how you're supposed to feel? No, not really. So I always say, like, if you're getting choked out, it's like your vision closes out and then you're, you're waking up. Well, maybe it's because I'm so heavy and I have to use so much energy. I wake up dreaming of, like, playing Super Mario and, you know, on old school Nintendo. I hear, like, the little theme song in my brain, but... <laughs> That's usually me. It, it, to me, I, I feel like I'm a different person. Like, like I just witnessed a choke out, not fully putting together that it was me. That, that, that that's, <laughs> that's where that happened. Jimmy, you've been choked out before. Describe it. Yeah, I actually thought I had like died. Actually, I was like waking up thinking, did I like die? Like, what happened? It was a very like weird. I've only been choked unconscious once, and it was in the middle of a big tournament, and everyone was watching. It was very embarrassing. Uh, dude, oh, it it's embarrassing for. And it shouldn't be that embarrassing, right? Like, it's happened to anyone that's rolled. I was embarrassed when I let um, Ricky, you, you probably know Ricky Lindell. He intentionally, I was sitting in a hotel room and, you know, I, I sat in a chair, he choked it out, we were filming it, the whole thing happened. And afterwards, I was very much embarrassed. Like, everyone knew what happened except me. I was trying to play it off like I understood what just went down. And, and, we, and we fucked it up. We were going to sharpie yeah. your so we screwed it up. You oh, dick, man. That would have been awesome. Everyone's like laughing and giggling. Maybe that's why I was so embarrassed. Because there, 
they're giggling at it and I wasn't quite sure what the joke was. Like everybody knew it but me. And then I went back to my room at the end of the night and I filmed like my own vlog and I have this like new freckle on my forehead that I wasn't familiar with. And then I realized I had Sharpie on my head all night long <laughs> and nobody told me about it. Rotten bastards. It, it was one little dot and we're in Japan. <laughs> how, how many, it wasn't, you weren't going to see people you knew from work or, you know. Whatever. No Next time I see you, I'm cutting you. How's your eye? <laughs> or of your forehead or whatever. Oh, uh, it's getting better. I, I keep getting that grass and stuff done, so that makes it pissed off and angry. But yeah. overall, it's, it's getting a lot better. Can you describe yeah. that for the show? Yeah, so b basically, grassing is, they take like a metal tool, uh, not a whole lot different than like a butter knife, and they basically just keep scraping at the scar tissue on my forehead. So... It gets pretty. It, it gets pretty flat. It's not that bumpy underneath, but there's definitely some scar tissue under there. So they basically just keep rubbing this butter knife along the scar until you know it breaks it up a little bit, and I can actually feel it tearing. But it's ah. it's it's not sharp like a butter knife, right? Like I, I saw the device. It, it looks to me like a rounded edge, oversized tongue depressor. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it's got like a bevel on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's it's definitely it's not sharp. It doesn't cut me. It's nothing like that. But I mean, it's. It's pretty painful. It, it kind of feels like if someone was like digging car keys into my forehead. It's pretty much like that's like the best way to describe it. Yeah. yeah. I, he was he was telling me about it, and I was like, "You should make a video." And you're like eating a ham sandwich when they do it, and he's like, "No, it's excruciatingly Dude, painful." So, yeah. He he told me about it, and he's like, "Man, they practically have to strap me to the table. It's so painful." He hated it, and then he did make a video about it. You saw it happen on video, and the whole time he played it off like the pain didn't impact him whatsoever. Like it was no yeah, big that, deal. That day, it just happened that day wasn't that bad. Like I, I went uh, yesterday, and mm -hmm. it was really bad. Like I was like jumping off the table yesterday. It's like some days it's really, really tender. Some days it's not too bad. Do you ever have anger towards the guy inflicting the pain on you? Uh, no, not too much. I mean, it kind of, it, it hurts, but it almost like, it, it almost hurts and feels good at the same time. It's kind of weird, you know, because I can, I can feel like the scar tissue going away. Like I can feel it breaking up. And, and so that part's obviously good. I mean, that's so what you're I'm, doing this to remove scar tissue? Yeah. It is almost like, um, it's almost, it almost felt like a zipper underneath. So, like everybody that's been badass has had scars on their face. There's like no downside. It's not about that. It's it's yeah. so that it won't tear open next time he gets hit in the head. Oh, when yeah. a fighter has a scar, especially like on their forehead, it's like prone see, to be reopened oh. again. You see right there? Yep, we're getting so, I mean, it. it's not it's not so much what's at the what's on the skin level, it's underneath. It was like raised way up. Hmm. So that, that was the issue. Yeah, so he wants it to be more durable and uh, I guess be less pro protruding, I don't know. So that I just, uh, I just don't want to split open later. Yeah, I guess you, you should just be an underground pit fighter and just wear like a mask, like a domino. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the luche mask, right? <laughs> It'd be more badass if it was like across my eye, <laughs> my cheek a little bit, and right across. Look like Squall eye. from Final Fantasy VIII. When I when I'm in pain, like when someone inflicts pain on me, it is directly linked to my anger. Like I have had thoughts of beating up my barber before. It's like, you know, it fucking hurts. You're slamming the comb into my head or whatever. Knock it off. Oh, come on, the clippers are pulling now. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, <laughs> when you use the clippers, don't hit me with the pokey part. What's that all about? But I, I, <laughs> I guess... What, is your barber blind? <laughs> Dude, I, I, I think I'm like some sort of hair sissy. Because really, when... When they poke me with like they'll drop a comb, it'll be like snap and, and it'll like snap into my head and then they'll comb it. And it's like, what is that? Why can't you gently comb hair? Or um, when they do the clippers, you know, they, the, the guard thing that makes it like a number two or a number four or whatever. It's supposed they, to make your hair stand up to make it easier to. If they and it, it creates a barrier, right? It's like a thickness. And uh, um, if they hit me with the pointy ends at the, you know, the little prickly things, I don't like it. It hurts. What do, you, what do you need to man the fuck up? <laughs> it seems like your sissy poking. pants are all full well, it, no. <laughs> well, it be friends, you got to take it to the next level. <laughs> no, I'm not saying anything. I'm just thinking it. <laughs> you're allowed to think it, right? You're only responsible you for murder, your actions. You had your murder, fan, murder fantasies about your barber because they hit you with the comb too hard. And you're trying to say you're not a pussy? <laughs> I, that sounds kind of badass when you describe it that way. Am I the only one that sees this? Yeah, uh, I think so. I, I see it. I see it. No. See, thanks, uh, Kyle. Yeah, like, thanks. No, I got. I got to go. There. Gangster go there. that Woody, would like that Woody. the barber is like afraid when he's shaving him. Woody, what <laughs> happened with the straight razor back in the day? Like, what? 
How was those thoughts? <laughs> you know, my barber shaves the um, the hairline in the back with a straight razor, and it's really? pretty bad. At, yeah, like, he's like old school. And uh, um, I wish I could find a barber that would shave a beard. He won't do it. I asked him how much it costs, just because I was thinking of treating myself, and I've never had like somebody else shave my beard. And he said that he didn't do it, that it would be like crazy expensive because it's really time consuming. Uh, if, if he's good, it shouldn't take that long. Why, Why is it time consuming? It, like, it takes me like a novice at beard shaving, like five minutes to shave my beard. Woody's got a pretty manly beard. That's with though. a safety <laughs> razor though, right? That's not a straight razor. That, that's with like taking the buzzers and just buzzing it all off and shaving yeah. over it. Yeah. When he's talking about a straight like, razor though, like a blade. Yeah. You can buzz it off with the other thing and just shave me with a straight razor when it's stubble. It's going to take a long time. Someday and I want to try it. Cutting your head off. <laughs> like, barbers used to do it. Like, what, what's this CCS barber you go to now? I, I think it's a skill. I don't think it's like, they're like, they're like nah, I don't want to do it. I think they're like afraid they're going to cut your throat. Yeah, I couldn't take a straight razor to somebody else's face. Oh, um, I'd be terrified. Whenever I see it in movies, I'm like, bullshit. I'm gonna. I want an. I want like a 60 year old dude doing this. I don't want some like hot chick doing. It. You always see, like like in the new James Bond movie. He like hands it to like some hot ass chick. I'm like, bullshit. how do you, how does she have this skill? Wouldn't the, wouldn't the hot <laughs> chick be better because she has to put like makeup on her eyelids and shit? Dude, she's not putting makeup on me. She's using. She's literally yeah, has she a razor blade, shaving my throat. Kyle, I, I wouldn't see you fighting off some girl that was trying to do anything to you. I have fought off girls <laughs> with razor blades before. <laughs> Psycho bitch. But they weren't trying to shave you. No, they weren't. They were trying to do other things. Yeah, yeah. Well, she wanted me to use the razor on her, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, of course. You need to write a yes. book. You I just let that really one hang out there. Wait, have I never told that story before? No, actually, I've no. The, I've heard the punch in the face one. I'm familiar with the pun the punch me in the face. I didn't one. punch her. I slapped her, and and just so everyone's clear, she <laughs> asked me to chick? slap her, and she was down with that. Yeah, that was right. But was this the same girl that you slapped in the middle of IHOP though? Like you, um, you took it? No, it was it was in a hotel lobby. It wasn't an IHOP. Oh, I thought it was okay. Never mind. Um, but I slapped the shit out of her. <laughs> Hopefully, it wasn't <laughs> a Russian waitress. Did, was she asking for it? Did she, did she legitimately want to be slapped? <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, what did did she ask for? It? Did she honestly want to be slapped? Yes. In the hotel lobby? Yeah. Okay. All right. Joe, yeah. Jimmy, ever hit a girl? I shake them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that isn't that I like get, a. I got a girl in my gym, right? Dasha, that would yeah. beat the crap out of. Hit really? Yeah. yeah. She she's super tough. Like like I, we'd be. She, uh, she's had a, she's had one amateur fight for us, but she's a badass. If I don't hit her, she hurts me. You have to hit her. <laughs> <laughs> We've had guys that have been training with us for like uh, Chris, Chris that I. Uh, oh right, his, right. He was he was uh, he sent me a text message one night like you got to talk to Dasha. I think she broke my arm because she kicked him so hard. Like she's a badass. And so God damn. If fights, she's got to get punched. Was was it broken? Uh no, he ended up being okay. Just a really bad bone bruise. Damn. Damn. Yeah. So, Jimmy, how'd you get into fighting? I kind of just naturally, I was wrestling all the time. Actually, going down to Joe's place was my first real exposure to MMA back in the day. Um, I had been doing a little bit of jiu-jitsu, but I was wrestling at Bridgewater State, and Joe, his uh, school used to be right on campus, basically. It was the next street over. So, um, just going down there and training with a lot of these guys for their fights and stuff, and it was just kind of natural for me to start fighting myself. All right, so what happens when you two roll? Give it up. What happens? Jimmy is a lot bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's right. You're at 185, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's a Joe's at 155. Heavier than me. Oh, I forgot. I thought it was in my head. It was 170 and 155. But to answer your question, I whoop Jimmy's ass. <laughs> 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 uh, have you rolled with Ricky Lundell yet? I have not. Joe speaks the world of him now, so I'm really looking forward to getting that opportunity. But I hear he pretty much kicked my ass, so I, I'm looking forward to it. Ricky's a beast. Somehow this guy seems to beat everybody. And and to look at him, like, he's just not that big, you know? It, 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 what would he fight at if he was in, in the UFC? Would he be at 155? Uh, 45, maybe even 35. Really? Yeah, because he walks at probably 50, 55. 
I think when he, I think he wrestled at like 32 or something. Does like Jimmy play video games? He does. Uh, I played COD with him. Yeah, he plays Halo. Does he? Can he take Master Chief? Uh, yeah. <laughs> In the suit or out? It doesn't uh, matter. He's a super soldier either way. Dude, yeah. so the thing that the thing that impressed me about Ricky in the beginning, like the very first day I met him, was the fact that I, w- I was in Vegas for they have a, a fighter summit meeting where they basically bring all the fighters in once a year and just talk to us about like like boring stuff. Don't do steroids. Put them away money for taxes. All that kind of crap. And uh, I had a fight coming up, so I, I went. I wanted to go train, and I was going to go to Frank Mears like personal gym, like and uh, and because Mears boxing coach is really good friends with my boxing coach, so I was go get a workout in, you know, hit some mitts, whatever. And I was like, oh, you know, Mir's grappling coach is here. You know, Ricky, you should, you know, bring, get your stuff. You know, you can train with him. And I'm starting to think, like, Frank Mir's a heavyweight. He's, like, 260 pounds. He makes weight at 260. Uh, you know, probably walking at 270, 275. This monster. Like, how the hell am I going to work with his grappling coach? Like, oh, he's 150 pounds. So he's, like, 120 pounds lighter, and he's, he's Frank Mir's coach. Yeah. Like, yeah. Great. Ricky's a monster. <laughs> and he's a he's a pretty nice guy too. I I liked him. Hey Wings, did you want to talk about North Korea? We can. <laughs> what do you got going on with North Korea? Like, what's the deal here? Did, what? What do I have going on with North Korea? No, lay it out. What do you think of the North Korea situation? Man, you ever you ever see a little kid that's like in the lunch table at school and he's like he's all big up he's like got really long arms but he's like maybe 90 pounds and he's ready to fight because he thinks he's the best that's North Korea <laughs> no I mean North Korea North Korea for for as much as we make fun of them they I mean they do have a one million man standing army um, North Korea would fuck South Korea's world up if it yeah, was just Kyle, North Korea Kyle, Kyle, and Kyle, South Kyle, Korea let's be honest here that one million man standing army is not trained that one million no, man dude, they're trained. You've seen no, them no, out there no, no, walking. No. You see how coordinated no, no, they are with those high kids? Ones <laughs> those are the best ones, though. Yeah, you see like yeah, the 20,000 that, that they, they actually have food and clothes. This and... fact alone, if you're between the age of 15 and like 47, you're in the Army. Like it or not. Dude, I, I don't. You give, a, you give an assault rifle to a 15-year-old, he's just as dangerous as a 25-year-old. I, I understand that. If you give an assault rifle to a 15-year-old, he's just as dangerous. But the fact is, you ever seen Spartans? They're not going hand to hand. Why are we doing Spartans? Spartans. Spartans. Of course, I see Spartans. I remember them from high school. Are we talking about the ones in? Are we talking about the ancient Greeks, or are we talking about the futuristic super soldiers? We're talking about the ancient Greeks here. But the fact is, a trained soldier is better than an untrained soldier. Not if you you dope a kid up on PCP and shit. Yeah, he can kill somebody, but he's not going to beat a fucking Bravo team. I don't know, man. I, I. I, I think North Korea could really fuck up their region. Well, what was the what was the ratio from the last Korean conflict? Was it like twenty five to one? We I, killed twenty five of those. their people to every one of ours. I don't have those numbers. I know China kind of came in and whipped our ass. That happened. They they, mm-hmm. they whooped us for a while, but we pushed our way back off of the bay. They had us put up onto a hill, and we pushed them way back, and then we signed a treaty. Right, we, well, we no longer have the amphibious the army sorry, to, 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 to land serious ground forces wings. We no longer have that. that we uh, have the ground forces over there, though, Lefty. It's called the demilitarized zone. It's the DMZ. We have awesome. a fully functional military base in South Korea. We don't need to land shit there. Yeah, but it's not that many. It's it's like 40,000 times. Yeah, but that's a, that's a hub. If they attack us, that's enough to keep us there to la- allow us to get troops to South Korea. I, it depends what you're talking about. Are you talking about wondering if South Korea is a threat to the United States as a country, or are you talking about the United States as a threat in general? Or excuse me, or North Korea as a threat in general? I mean, they they Do can I play havoc with the nuke us? I don't think there's a dog shit chance in hell that North Korea can nuke us. Maybe they'll nuke South Korea. They'd have a, they'd have better luck FedExing us an, a nuke than launching one. But that's I mean, a reasonable yeah, they thing. They literally right? would be, have a better luck putting a nuke on a ship and smuggling it into the country. But you, that's a legit threat to me. Like it, so I remember I used to surf a lot, and people would be like, "That shark's not dangerous." He'd take like one little nip. That's unacceptable. Like even <laughs> a small shark bite is not okay. Like ah, you lose your calf, maybe. No, that sucks. I don't want to lose my calf. So if if North Korea were to attack, and they'd be like, "Dude, their best case scenario is they knock out like New Orleans." Like that's not okay. You know, if New the best Orleans, they can how, do, how, how they get to New Orleans, dog? They can't get there. There's a port there, right? If, yeah, if they go around <laughs> South America, if the best or, they or can do, Florida. do you yeah. think they're going to go through the Panama Canal with us guarding it? What if they put a nuke 
in a freaking Toyota Corolla and put it on a ship. It's going to go somewhere in California. The the okay, then. So then they knock out Toyota Corollas, Woody. It would be a Kia. It would be a Kia. It would be a Kia, but that's South America. <laughs> South Korea. Calling me a racist. I, I, I mean, let's all be honest. How well, let's big be honest. It, really it, fit it wouldn't even be a Kia. It'd actually be like a 57 Chevy. They haven't got cars in that country in a long time. Uh, Kim well, Jong-un's probably got a Lambo or something. <laughs> but anyway, they put it in the trunk of a car. You can pick whichever racist car left he wants. And then <laughs> the, the, the thing ships. It ends up at some port. And it goes boom. That's a major problem. It, 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 that is a, as a feasible, but yeah, that's more feasible than them actually shooting it at us. Yeah, they, they've got mid-range did, missiles that can they launch a missile into off. space? Did they make what? it? I thought they did. I thought they had a Yeah, but launching something into orbit is, is completely different than launching a... a yeah, they have, launching it ICBM. straight up is a lot better than launching a trajectory and actually hitting something that you want to hit. What if they nuke, like, Canada by accident or something? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Damn it, we missed. God. But yeah, in, two in, countries upset what it. would Canada do? Do you think Canada would respond back with a full military strike, or would they just be like... But you see, what eh. do they hit? Do they hit They'd a apologize. major population? Population center, or do they just nuke like some part of their? I, I the imagine Yukon them nuking they like the Canadian a wilderness about. somewhere in Ontario, just like. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they care about that. They just be like, eh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> I think they should care. I think if, if you... they just created a big hole in the wilderness that nobody goes to, I don't think that'd be that big of a deal. Really? It I wouldn't be. It wouldn't be like a full big... like. Let's go NATO and invade them now. I mean, I'm sure they would, they would well, offer strike. Well, let's Imagine you make it to your house and somebody shot a big old hole through your room, and you weren't there. <laughs> nobody got hurt, but there's a big old hole in your room now. You want justice, nobody... or are you gonna let it go? I mean, I want justice, but not to the point of I'm gonna go kill the person that did it. Yeah, that's 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 the problem though. Like, if we attack North Korea, we're gonna be killing a bunch of people that are just brainwashed. Oh, those people are so brainwashed too. I, if anyone who's not seen the documentary about North Korea on Netflix, you gotta watch that. Those people are outrageous. And some of it, like, so I read an article. It was on Reddit actually about someone who lived in North Korea for a while, and uh, it was interesting what they were saying. They're like, some people are feeling it. You know, they're actually brainwashed. <clears throat> and then there's a lot of people who just almost compete to fit in. Like when, <laughs> um, is it, who was the older one? Kim Jong-il? Kim Jong -il. Yeah. Mm. When he died, they were mourning in the streets. And then it was almost like people were looking at each other to see who was mourning loudest, who was not <laughs> mourning loud enough. They're judging each other. Like, you're not mourning quite like you ought to mourn. I could report you for that. And, and there was just this huge kind of like mourning competition that to us, you see people wailing in the streets in a way that seems kind of weird. Hey, let, 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 me, let me throw some numbers out here. The Korean People's Army Air Force has 1,642 planes as of last count. All right. The United States Air Force has 5,484 aircraft, 450 ICBMs, and 63 satellites capable of ground strikes. Wait, wait, we have satellites capable of ground strikes? Yes. Are you sure? It's right here. Right here. Right here. Mean they just, they just, Is this coming we, from Wikipedia? <laughs> yes, it is coming from Wikipedia. <laughs> I, I, are you sure, Wings, you don't mean that they can coordinate ground strikes? Because I don't think there are missiles I'm, orbiting in space. Yeah, I'm nervous. I, I, I don't know. A satellite they capable of... But they got 63 satellites working for the Air Force. By tomorrow... The North Korean page. By tomorrow, the Wings of Redemption rear naked choke is going to be on this Wikipedia page as one of, one of the America's <laughs> weapons. <laughs> <laughs> We'll send Wings of Redemption over, hit you with that RNC, it'll be done -zo. Yeah, but you, you, people make fun of Wikipedia. Most of the 99% of this shit's legit. I agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's a pretty good source, especially if you really want to look into it. Like, it's a nice place to start, and you can check their sources and, and do your thing. It's right, not as worthless. Stuff is I'm just saying, but like, it says right here they got 110,000 in the Air Force in Korea. We have 106,000 Air Guard, 71,000 Reserve, 185 Standby Citizens, and 300,000 Active. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody would make the argument that we could that yeah, but the fact lose is, a mechanized Force, war, war against, dude. against North Korea. But I think the big fear, the somewhat irrational fear that everybody has is the, the fear of nuclear weapons being used against really anybody. Because even North Korea has to understand that they will be turned into a parking lot if they initiate nuclear war. 
All right, Jimmy, lay it down for us. What's going to happen if we get into a war with North Korea? Knowledge on the subject is not required to express your opinion on this show. Um, <laughs> disclaimer, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, I'm guessing we're going to have bombs everywhere um, and a lot less Koreans in the world, I guess. <laughs> that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good uh, estimate. I'd say so, yeah. All right. Dude. I like the way Joe ran from the camera. Dude, I, Joe's I, like, I don't want no part of this. Our planes <laughs> destroy them. The, the, Korean, the Korean air fighter is the T-50 Golden Eagle. That's what their main air force is made up of. That means nothing to me. Yeah. T-50 oh, Golden the T-50. Eagle? Oh, they're not working with the T-49 anymore? <laughs> well, the, the fact is... <laughs> the downgrade. The fact is, it's nowhere near as good as ours. Like, right. Of course not. Were we not. working on the T-66? Sounds about right. I'm looking at the <laughs> T-50 Golden Eagle... It looks like a jet with fighter stuff on it. it it's I, like I was looking for a prop plane or something. It's not. I mean, a it's, prop plane. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a Cessna. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking not. at it. Oh wait, wait, wait! I'll try to put it on the uh, on on the thing. You guys won't be able to see it, but my viewers will. <laughs> yeah, there, but, this is what it looks like. Here's something. To look at Woody. Look at the Harrier jump jet. That's a that's something we made in the '70s. Just look at that compared to the Golden Eagle. This thing looks like something that Tom Cruise would be proud to rock. Yeah, right? No, 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 no. This looks like something that they would, like, train pilots in. Go look, go look at a Harrier jump jet. T-50 Golden Eagle. This is our 70s technology. What are you talking about, Wings? This isn't bad. It's not bad, but it ain't going to beat what we have. I can't Nobody's tell by that. looking we, at it. <laughs> wait, here's we the need thing. Socrates here. Where is Socrates at? <laughs> here's the thing that everybody needs. The, 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 the realistic concern about North Korea is the idea that they're going to destabilize that region, which is yes. South Korea and, um, and Vietnam and China, which is a really big concern. The big concern is World War III. That's the big concern. Yeah, exactly. But, but, the, but the point is destabilizing the region. Them nuking us... The, a lot of that's just bluster because Kim Jong Un feels like he needs to assert his dominance, just like his father did. But the idea that they're crazy, somewhat crazy people that lie about a whole lot of stuff that have weapons that they can use to really do some damage, because prudence demands in these kinds of things that sometimes armies need to react to things that you know people that that other armies do. Nobody's really going to give you know my jokes aside that. North Korea free pass, like, oh, it's okay, Kim Jong Un, it's okay, but they're not going to do that. Somebody told me something about them believing in a magical unicorn. Is that a thing? I don't, I don't know. Cool as shit, shit. If they if they nuked us and in retaliation, China nuked them five times. They're like, we got your back, dog. Joe, what are you looking at? Nothing. Nothing. Joe looked really concerned. Yeah, for a you are. I, looked, I was kind of interested in something. Okay, so, I was like, is something on my face? What's I think he was. I think he was passing along some nudes on his cell phone a minute ago or uh, something. Yeah. Cause... So we started talking about all the different jets, and then I, I I told Jimmy when I I went over to Kuwait and Iraq, and I got to see a whole bunch of uh, military bases, and I got to see the it wasn't an A10 Warhog, but it was some kind of bad. I started talking about the A10 Warhog. And then I saw some kind of badass, like, Apache, Apache helicopter. That's what it was. And I have a picture of me, like, holding the rounds. And, like, they're, like, the size of my forearm. Yeah, it's a 30 millimeter. It's huge. Yeah, it's fucking enormous. So, I was, I'm, so that's what I'm looking for. But Is that the one where they invented the plane to just to have a spot for the machine gun? Are you, are you yes. familiar with this story? No, that was the, the A-10 Warthog. They built the plane around the, the gun. Yeah. And it, it normally goes the other way, but... Yeah, the gun yeah. Was so I, there's badass. some YouTube videos of, of like A10 Warhard strikes on buildings, and it's just outrageous, ridiculously awesome. Like people love that. Like the that's one of the most revered planes in the military, isn't it? Like everybody's like, oh man, it's an ugly plane, but uh, God, it can gets the it can fly done. missing like two thirds of its wings or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm serious. Go look it up. I'll, I'll find it. Oh, I had my next topic and I lost it. I lost it based on Joe's like intense concentration. I know. And looking at A10 Warhog actually makes me want to play a shitty Black Ops 2 game. I like Black oh, Ops 2. Everyone's like Black ripping Ops on it. They you get... can rip on it. Dude, Call of Duty's gotten to the point. Like I said it just a minute ago. I don't know if you guys watched. The COD, um, the COD Elite thing was on today. COD Championships. With COD Championships. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank mm -hmm. you. COD XP. And, Go on. And I'll sit there thinking about it. And like League, League of Legends, it's another popular PC game. It's got like 115,000 people watching on Twitch. 
where I'm sitting over here on like the A stream with 26,000 people watching. And I'm like, it, it dawned on me. They're, they're catering their game to lesser and lesser players, but they're also catering their game to high-end players, and you can't do that. The lesser players don't give a shit about the high-end players. I don't know. It, uh, competitive COD's more popular this year than it has been in the past, Pro right. you know, in big part because of the push that Treyarch's given it. And by the way, the numbers you compare, like I, I, I watch League of Legends a fair amount. I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, uh, 115 is pretty high. Like, that's not normal. I see it mostly in the 50s. I think they were having their championship, too, today. Oh, oh okay. Well, maybe. Yeah, there's an MLG. Higher. There's an MLG event for, I think, StarCraft or maybe League of and, Legends. And the COD thing was split into five different streams. So to call it 26 isn't really fair. They've got. Well, to be fair, it was like 52. Okay. All right. Yeah. And there's no doubt that Leagues is doing well. Sometimes I watch. Have you guys ever watched League of Legends? No. No, I, I've I, seen some people. I, I honestly I don't couldn't understand. tell you what the game looks like compared to like any other PC game. I watch League of Legends, and mostly it's out of curiosity. I'm like, what? It's really, really popular in the live stream world. And there's a lot of people playing it. It's real popular in the competitive world. So I look at it, and I'm like, I'm going to see what it is, right? You know, if everyone says this thing is great, then maybe I should look at it and see what it's like. I'm not that interested in playing it because... It just takes a long time to learn. It's like if you told me that chess was really popular, I'd be like, yeah, well, I I just I don't know that I'll ever be good at that game. But um, I want to watch it. I don't understand League of Legends at all. When I see the people playing, I don't even understand why they're good. I don't see them having like a huge impact. And before they, they, they look like it's a giant tie or something. Like I don't. It, I am like your dad watching you play League of Legends, you know? It, but when your father watches you play COD and you beast on it, right? You get like 35 kills and three deaths. He doesn't even understand that you did something impressive there. It, what is this fruity tooty all rooty stuff? Yeah, what is this crap? I don't even get it, you know? <laughs> is 35 and three, is that even good? If he watched you in fist fights and you beat up 17 people in a row, he'd know <laughs> you just did something. He'd be like, God damn, I'm not sure this is good or bad, but my son's not, fucking know, good at fist fights. extra hard right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If your father watched you win 17 fist fights in a row, he would know that he's dealing with something here. He would but, know he'd be on the phone with Don King the next day. But if you get a 17 kill streak in COD, your dad hasn't even a clue if you just did something good or bad. Like he doesn't understand that it's even for everybody and and to, to win that much in a row is, is hard. That's how I watch League of Legends. <laughs> I watch him do stuff and I'm I don't even get it. I they have like minor characters circling around them and shit, and I'm like I I am just I don't get it. I don't understand League of Legends. I, I every time I watch every time I watch it, I expect to see like a, a Japanese announcer like getting really excited about something. Yeah, and oh, and the um the personalities playing the game like I guess their gameplay stands on its own because by and large they're kind of not interacting with the stream or or whatever, and they seem a little worn out most of the time they're playing. Like, they're not jazzed. They don't say, like, it's stream time. It's time to step up my enthusiasm and hang out and do whatever. It's just, like, you know, they're a little bored, it seems, when they're playing. But it's hugely popular. And, like I said, I'm like your dad watching the game or something. I just don't even follow. New topic? New topic? Yes. What do you got? Oh, I have to come up with one? I thought I could just say new topic and you just pull one out of your ass. This is <laughs> Wesley Snipes got now. out of prison. Wesley Snipes got out of prison. We are all... Was he in prison, though? He was. He, was, he actually prison. was. I looked at it. Well, see, this doesn't make any sense to me. And I believe you if you tell me he just got out of prison. But he's got a movie about to come, in, about to come out. Are you telling me they saved this movie for his prison release? Like, was this filmed prior to him yeah, getting out? Always Your Friend, Internet Movie Database. Yeah, he's got some kind of, like, Wild West zombie movie coming out. He aged. Oh, yeah. He, well, he's like 55, 60. He's no, no, 50. no, no, he's 50, 50. He's got no. the Gallo Walkers? Yeah, yeah, Gallo Walkers. A okay. cursed gunman whose victims come back from the dead recruits a young warrior to help fight a gang of zombies. Oh, God, that sounds like an awesome film. It's Black out. Cowboy. Black Cowboy. Um, it's already out, dude, and he's supposed to be in the Expendables three coming up. Oh my God! Why are they making a third one? Because <laughs> people go see it to see how shitty it is. Oh. Stop going to see movies that you know are bad. Stop well, he it. went to, he went to jail in two thousand ten, mm -hmm. and he did a video game. It, it it could be that the Gala Walkers were supposed to be released earlier and just sat on the shelf for a while. Movies do that. Like they, they, they can't get the production to actually get somebody to print print them the copies and stuff like that. 
Look at the bu- look at the movie uh, the bed eats or the bed that eats. I mean, it sat on the shelf thirty three years. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. The bed that eats. Yeah, I can't yeah, imagine why that bed, wasn't a bigger success. <laughs> so what does the bed, bed eat? The bed that eats. What does it eat? People. It eats people. Yeah. Does it have teeth? No, it's actually like a sorcerer that was like transformed into a bed by his his lover and put in as a curse. Oh my god! There's a naked chick on the box art. If that helps, <laughs> it does help. <laughs> but I, I'm using it as a reference because it's it's like the longest movie ever to sit on a shelf and actually get released. Yeah, when your tagline is "lost horror film of the '70s," <laughs> you know you've had some problems getting a release lined up. Just watching yeah. Joe concentrate from time to time is pretty fucking hey. funny. I wonder. <laughs> Joe, I want to. I want to interrupt what? everything. Like Joe, what is so interesting? He's watching what two girls, one cup, or something. <laughs> Sometimes he looks confused. I'm like, Joe, what's confusing you? I want to <laughs> Can we help, Joe? I found the photos. I was looking for them. I found them. <laughs> right, it looks looks maybe like up. he's doing one of those games where you have to stare at something until it looks like a ship. <laughs> Speaking of two girls, awesome. look up. You guys, have you guys checking out Cookie Noodles' the channel yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's cookie noodles related to two girls one cup. I don't know. It sounds so, like food. Joe, wait. It is the first week. Wings absolutely shits on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe, you're playing Minecraft now. Uh, a little bit. I started playing like two weeks ago. All right. Been- How's it what been? Like- What's the first thing you built? Uh, a castle. You built a castle. What, what'd you name it? Uh, I didn't name it. I you didn't name a castle? You didn't, like, you guys castle of Grey Skull. Oh, castle. I knew he was going to go with Grey Skull. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. It was in my head. I was like, when he's going to say something about castle, castle Grey Skull. <laughs> hey, you pull it out. I'll pull some Hardak out here. Remember Hardak? Oh, my God. The pig with, the, like, the flying dick ship. Wings, you were the biggest nerd ever. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. Oh, did someone help you learn to play? Uh, I, I just started kind of playing around on my own, and then I got a couple buddies that, like, I didn't realize they were all, like, super into it. That's and watch Cookie Noodles video. Are you playing on PC or Xbox? <laughs> Xbox. Ain't no way you can like get the webcam over to your castle so we can see it. Uh, probably just say not. Say no, Joe. Joe, just yeah, say no. Joe, no. Joe, Joe, no. Just we cool. don't want to see the no. nameless castle. We don't want to see the castle. Yeah. It's, it's cool. cool. Like I so when I first started playing Minecraft, like I say before I started playing it, I was like, I don't get this game. How do you win? Like how do you beat Minecraft? I, I, just, the whole concept of it didn't. didn't That's make why sense it's awesome. Me. And then Onslaught, he's another YouTuber, kind of held my hand. He's like, this is what you do. This is you, you Smack a tree, build a crafting table, build your, you know, you sort of held, yeah. told me that the, the tooling hierarchy and and the house and the zombies and how they I come out at night. I spent three hours putting wood grain floors in my pad and then had some bitch come in and burn them. <laughs> and uh, so it was, I got, I don't, I'm not an expert in Minecraft, I don't pretend to be. But my Minecraft like learning curve did way better than it would have otherwise because I had so many people like teaching me stuff and whatever. And we I live streamed Minecraft on my daughter's birthday, and my subscribers made her a cake. I thought that was pretty cool. They sang to her as well. So I just I, I'm I love all the redstone stuff. Like we built like so we built a castle, and then we built like uh, a waterfall, and then you hit a switch. And the water stops. Stairs protrude out from the sides. It, it does like all this badassness. And Jimmy, are you a part of this thing? I am. Yeah. I'm so, <laughs> so wait a minute. That wait was a minute. the cutest we little people. Look that yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing the two of you in your pajamas on the couch playing Minecraft together. We're in different rooms. We're in different so. rooms. Uh-huh. Yeah. No eye contact. <laughs> You're not in pajamas though. Yeah, you didn't deny the pajamas at all. No, of course. You gotta be comfy. You gotta be comfortable. Putting pajamas with race car beds. <laughs> oh god. All right, stop, stop, stop. Uh, so I'm Jimmy, were you into bro, games bro. much before you lived with Joe, or has yeah, that been his um, influence? We had played, I think, probably I don't know if it was Modern Warfare Two together Warfare years <laughs> ago, um, and I kind of switched over to PC a little bit, and I wasn't playing as much uh, Call of Duty for a while. But uh, coming back here definitely got my love for Call of Duty back a little bit. Been playing Black Ops a little more and stuff. So Joe roll, Joe rolls with beastly teams all the time. Like it. Yeah, that's, that's Joe, the best part. Joe won't log on unless he has like eight Call of Duty bodyguards with him. <laughs> Do you know what your win loss ratio is? Uh, I don't know, but it's pretty good. It's probably like I don't even know. 
it's like, it's really good though. Like seventeen or something, right? Uh, it might be. Oh my god, seventeen—that's that's... That's impressive. Yeah, uh, that's ridiculous. I, I don't know. It might be more like eight or nine, maybe. I, I mean, I've lost anything. One hundred and twelve games on COD, and mine's a uh, seven point five. I love this. I love you. Know how many games you've lost? Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> well, well I, they're not all legitimate losses either. I think I've lost like twelve, but the other ones are like host migrations. And you're just getting pissed off and breaking your Xbox controller. Yeah, I've, I've seen your rage quit out of at least ten games. Not on Black Ops 2. Counting those. Oh I no, not Black Ops 2. I haven't rage quit since um, end of Modern Warfare 2, early Black Ops 1. All right, all right. Damn, damn. I mean, I, early Black Ops 1. You haven't rage quitted since early Black Ops 1. I can't say I've never rage quitted, but like. I'm talking about. I'm talking about enough to actually affect my win loss. Like you know, you see some people like point three win loss. No, my, my shit's like eight or nine. If my shit goes drops below ten, I'm upset. Like I was upset when I dropped below ten. Hmm. Joe's yeah. confused about something again. <laughs> um, I'm checking Call of Duty Elite. I don't know if it'll even work. Will it work for Black Ops? Yeah. I think. Yeah, I've never lost a game with Joe. Yeah, whenever I play with him, it's we really a don't stacked. Lose that one. You gotta play with my team sometime, Woody. Everyone's playing like assholes and just running around with riot shields. And Every time you play the game by yourself, it feels like you're, you're facing like the Red Army or somebody. And you, I, I refuse to start. play on my own. I just won't do it. I'll, I'll, I'll play something else. I could call. I could call a bitch all the time because I roll in a full party. It's like this game ain't fun without it. Zero well, fun. Don't, don't you roll with a full party and have them all run like VSAT, counter, call uh, UAV counter? That's basically what we do. Yeah. Like, I, my rule is this: when I roll a party, nobody's allowed to use fourth tier kill streaks. Everything else is on the table. Wait. Fourth tier is so no no swarms canines. What's fourth tier? Well, if you look at the kill streaks, there's there's three tiles. There's like UAV things, and then there's a little bit better like lightning strike, hellfire. Then one more tier is like stealth chopper, you know, warthog and things like that. And the bottom four, dogs, swarm, VTOL, warship, and lodestar. Hmm. I call that the fourth tier because there's four tiers of them. one, two, three, four. That I I, I follow the logic. And so no fourth tier stuff because that makes people rage quit, and we end up having to wait on the game just to end off of forfeits. That's a good. That's I kind of like this actually. Yeah. Like I'm, that's working for me. Joe, did you find your stats yet? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I did like the the full stat reset, and it, it says I'm at like 81 percent win. 87 percent, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> of course wins. You did the stat. I hate Call of Duty. I can't play Call of Duty. 87 percent win. <laughs> Wings, are you do you mainly play on Xbox or PlayStation? I, I, I play on both. Okay, you get you get your guys, and I'll get my guys, and we'll play on. Oh, you be careful, Joe. His guys are no joke. I'm just saying we we, we can. I mean, I don't care if we get our asses whooped. I'm just saying. I mean, that's the it's way. probably gonna be an even match if you got an 81 percent and I got an 87. That in in the world of Call of Duty, that's minuscule. Is is Fr <laughs> are, are the other people you play with Wings as good as Frenchie? Oh, French dude, Angel. I got people better in French. He's got some solid players, Joe. It's like Magmar. Magmar is better in Angel. Um, there's Magmar. There's uh, Custom Parts. He, he's, he's about right where Angel's at. Do you ever have a hard time getting games in that lobby? Dude, have you ever seen the games I put on my channel? I'm like I'm, right there in like third or fourth place. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like that's it. So when I play with a strong team... It's easy for me to get a decent KD. Like I just posted one recently where what happened was I was playing against these guys and I played well. I led the lobby, but my team lost. And they're like, Woody, come play with us. Come play with us. And then I went like 23 and 0, but I finished like fifth in the lobby. That's what happens. Like I, I just yeah, have a hard does. time getting the traffic People I want. Like, Why are you camping? Like, because if I run on the other side of the map, I'm never getting a kill. Yeah. Oh my I'm waiting God. for them to die over there and come back there. We had VSATs up, and I'm chasing red triangles all game long. And this, like, they're just killing it. I dropped a Hellstorm and a Lightning Strike, and they combined for zero kills. Because while they were in the air, they all died. They got killed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so, like you, you can't get a damn kill because the team's so strong. So I, I tend to just so play strong. solo. Stealth choppers might get two kills. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, when you play with a strong team everybody ends up with 15 kills or something like that and it's it's rough and like you well, said there's the quitting my, and... my, my game i put up today i was 17 and 3 but it was a league play tdm and it's like we crushed the team oh wings so you haven't been uploading as much oh i haven't no 
Talk to us about it, man. What's going on? You, you can't talk to it about it without being considered a money. Or, oh, you only do this for the money. Blah, 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 blah. I uh, mean, do you work for money, Wings? God damn yeah, you. I, I do work for money. I, I think <laughs> a large majority of the American population works for money. But, like, even if I didn't make any money, I would still do it. But when I say, when, when people hear the term still do it, they expect three uploads a day. No. Still do it means I'm upload when I want, when I find it convenient. But, um, yeah, for those of you who know, we've took a huge money cut. Huge. Well, at least I have. I'm 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 go out there and say it's like 66% of what I made last year from what I'm making this year. Mm -hmm. And like it's a little demoralizing. It's like you're still working the same, you're still working at the same amount, you're still doing the same stuff, but now it's worth a lot less. And it it kind it kind of kind of makes you depressed. And then you see negative comments on top of that. Then you see if you try to branch out and do something else, it makes you depressed. And five years of Call of Duty. You run out of shit to say. I mean, my gameplay, the, the people now that, uh, uh, let me say it, people's gameplay now, I'm not in their league. Like, I can't drop 70 kill gun streaks. That's just not me. That's not what I can do. Mm -hmm. I consider myself a good player. I mean, like. You are a good player. I mean, yeah, I put it out there. Like, I'm, I'm, t I'm usually top 25 master league. I mean, I'm 87% I'm win loss. I mean, I. I I'm a good player. I'm the kind of guy you want on your team when winning has to be done. Absolutely. Like, I, you're top, I don't know what you are, top 1%, top 5%. But if you want me to drop like 70 kill gun streaks, I'm not your man. Right. There are people out there on YouTube now that are 0.1%. You know, they're just. Yeah, it's like you're looking at, these people actually have ca capture cards now. Back in the day, it was like I had to compete against like, I'm not trying to down him, but like blame truth and stuff. I mean, he's Blaine also a great player. He's yeah, a, a good fantastic player. player, but he's not top one percent. Like I wasn't top one percent, so I kind of fit in with you know blame troop and people like that. X Cal was the you know the guy that overshined everybody, so it didn't matter. Now I got seventy kill gun streaks, eighteen Moabs, is so game plays out the window, and I've talked about everything. So I'm a little lapsed for videos. I feel like Call of Duty's dried up. And no, no, I'm not entertaining enough to do anything else. That's where I'm at. Hmm. Yeah. So my my knee jerk reaction is like to solve it, like oh, you should do this, but this yeah, is not easily you're solved. Same, you're in the right? same boat, Woody. It's not easily solved. Yeah, I, I know exactly where I am. I'm, I'm I'm happy. I'm doing fine. But um, you know, there's always better out there. You know, there's better players out there. There's better everything. There's, there's better players. There's better everything. And it's like, I look at my product and I'm like, this product's nowhere near where it needs to be. And like, I had to either I like no some drive or no clue how to get it there. I laughed at my own vid today. I was, <laughs> I, I thought I was <laughs> funny. You. Yeah, I, I was, because uh, I'll just tell it, you know, and it, people were fussing at me for not following anyone on Twitter. Oh my gosh, they go bonkers over it. What are you not following me on Twitter? You're so conceited. You only care about yourself, etc. And I tried to explain that the only thing I look at on Twitter is the people that write me. Like if I follow anyone, it's I follow everyone that follows me. I sit there, I click on connect and I see what they have to say, but nobody wanted to hear it. So now I follow T-Mart's mom. That's it. I just follow T-Mart's mom. <laughs> 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 just to get people to shut the heck up. So, uh, and I thought it was funny. Yeah, I follow T-Mart's mom. Someone was like, Woody, why do you only follow one person? I'm like, oh, now this starts. That's the next thing. So I told him. I was like, I only follow the best. There's one person who's worthy, and it's T-Mart's mom. Gama. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed I'm looking at Elite. Uh-huh. Why is there a, a Modern Warfare 3 thing behind my stuff? I guess I it's know. showing what you've done in the past, maybe. Yeah, like, like, look at it. Like, so, I'm a master prestige, and like, there's like a, a six prestige Modern Warfare three thing behind it. What are you gonna do if you leave YouTube, Wings? <laughs> I wish I knew. UFC fighter. Uh, no, I'm there not gonna is. do that. I mean, there it is. Should... All right, who did it? Is that you, Wings? Knock it off. That's not me, Pat. Joe, is that your volume? Oh, you're playing the song, the sad music? You son of a bitch. Look at Joe. He's the coolest fucker right now. Wow. I mean, like, I'll figure something out. I've never been without work. Oh, Joe, you heartless bastard. The two of them are over there laughing. I figured YouTube out. I could figure something else out. 
What? Oh, that's not nice. How did you find that, 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 Joe? Nice. Where, where did it? He's like got that on. Tap. I wonder how. Yeah, how long has he had that queued up? <laughs> Since when has he had that audio queued up? <sighs> sure. Young professional athletes laughing at the guy having a hard time. Look at the two of you. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not having a hard time. <laughs> Bunch of cockbags. What a lot of people don't know is I've been setting yeah. myself up. I was queuing that up before transition. with probably one kill streaks. So, <laughs> it just it came back around to being useful. <laughs> <laughs> so Wings, what are you gonna do next? What's your next thing? Radio? Um I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what, what what the next thing is. I mean, the easy answer is trucking. That's the easy answer. Trucking. Yeah, I mean... Talking about trucks, buying trucks. No, actually over the road. Okay, you know, driving pulling trucks. Loads. Be a trucker. Yeah. yeah. But, like, that's going to put me in the same boat I'm in now, I working never... a sit-down job. That's going to put more and more weight on me. Like, I... my idea is, like, if I can't get my channel to rebound any, is to actually ride out six months because I'm I'm still making my bills because I've got my bills down to nothing. I went from $2,800 a month down to like $800 a month. How'd you do that? Well, sold I sold uh, I sold the Tahoe. Mm -hmm. My brother start, started paying $300 a month. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I did some changes on my phone plan. Cut your you bills. Know. All right. All right. I mean, um, well, I, well, some of it might be coming back on me because I went to jail. But we got my mama's boyfriend to start paying something. Wait, wait, who went to jail? My mama's boyfriend. Oh, is he the guy that stole your truck temporarily? Yes. <laughs> well, he went to jail again today. But that's right. a, yeah, He's a crackhead. They tend to so, do that. So some of that money might be coming back on it. But basically, I've been trying to pawn out as much money as humanly possible. So basically, all I have right now is my internet connection. The black truck, which I'm at the point where I can sell it for forty one hundred dollars, like out out of pocket. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to I'm just kind of hold on to it to see if I can get a little bit more because I feel I can get another sixteen hundred dollars to somebody. So over the road trucker is what's after YouTube. I never even considered that. Well, he, here's the thing. Yeah, that's basically yeah, over the road trucking. I have a crane license. I have a forklift license, but I don't want to go back to a factory. And I'm not in good enough shape. So I either got to get in good enough shape in the next six months to do some type of physical labor job again, or I got to rebound my YouTube channel, or I got to go get <laughs> go back to school for some kind of specialization or skill that would basically pay good money. Joe, what's after UFC? Um, my school's doing pretty good. I, I think that you know. So th I think my my real plan is pay off my house, do all that kind of stuff. And then run my gym and just train and, and do seminars and all that kind of stuff. I, I can make pretty good money doing seminars. Joe just, could be a Joe could be a you know personal trainer and make good money. I, I wouldn't do personal training, but come on, you get all those hot mommies. Yeah, I know. It's like milf touching. You don't want to do no, that for I a living. Would, no, oh, you guys well, look at this Joe, wrong. What's up with Joe was training? Gonna, like, why are you down in it? No, 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 no. If Joe was gonna be a personal trainer, you want to find that rich guy who like who wants to be a UFC fighter. Exactly. You want to find that guy who's gonna pay you like five grand a session to like teach you, teach you, you know, tell you stories about the good old days and teach him your secrets. Like when he's gamer tag. Here's something the other. I broke this guy's about. hand one time. <laughs> <laughs> all I hear about is I've heard nothing but bitch about it since. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I actually looked into getting a personal trainer when I when I was actually making really good money, and those motherfuckers want like two hundred and fifty dollars a session. That's a lot. That, that's that's a lot. I mean, I mean, well, well, look, my strength coach makes it's two hundred fifty dollars a week, but it week only concluded two sessions. So that's so it's one hundred twenty five dollars. One hundred twenty five dollars a session. <laughs> and that's that's two hours. <laughs> all right, all right, okay. Jimmy, and, what's and next like for you? Was like he was a Coastal Carolina pitcher. I'm like, okay, so you pitch for the Chanticleers. <laughs> Jimmy, what's next for you? UFC run. Yeah, I'm fighting April 13th. Dana kind of announced to everyone that we're all getting a shot on the finale, so I'm going to get a shot on April 13th against the opponent to be determined. Yeah, but but we asked, what after UFC? After the fight, after the UFC. Oh, after the UFC. Um, well, I'm a police officer now, so... Oh, good. I got plenty of questions. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> 
No. Oh. Wings yeah. perked right the fuck up when he heard that. He Wings was, hates policemen with the oh, fervor police that's passion. out of this world. There's hatred in my heart for police officers. <laughs> oh, God. I can change that. I'll do my best. Let me tell you some bullshit I found out just yesterday. <laughs> I got a ticket January 25th, and I had a court date February 25th. The ticket was $83 and two points. It was for a 44 and a 35. So I'm looking up my state statutes on speeding. The ticket maximum fine for nine miles an hour over is $25. So I'm thinking, wow, why is my ticket $83? Then motherfuckers have a $50 plus dollar court fee plus $6 for... Electric transfer, electronically transferring money. So it cost me double what my fine was to pay the fucking ticket. It's not the policeman's fault, yeah. Wings. Where's your that, question in this? Yeah, that's sad music again. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it like that? Why does it cost me double to pay my goddamn <laughs> ticket? Wings, Wings were you speeding? Was I speeding at nine miles an hour? Yes, I'm a fucking criminal. I hope to, I'm glad he caught me so I wouldn't run down the packs of fucking children in my way. You know, he's gonna save me all and he made me a better driver for giving me the eighty three dollar goddamn ticket. You guys are laughing. <laughs> but the fact is it is proven that speeding tickets do not stop accidents. <laughs> I go. I'd go out on a limb and say this: people that drive with the idea to avoid the cops cause more accidents than people getting speeding tickets. That is a wings of, right. wings of redemption <laughs> statistic study. <laughs> no, I got a question yeah. for Jimmy. Let for me take example, a shot at this. A guy named, I was talking to a guy named David Collins today. He's a firefighter over here in uh, the Greensboro area in, so in South Carolina, and um, he's Can we just talking about answer, Jimmy's answer. Can we just make him a fireman now? <laughs> Just forget that he said cop. <laughs> Wait, uh, let me go, Wiggs. Let me do this one. He Jimmy. should have as a real cop. I'm yeah. just, just going to say that. So so I don't have the, the same kind of hatred and you know fervor that, that Wings does for policemen, but I do feel like if one cop sees another cop do something that they don't approve of, they let it slide, right? There's this blue wall. You don't think so? You don't agree with that? No, I agree that it happens. I just wouldn't do it. All right, then. Well, that didn't really go anywhere. Do a lot of cops have drop guns? <laughs> oh my god! It's not even drop guns, dude. Jimmy, Jimmy I can't stand when a cop. I can't stand when a cop oversteps his boundaries. I can't stand when he wants to think he's better than me. You are my motherfucking servant. I pay your taxes. I put you in that squad car. I put the gas in that goddamn squad wings, car. Wings, you're maybe, a pro, you're maybe. a serve and protect. I pump my own gas. You're a public <laughs> servant. I pump my own gas. I put it in the cruiser myself. How did they put the cruiser yourself? <laughs> they don't when, give you gas maybe, cards? Maybe they shit on you because you talk to them like they're your servant. <laughs> oh, I damn straight I talk to them like they're, they're my damn servant. If you, it, They don't shit on just me. So, you can find it everywhere where they shit on people. I've never had a problem with a cop because I am yes sir, no sir, I'm sorry. Why are you like that? <laughs> are you just, you're just okay. conforming yeah. to him. Because he's got a zero, fucking gun. Tickets. Yeah, I don't have any tickets. Here. Here's he's last time gun. I got pulled I got over a cop. Gun. This it is how it matter. went. This is how it went. Last time I got pulled over by a cop. Um, um, there's a stop sign like a block from my house. And I sort of just, you know, looked both ways and rolled right through it. And he pulls me over and I'm like, you know, I, I couldn't have been speeding, right? I was going like six miles an hour because I just went through a stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> I figure, I'm like, was I speeding? Like, what? Like, what could it have been? And he's like, did you see that stop sign back there? And I'm like, all oh, right, the stop sign, that's why. And he's like, you know, do you always run through that stop sign? And I thought about it for a second. And I'm like, yeah, pretty much every day. Every day I run that stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking at my license. He's like, Matt, let me ask you again. Do you always run through that stop sign? And I'm like, yeah, I, like I... I do. I, like almost every day, I don't really think of it as a real stop sign because I live next to it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't apply to me anymore. I right. And, and then he asked me a third time. He's like, no, let, let me let me see if I get this straight. Do you always run through the stop sign? And I'm like, no, no. First time. That, <laughs> never, never. That, that one there, that's my favorite stop sign. I'd never violate it. And he's like, now you're talking. And uh, no ticket, no warning, no nothing. That's how it went down. Is that, you've never had a ticket, buddy? I have had tick I haven't had a ticket in well, I haven't had a moving violation in North Carolina 
I've gotten two like expired registrations or something like that. Wow. So you never had a moving violation, and, and you wonder why your your thing with cops is my moving violation is my first one in ten years. I had a and ton of them t- in Jersey. Let me tell you this: it, it was it was in a school zone. So, <laughs> the, but don't give me this school zone bullshit. The school was five hundred yards. <laughs> don't away give from me that school zone road. bullshit. <laughs> the fact is, the kids, they the lights up fast on the feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You're all about that. Wings, wings, wings. I come wings. cruising through at 60 miles per hour. Wings. They stay light on their feet. Wings, <laughs> you cannot deny that that sounds exactly like something you would say. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. The school's 500 yards off the road. I mean, it's a school zone just because they can make it a fucking school zone. <laughs> I wasn't going to play it. You beat me to it. And the, the second off, it was not, it was 255 when he pulled me. 255. The school zone is from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. 255. The buses are gone. The teachers are only people there. He was sitting there doing paperwork. And the kids doing sports and stuff. This is elementary school. There's none of that bullshit. Okay. But the fact is, a decent human being would be like, oh, all right, it's 255. Fuck it. I'm going to say we do my paperwork. I wanted to spit in that cop's face. You know what the worst part is? He lives right there beside me. He lives like five houses down. And he so what you did? You take a shit on his doorstep. I was gonna say you should go drop a deuce on his. <laughs> I do a lot worse than that. I'd like to throw roofing tax in his driveway. Oh my goodness, that's just <sighs> that's just not cool. Wings. Can't that's do not, that. No, it's not cool to fucking write tickets for your neighbors for like five miles. He wrote me for nine miles an hour, dog. Forty-four and a thirty-five. And don't give me that bullshit, you have to write me a ticket. I looked at the goddamn statutes. There is officer discretion, even in school zones. <laughs> fuck you with your have to write a ticket bullshit. So wait, Learn the goddamn laws. Tell him that. With, tell him with that. the officer discretion, when I say yes sir and no sir, that helps the officer use his discretion to let me off. He, when you don't look you at off. him like he is your servant... <laughs> And call him a motherfucker or whatever else you call him, a mother- to him as. You act like I talk to him like like he's not a human being. No, but I'm very cordial with them until they give me a reason not to be cordial. Like okay. pull you over or no, give you a you ticket. Don't just be cordial. You need to start kissing ass. I don't uh-huh. kiss. That. No, dude, you don't kiss but, him. Okay, up. and that's why you get tickets. <laughs> that's why wings, I, I tickets. wings. You know I hate cops too. But here's the thing: <laughs> the low, the the guys that are writing tickets. They're the low-level guys. They're the guys that hate being cops as much as oh, you hate them. Me, I, for being I let cops. him know that. I let him know that he's like 38, still writing goddamn tickets when he when he wanted. <laughs> That's to why you got a goddamn ticket, buddy. <laughs> there you go. It's a wonder he didn't let you go. Oh no, man, you know, what a douche! Like, oh, you give me a ticket, huh? The 40, You're lucky 35? he didn't beat you to half to death. <laughs> for what? For what? For pissing him off. Let him. I would love a lawsuit from Conway, South Carolina. Love it. You know give what you me. wouldn't like very much though. A beating. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take an ass whooping. No, dude, I I don't think you've ever had one of anybody hit you an ass. Those those batons. I, I will that, take an ass whooping if it won't. I'd get me a nice fat settlement. Uh, Jimmy, where are you a cop? A uh, small town up in New Hampshire. It's kind of like what you said. Like most of the people, like you said, that are writing tickets, they hate their jobs. They're just kind of they have nothing going for themselves, and writing tickets is like the highlight of their day. Um, <laughs> me. I got a stack of tickets. Like when you start the job, you get a ticket book. I still have my original ticket book. Like I never ever write tickets. Well, let me let me tell you a secret here with Conway cops and why there's so many speeding tickets here. One, we're speed trap. Two, the cop that writes them gets ten percent of the total ticket. Yeah, are, that's you sh- are you sure? I'm, I'm dead sure. One hundred percent. Jimmy, not for writing a ticket. Uh huh. Have you ever had an opportunity to get physical on the job? Uh, yeah, but I've always talked my way. I've only had to, like, you'll have to, like, kind of wrestle an arm around, but I've never had to really go crazy with person. I'm pretty serious, and people in small town, they know what I do, so. Yeah, um, you're pretty serious. That you comes don't get like to do like a, too. You don't get to do, like, no. a judo throw or something? I, like, I would definitely, like, I get to judo throw people all the time or whatever. I get to wrestle people all the time. I would much rather use my taser, and I've still yet to actually be able to tase <laughs> someone that sucks really bad. <laughs> Pull it's, wings over, you might get a chance to use it. <laughs> if you pull him over and you start just act a act a fool a little bit, yeah, he'll get pissed I'll pull him off. Over enough. And then he's complaining, just calling me an asshole and stuff. He's just gonna get pissed. Play that music again. Oh, yeah. 
Don't tase me. <laughs> the, only, the only problem with you tasing me is I'll have your I'll have your phone number and your home phone number within the hour, and you have to be changing your phone for the oh next two God. years. Oh, wings. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not listed, right? It's hard to get your number. I don't even have a home. It phone. doesn't matter. I got Keemstar's. I got Keemstar's <laughs> mother's address unlisted. <laughs> You got Keemstar's mom's address? I got her address, her phone, her cell phone. Well, that just all of it. Oh, I got it all not, two wings, hours wings. Let's not go down this road yeah. because people are going to watch <laughs> and they're going to want to play with you. They're going to want to play this game. <laughs> why, why do you have his mother's information, yeah, this like, dude? This was like three years ago. Remember when he he was with the FAG and like um. They they were they were. What well, you might to... just need to cut this completely, not even bleep it. Just <laughs> no no cut don't it bleep out. it. This yeah, is cinema. Yeah. But why, dude? What are you going to do to the man's mom? This was three years ago, Kyle. Oh, all right, yeah. So it's, it's, we've already been to like Billionaire's Bash and all this other shit together since then. Okay. But what he is, is he, he, he called Xbox up. He was trying to get my gamer tag, you know, removed from Xbox. He was trying to get my console banned. He was trying to get my channel strikes. He was trying to take me down off of YouTube. And like. So you go to talk to his mom? No. <laughs> basically, somebody offered me to give me all of his stuff. So I'm like, sure. Oh, how much? Okay. He's like a hundred bucks. I'm like, okay. And <laughs> to I tell you the it, truth, all legit. There was a time a, a couple of years ago when I wanted to talk to an internet troll's mom. I just wanted to be like, are you aware of what your kid's doing? Like it, it, it uh, I don't know. I, it, I never did that, anything, dude. but you've done that. You talked to a troll's mom. I have, dude. Like, um, how did it go? I, I, I put I put this video up in Black Ops <laughs> One. Where this kid goes, hey, where's the redemption? And I, I'm like, and I upload the video. I'm like, this is what I have to go through sometimes in lobbies. But so far, and that we, sounds like normal stuff, right? Like, Yeah. I, I post the video up just to show people what I go through in lobbies. Mm -hmm. And these guys went crack detective on this motherfucker. I had his <laughs> Facebook. I had his mom's phone number and everything. So I'm like, fuck it. Let's live stream. We called her. I ended up calling her. On a live stream. On a live stream. This is good entertainment right here. <laughs> And I was and like, we got to hear her son get beat in the background. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I played her, I, I played her black back the clip what her son was saying because he was cussing at me in the lobby and stuff. So I let her listen to all that. <laughs> That's incredible. No, I I never called my troll's mom. I just thought about it. It was in my head. It's almost about about the time I uh, I streamed me calling H H Greg and their shitty ass staff. I like that store. Horrible store. <laughs> <laughs> Wings has ha, Wings has extreme hate for some of the most random things. It's like cops, HH Greg. <laughs> cops are a fucking waste of time. There, there, there's better jobs to be had out there than cops. <sighs> okay. Wings. Wings. Okay. Change my fucking time. Tell us why you. Tell us why you hate HH Greg instead of police officers. Oh, I, I don't hate the store. I just think that they have really crappy customer service. Like I sat on the phone. They have like, great I was customer only on the service. Phone Twenty-five minutes before I decided to stream, and I think I was on hold fifty-two minutes in total because I was looking for an iPhone five because this was when iPhone five just dropped. And I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, I'm just gonna call ahead instead of driving up to these places see if they have any in stock. And you made a live stream about it. Well, no, I, I wasn't, didn't plan on it. I was like 25 minutes in listening to this damn promo. I'm like, anybody want to listen to this promo with me? And they're like, yeah. So I threw it up on the live stream because it's doing it That's Skype. not a bad idea, actually. Like, I, I wonder if it'd be fun to watch people just do random crap. Like, all right, I need to freaking wash my car. Should we live stream this? <laughs> you know, it might be interesting to see Wings of Redemption you know, a lot wash of people truck. up to it because a lot of people are like, yeah, let's listen to this. Oh. <laughs> like... <laughs> Because they literally left me a hole for 52 minutes when I asked for a transfer to electronics. If you go there, they'll, they work on commission at HH Greg. They'll take care of you. Interesting. I like people that work on commission. You, you, get, better, you get better service. You do, Especially but... police officers. <laughs> <laughs> In Conway. You get, <laughs> guaranteed to, to pull you over and give you the attention you're looking for. That, that does sound like bullshit to me, by the way. I what? know everyone's thinking it. I'm I just agree. saying. Yeah. I think that's crap. I think you're making that shit up, Wings. What, Dad's on hold for 52 minutes at H.H. Greg? No, 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 no. The, the, the cop's getting 10% of a ticket. I would no, 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 it ain't bullshit at all. None of them. Like, that just doesn't make sense. It's a bad system. That's How's a it a bad system? Because it it promotes cops writing bad tickets. I understand that, but you understand I live in a small town. Yeah, I live in a small town, too, but it's not like that. They Well, some places in Georgia are like that, too. 
Uh, Wait, I, I just want to know, Wings, what's your, what makes well, yourself confident about this, it? this. I can't give his full name, but my Uncle Tommy, he's a Horry County State Police, and he told me himself he gets 10% of every ticket he writes. That, that At the state level. Public, state employee, that would have to be public information. And he could mean it goes to the state. Like in New Hampshire, the police... No, no, no. We got cro Our crops are crookeder than, um, than like, you know, West Hollywood around here. The, the judge will peel it all for him. Are you wait, calling wait, 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 gay what, what people? Some... I think he's calling gay people crooked. Okay, I thought he was calling the cops in West Hollywood crooked, and I was like, no, no, I'm talking crooked, like crooked, like you have a straight person, you have a gay person. I thought, I thought yeah, you see, I, I yeah, put it together. I got it. Yeah, see, all right, lefty all right. only understands race hate. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do cops ever write other cops tickets? I've never seen it. I'm, I'm sure they do, though. Let's Jim, ask like, a police like officer. Like if you're off duty? Yeah, I was asking the cop. Uh, like, personally, I would never do it. I consider it like a professional courtesy, unless you were really... Why is it a professional courtesy? He's a civilian just like you. Well, he's not, no. <laughs> he is. You don't well, get special law pr privileges as a ba as an officer. So I would, I would except, treat except for the badge and the gun and the arrest power. And, no, you know, I mean, stuff. I can make me a except fucking badge. That. You want me to make me a badge? <laughs> Please, please make yourself a badge and walk around with it pretending to be a cop. You want to revitalize your YouTube channel? There you go. Make a badge, go around, and <laughs> I don't have to pretend to be a cop, but you say one of the perks of his job was a badge. Like, no, no, the badge is worthless. Don't... Okay, I understand that. <laughs> All right, All right Jimmy, I, I got a question yeah. for you. What would you write a cop a ticket for, right? Like, I, I'm guessing that if he went nine over, you'd give him a pass on that. All right, what if he yeah. was drinking and driving? See, if you're drinking and driving, I'd give you no credit whatsoever. That's the exact same thing else. But even if you're doing nine over and you're a cop and you're a dickhead, I'm going to write you a ticket. If you're like my friend, who like if you work with me, I'm obviously not going to write you a ticket. But if you're a cop from another town and you're just a jerk, like similar to how Wings describes himself, so he gets pulled <laughs> over, yeah, I would write that guy a ticket regardless of whether he's a cop. But if he's like a nice guy, anyone that smiles and like is just polite, I would not write a ticket to. Like I've given warnings for outrageous speeds that I'm not even comfortable saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, no, I've been, I, I've nice been pulled, you take it. yeah, I've been pulled over going, I don't know, maybe 92, 93 uh, in a 70, and I, it's like, how fa do you know how fast you're going? I was like, yeah, I was going about 92 or 93. <laughs> I was like, I was looking at the speedometer. I looked at my speedometer right as I saw you. So he's like, yeah, yeah, you're honest at least. I was like, yeah, you got me too. Sorry about that. He's like, yeah, all right, don't let it happen again. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly how I would be. Just if you're honest and you're nice. Well, why even bother pulling him at that point if you're not going to write him the ticket? The last he, ticket, I... He was going to write me a ticket until I, I was a nice guy. I understand that, but, like, why even bother pulling him at that point? Like, he, he's, not, he's just going to go down the road and do it again. <laughs> no, I didn't do it again. I slowed my yeah, ass you, down and I went home. You've never hit 90 again since that point? Uh, I don't know. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. Wings <laughs> so doesn't the, have a point there. Yeah, the last ticket that. I got is this. I, oh. I was in New Jersey, and there was a traffic jam all the time in Jersey. And uh, I was on a motorcycle, so I decided for some reason that because I was on a motorcycle, I could drive on the shoulder. Anyway, as the shoulder, like, crests the hill, there's a policeman on the other side of the hill looking for assholes who were driving on the shoulder. So I immediately stopped as if that was my plan all along and like acted like there was something on the bike to tend to. And uh, he drove up to me and he's like, you're driving in the shoulder and whatever. He gives me a ticket. I go to court to fight the ticket because um, not that I thought I was innocent or anything, but because I heard that if you go to court, they always knock it down to something lesser. So um, uh, the cop didn't show up, but I had to sit there. They did this like waiting game for me. Like they just kept pushing me back and back and back and made me stay there all night long, telling me that the cop was going to come and that I should settle and that I should like, you know, plead guilty to something else. And they're like, you want the cop here? I can get the cop here. And I'm like, ah, yeah, get the cop here. Let's see you do that. And because um, I didn't think he was coming. It was like 9 p.m. or something like, <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> and uh, while I'm there watching the other court cases, there was a guy in front of me who went 130 miles an hour over the speed limit. He went like 180 <laughs> or something like that at a 50. And uh <laughs> Yeah, his, talking about that warrants an ass whooping. His lawyer was a hottie, right? Like she was just she was gorgeous and she's like flirting with the judge. And at one point the judge would talk to the, the guilty guy and he's like, you know, you're lucky she's representing you. Like, <laughs> 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 and, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and like she just, just like 
she worked the situation to perfection and um, he got in trouble you know he got points and stuff but nothing near what you'd normally get for going 130 over lose your license and me I was a dumbass this was like 15 years ago the cop never did come and I pled to something lesser it, whereas I think if he doesn't testify like they'll throw it out like if he won't show oh, the, all depends I don't know. Like, yeah, I would have gone out there, said I'm innocent, and then there would have been nobody on the other side. Like, he's not I don't. There, they have to throw it out because he has to like plead his case. If he's not there. It has to be thrown out. Yeah, and I, I kind of wimped out at the very end. And maybe, uh, yeah, maybe in wherever you're from in South Carolina, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put it. We lost wings. We lost wings. All <laughs> right, let's switch to another topic while he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God, wings is such an asshole to cops. <laughs> I'm sitting here. I'm zoned out. I'm. I've got a movie playing at this point. I'm like, what's he gonna say next? Oh, I I thought it was funny. Maybe I'm oh, alone. Oh God, <laughs> it's, it's funny. I mean, but I don't like cops too. But he's like, he's <laughs> pissing on the guys that get pissed on all the time, and he's wondering why they like slap them around when they can. Like, okay, the guys that are the guys that are you know the people that are legally protesting, and then they're just beating them with nightsticks and arresting them and searching them without warrants. Okay, okay, okay. But the guy, you know. Uh, uh, anyway, so that uh, that new PlayStation Four is coming out. I can't um, wait. I yeah. can't wait. By the way, before we jump off this, <laughs> fuck cops. <laughs> oh god, he had to. He had to get in. He couldn't yeah. stand it. He, had to. he couldn't stand it. <laughs> Fucking wings, man. <laughs> just, just one more thing to add. <laughs> <sighs> Goodness. Uh, hey, on the on the Xbox, by the way, have you guys heard the whole controversy about being always on and yes. always connected? Have you heard about the PS4 crap that came out today? No, that what came out your, today? All your, all your purchases that you make on the PS3 will not transfer over to the PS4 on the PlayStation Network. Hmm. Like, if you have, like, a, a PS1 game that you bought on the net thing, you'd have to buy it again. Oh, really? They should work that out. That's not good. Yeah, and I tend to defend these companies, but I don't like that. I don't like that. On the, on the Xbox, they're saying it needs to be always on. You know that on the PC, a lot of times, I should say at least sometimes, they have this DRM where you always have to be connected to the internet all the time or it won't play. There's a strong possibility that's going to happen on the Xbox. I think it's not nailed down, which is why Microsoft hasn't, like, you know, confirmed it. But... Uh, they have patents about it. They have the technology is built into the console. There's a game developer who tweeted about it today. And essentially he said, like, it's there. We're employing it. If was that the guy that was like, you know, I can't comment specifically, but make sure you're up to date on your ISP bills or something like that. May, he was the one that ended with deal with it. Oh, that was the that was the Xbox creative. See, that was like they, a creative they, guy. They working obviously for do not uh, do very it, long history either. If I remember right, he was a guy that uh, was developing a game, and he was like an ex-Microsoft guy or something. But I could be wrong. I need to check and do it hmm. again. But um, anyway, it looks like Microsoft is going to have more DRM than they've ever had before, and they're going to have to have an always-on internet connection, which is interesting to me. I didn't think consoles had big piracy problems. They don't. They can't be. Maybe the next version, because of their software download or something, installs or be more prone Are to piracy. Gonna, is there going to be a web browser on it? Don't know. Don't know. I guess could there be. would be. There yeah, there be, could yeah. be. Um, but yeah, I, and I have sympathy for these guys that want to put DRM in there. If they do it in such a way that it doesn't bother legit customers, then DRM to your heart's content. People should have to pay for the games they play. Okay, right, but I, I think... Hey, I'm becomes... looking at it like this, though. Remember Napster? I do. Mm -hmm. What did Napster really kind of push forward? They, they fought Napster for years, spending millions upon millions of dollars trying to keep people from downloading, when what they should have been doing is creating a platform where they could make it easier to buy games. Digital distribution of, of right. music, which is, yeah, but here's the thing, though. It becomes unacceptable when paying customers have to jump through hoops to play a game that they paid for. Yeah, what, what about this? What about if your internet goes off and you want to play your single-player game like Fallout 4? Mm -hmm. Is Fallout 4 going to be online all times? And that's the other thing that a lot of people, a lot of younger people don't understand because they think the argument is it's like, well, everything's connected to the Internet and my Internet's on all the time. It only goes down during really bad storms or, you know, whatever. But the other thing is, is that with always online DRM, 
these companies now get to decide when you play the game. They get to decide now if their servers are on or off, if they're going to keep up their servers for this game. Who's to say in like a year and a half, EA doesn't come out with another SimCity and say, okay, well, that one that you guys paid for, that's done. You can't play it anymore at all. Can't, pay, can't play it. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. Like, you know, they, they can turn it off. You don't get to keep that game. You know, you can play a 15-year-old <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. But this game, they might be like, you know what? Forget it. We sold it. It's five years old. We're turning it off. Yeah, well, look at Halo 2. Halo 2 got shut off, what, a couple years ago? You wouldn't be able to play that game anymore. Right. Yeah. And that's, and that's a Halo 2. Like, imagine if, because the Halo 2 campaign didn't get shut down. Imagine if the Halo 2 said, you cannot play this game at all anymore because we've decided that you can't. It, it, it's, it's giving developers, I think, the whole idea is past the point of sale the developers shouldn't have input as to how you interact with the game. They should push a patch out at some point. Like when they want to end their life, like end of life of game, then push a patch out, take the DRM off. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they would. They, they definitely would do something like that. Because that, that's what I was just thinking. <clears throat> is that, you know, it's easy enough to push out a patch and just, you know, disable Yeah, but uh, patches cost like 20 grand, don't they? They're expensive. Yeah. They are. You've been running a server, though, for years on years. I understand that, but like twenty, it's twenty grand to push a patch out on a game you're not making money off anymore. Yeah, I wonder how much it costs to run the COD four servers. I do it too. Can't be that much. I don't know. Like Fifty people playing. Nah, I was. I've I've it's been like playing. Five thousand. I've been playing like every day this week, and like you get on team deathmatch, and there's I don't know, there's about eight hundred people playing team deathmatch. You can always get a game. And everybody complains about hackers, but I only run into hackers like maybe one out of every three search games, and like one out of every three free for all games. That's not that good. A third of your <laughs> games are hacked? No, I mean I mean lot, bullshit. Like, like, no, but you just back out and research and you find a good one. I'm just, like once you get into a lobby, you know, that that's clean, you're you're good for the rest of the night. Hmm. I, don't know. I tried to level up in World at War. This is like before Modern Warfare three because there is like this prestige token thing, you know, and I wanted to be first prestige in World at War. I didn't play that game that much. It was unplayable. There were hackers in every lobby, and they had god mode. And I'm playing headquarters to level up because it's the best mode for leveling up on the first two CODs, or four and five, I should say. So um, it sucked. There's a guy that you can't kill. Whoever has that guy automatically wins headquarters. He just stands there and kills everybody. <laughs> like, he caps it. You can't kill him or anything. He just takes it. And then, like, it, it is impossible to play the damn game. So that sucked. I played a weird mod the other day. I was playing. I, I jumped in a free for all, and like every, you got a, one point of XP every second, and your gun never ran out of ammo. It was actually fun. That that was one of the few yeah. mods I've played that I was like, all right, this is still playable. This doesn't change anything. It's actually pro a couple of good things. Now I don't have to reload, and I'm getting more XP. <laughs> yeah, a point of XP means something back in this old thing. Killing people was like five XP, not a hundred. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I thought that was stupid when they just started adding zeros on there to make it look better. TDM should be 10 points a kill. Search and Destroy is 50. That's how I liked it. Mm -hmm. I'm like Kyle's just his ultimate cock for purist. Oh, uh, for, for sure. It was, it was such a pure game then. It, COD 4 only needs like five modifications to be a perfect game. You just drop martyrdom, uh, gr you know, grenade launchers, a couple frag of... Frag times three. Yeah, get rid of frag mm -hmm. times three. Make it frag times two instead, maybe. I don't know where I read this at. This is a little bit different. This is back to uh, Always Online. I've been looking for I've been looking in my Devil's Cartel book, which is EA, but I can't find it. But on um, Diablo 3... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. EA is the Devil's Cartel? Or is this a game that I'm not familiar with? Uh, Electro Electronic Arts. Army of Two, the Devil's Cartel. Oh, okay, okay. I okay. thought I thought that was his pet name for that developer. Like, <laughs> yeah, I did too. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. Or as I like to call him, the Devil's Cartel. Right, right. Which, by the yeah. way, play Battlefield Three Endgame DLC. EA's, EA's <laughs> a mod game. EA's yeah, mod company. Like EA is the Devil's Cartel. Are you familiar with Activision? They're the son of bitches. <laughs> like, you just go on. <laughs> no, but, um, but I'm looking through here. But it's, it kind of says something of that. But I remember explicitly in my Diablo Three. It came out about a year ago or so. Um, it says that you do not own the software; you only lease it. Oh, like yeah, that's what a lot of them are, are turning into now. And, and it's like I don't actually own Diablo Three; they're leasing it out to me for playing. Or licenses, I think, is a more apt. I think I think the word he used was lease. That's why I was looking for it. Oh, hmm. 
Maybe. Like, you don't own it. Like, we're allowing you to play it for 60 bucks, and we can take it from you at any time. But Diablo 3 is always online. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if that's going to be the same case, especially if they go all digital. <laughs> well, all digital is the way they're going to want to go because you can't really resell digital, and it would put yeah, companies like GameStop out of business. You push it Diablo no 3 on console now, and they already announced it's not going to be always online for console. What's not? Diablo 3 on console. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So they're changing that. Wonder why that is. They make a fucking killing off the marketplace the, anyway. Uh, the real money auction house. They had the real money auction house, and they didn't want that getting like items duped and stuff like that. So because they removed that from the game, they don't need to really worry about that issue. They, they didn't want people to. They they wanted to control the economy because I did the math on one video. That annually, they were making like a hundred million dollars off the auction house alone. Do you guys want a new topic? Yes. All right. President Obama referred to... uh, I'm trying to get the woman's name. Oh, Kamala Harris is by far the best-looking attorney general in the country. (laughs) Is that sexist? He's getting crap over it. No. uh, He he might like the way she looks. I don't don't think it's sexist. I think he's said much sillier things. He said the other day that the, the Sandy Cook shooter used a fully automatic weapon. He says all kinds of silly things, but I, I I got no problem with him saying that you know, the attorney general's hot. I like I like the way that Kyle's values line up, like with regards to Obama. Like you know, stupidest thing that fucker said was that he used fully auto weapons in a shooting, but calling attorney generals hotties, I'm down with that. That seems yeah, completely well, what's fine. What's that attorney general's name? I want I want to see her. Carmela Harris. Carmela starts Harris. with a K. Whoa, really? I like left. I like Lefty's uh, tweet the other day. Lefty tweeted out, "If they didn't have any more boxes with springs in them, no kids would have got killed." Oh yeah, the Connecticut uh, the Connecticut law that that outlaws magazines that can hold ten more than ten rounds. Yeah, like you can't drop that damn magazine three or four times. Yeah, she's very beautiful. She's very good looking. Yep, yep. I put her on the stream so they'll be able to get a, a peek at what she looks <laughs> well, like. Right, let me ask you this, Kyle. Let me ask you this. Let's go a step farther. Let's go PK farther. <laughs> Uh oh! I don't want. Here we to. go. Wings is gonna take this to a bad place. Uh, <laughs> Do it, Wings. No, 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 no! Hang on, hang on, hang on! Wait a minute, wait a minute! I know what you're about to say. I'm well, not gonna to reply it. to it, and I'm not gonna respond to it. What, what are you about? What I'm about to you, say? I, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna say it. You and Woody can have this talk. No, no, go. we're having Kyle in this talk. No, no, we're not. Because Kyle's the one with the penis. Uh uh-uh, uh uh uh. Wait, wait, you wait, wait! Did that imply I don't have one? <laughs> no, your wife took yours a long time ago. She won't give oh, it back. Oh my god! <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> No, no, carry on, carry on. So, so what is this conversation? We'll see if we can get caught. All right, Carmela Harris mm-hmm. or Sarah Palin. Oh, God. Oh, Sarah Palin. Sarah yeah, Palin. see, Kyle's instantly down for this. Yeah, I thought you were going to say something much more horrible. No, what do you no, think no, I was going to say? say? Thing about yeah, mags, I thought you were going to start like, bringing up some kind of crazy scenario. Yeah, <laughs> no. Um, no, definitely Sarah Palin. Sarah now, Palin. Now imagine if you can get your dick sucked by both of them at the same time. And All right, now that's too far. <laughs> that, that is what we did. You ever see the movie A Bridge Too Far? Yeah, you're you're going down that road. It, Why is no that good. too far? You're talking Be- about slapping a chick with a snake a while ago. I I didn't no. That's not what I remember. Anyone ever bringing up a snake? Don't no no. But but yes, yeah, Sarah Palin. Slapping, slapping a woman in a hotel lobby. You're bringing them together in ways that they shouldn't be brought together. I'm looking at the two trying to do an honest evaluation, and uh, I think Palin's got it. I think Sarah Palin's got it. I, 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 it's so. Dumb. Uh, yeah, Carmela Harris has a, a certain life to her in these pictures that uh, that I'm kind of digging. She looks like she can speak. But Sarah Palin Words. is the hotter of the two. Yes, she is. Have but, you seen the porno with like uh, the, the Sarah Nail and Palin? Porno? Nail and Palin. <laughs> I've yeah. heard of it. I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh, man, the that's... one where the, where the KGB comes by. And <laughs> yeah, <play>. yeah, that's <laughs> the one. I, I actually I saw it on CNN, so I saw like the bad acting leading up to it. But I didn't see like you know the the juicy part of it. Yeah, the actress they got to play Sarah Palin that was really spot on. Wait, Joe's trying to pass secrets in the back of the class, Joe. I was just talking about is it the Miss Delaware or Miss Miss something that she did a porn, and the beginning was fucking hilarious. It was Miss Teen Delaware, right, or something like that. Was was it Miss Teen? Might have been. Sounds it's fucking hilarious, though. It might have been illegal. And it wasn't. It wasn't. She was. She was of age. 17. And I, I saw it, but I don't remember the beginning. What was so? 
Oh, it was the, just, the, the way she was just so matter of fact. She's like, yeah. She's like, does anyone know you're here? Well, I just told him I was doing modeling. You know, it's not a big deal. She was like, know, like sitting on a bed, fully clothed, yeah. being interviewed, right? As, sorry yeah. about the mic. Yeah, yeah, those are the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't the good ones. Good yeah, ones. I want the interview at the beginning. You know, if you don't like the interview, skip three minutes in. You're golden. <laughs> God, do you want the you want the driver's license to come out too? Yeah, I want the driver's license. You feel like you like to get to know her first before. Yeah, you, uh, yeah. Tell me your story. How did you get here? <laughs> Are you really eighteen? Yeah, let's let's let's. What let's, series let's of poor choices were made? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Can you what tell drug me are about you currently your addicted to? I'd like to learn from your father's mistakes so that my daughter's never on a bed like that one. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh man, I love that. There's this. There's like a famous picture on the internet, and it's this really beautiful woman, and she's like, she's like, waist deep in the water with this like fat slob of a guy, and it says something like, "Ladies, this is why you should study in school." Yeah. Also, guys, this is why you should study in school. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's so true. All right, Kyle. Hey, guys, got yeah, but Kyle. Uh, what is Batman the ideal start too. to an erotic movie? Lead us off in here. How do you um, how do you do it right? Are we talking about one with a plot or one that's obviously like you know just a lot of the ones now are just like yeah we're gonna make a porno now let's do it. I, I don't know. Like right, I, I'm trying to nice think. What, oh fuck! How do you do it right in Kyle's world? Just the the whole compilation thing. <laughs> I don't know. Some kind of plot would be nice. You okay. know. You know. If if there were good acting, that would be good. If it was a believable scenario. There's no such thing as good I, acting in I porn. Know, hey, hey! I didn't say there was. I'm just saying. He asked me what would be ideal. I'm t I'm telling you. You know, if he had some kind of a plot in there, some sort of, you know, I ideally what imagine if like one of these big huge movies we watch every year just had a porn scene right in the middle of it. Like, what if The Hobbit, halfway through, you just had some elves just going at it? <laughs> I don't think I want to see that kind of porn. When I was in high school, there was this girl who needed a ride home. And she was, like, infamous for being totally slutty. And the porn started, like, buzzing in my head. Like, dude, all I have to do is, like, put her in the passenger seat, drive her home, and she'll blow me on the way. And uh, none of that happened whatsoever. It didn't go like I hoped at all. The story sucks. <laughs> It's, it's somehow your fault, Woody. It's somehow your fault. You think? You, you, you gotta you, push the envelope here, Woody. You gotta make some suggestions. <laughs> Kyle you know, made gas is kind of expensive, baby. You know, four dollars a gallon. You know, you live about fifteen miles away. Gas ass. What is it? Gas ass or cash? Pull out his calculator and figure out how much she owes him for that ride. <laughs> oh, no, don't do that. We have, to, we have to do a little bit more calculating. We got a we got vehicle maintenance per mile. We have. Oh my God, Wayne! What do you drive a helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> Maintenance per mile on a pickup truck. What are you doing, bro? <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. Hey, I, I care I care very much about my pickup truck. Unlike Woody who wants to use a car up and throw it away, I plan on keeping that Silverado for a low. What are you talking about? Ever. No, oh had, no, I see where this is going. You've had three cars in the last two years, and you're telling last me about two? how you keep them. Can yeah, we go yeah, back to I still got the same Silverado. It went nowhere. Okay, you still have that one. When did you? What year did you get that one? Uh, two thousand and late two, early two thousand four. Might say that. Right. I've still got my truck from two thousand two. It's a two thousand two, is what it is. Mine's, Mine's an 02. Two. I bought it yeah. new. I win. Uh, I didn't get mine new, but I got it with like ten thousand miles on it. All right. Now I think I might I might might be able to hang with you here, Woody. How many miles does yours have on it? Ooh, I don't know if I can. Ha it, it only has like a hundred and five or something like that. Thousand. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I think I've got like a hundred and thirty. But which I one's got, older? I got it's, the two, it's my. It, it was brand new in two thousand two. I got it. When I, did you get it? I got it in two thousand two. What month? Let's see. I was. Um, it would have been. I, I'm gonna be able to nail this because I remember my birthday was coming up. Um, let's see. I was fifteen. It was. It would have been like uh, February. Damn it! Uh, no, I got mine in June, so I guess you win. What? What are? We, what are you comparing though? Mileage? How long we've had it? I guess. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. How long we've had and, it? And 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 you're much nicer, I think, to your vehicle than I am to mine. Like I've dogged mine. Have you seen mine? Yeah, but I, it I has mean, dents in everything but the roof. It's not only. About I've seen mine. Mine's immaculate. It's well, brand new. Get out of here, kid. No, no, no. I'm not talking <laughs> about the brand new ones. I don't. I want another week from now. I only have a brand new one. All right. 
I'm talking about my old truck, the one y'all looked at and like, yeah, that's nice. Wings keeps good care of his stuff. Wings does. You know, every now and then you'll see an old truck that's like the box style Chevy or something like that, and it'll just be straight and nice, and the paint's good and all the trim's right, and you're like, you're kind of shocked that because you don't see that too much, you know, an older car that's that straight, and that's Wings' truck. It's it's like that. Wings lives in a trailer, on. right? So when I went to Wings' house, I was expecting something like the trailers I've seen on the TV show Cops, right? <laughs> you right. Know, that was Kids my... Microwaves. Yeah, just like microwaves, fucking like uh, 600 Sprite bottles scattered throughout the kitchen counter and, and, you know, maybe like a meth pipe in the drawer or something. But that wasn't what I found at all. What I found was a really well-maintained home, like recently vacuumed carpets and couches that I would kill for and... The wings lives in like an actually pretty nice home. It's a modular. Yeah, his couch is not considered a trailer anymore. Oh, well, okay, okay. Uh, all right, then. I, I don't. Even, I do. I, don't I even... will say this: Wings has couches that are like, like normally. If you want to take a nap on a couch, you've got to kind of spread out and get a pillow or something. His are the kind of couches that I feel like you can just lean back and fall asleep. Oh, they're recliners. They're they're like big, puffy leather recliner couches. They're they're the they're amazing. Wings Wait, it up right. You told me it was a fat guy thing. You said fat people get comfortable couches. Yeah. Why is that? Well, when you're when you're fat, there's a there's a couple things being fat. You got to buy expensive clothes. Like I just bought some shirts the other day. It cost like for three shirts, it cost like 130 bucks. Uh, but they're amazing Spider-Man shirts. So yeah, amazing Spider-Man and stuff like that. So I think the shirt was 32 dollars or something like that. All right. Um. <clears throat> You, you got to drive a bigger vehicle because your belly stops you from driving Kia Sophia's. <laughs> All right. So you got to pay a little bit more for gas. And when you want it, when you want a couch, you got to get a nice couch because if you get a wood frame, you're going to break it over two or three years. So what you do you have? Get a metal like a frame stainless and, steel, like I beam. I'm picturing like girders in there. No, it's it's got a, it's got a metal frame. It's not it's not it's got a metal frame with wood support. Okay. On these couches. And they got really nice Italian leather over it, with, and it's nice and fluffy. I Does Italian I leather come from Italian cows? I have no clue. I think it's a style, to be perfect. Okay, honest. okay. I, I honestly didn't know. So, I Jimmy. I think it's a style way they make the leather. Joe's not fat. Does that couch suck? This is a pretty nice couch, actually. It's the first time I've actually sat down on it. This couch is unbelievable. Pretty nice. I don't know if it's steel reinforced or anything. If, uh, <laughs> look, look, the, the big couch that Woody sat on cost like nineteen hundred dollars, and the love seat cost fourteen hundred. Hmm. We bought our couches like two years ago or something. They're already wrecked. We've got three dogs and, and kids and don't don't the dogs don't automatically wreck furniture. Dogs that are untrained wreck furniture. I don't know what our dogs would do. I don't know. My, my wife, she was gone for like 10 days or something, and she came home to a frat house. The shit was rare. Like, I, it, I I don't know. Like, I felt like I just didn't. For example, the dogs tread in, and they have mud on their feet. And, you know, she's real quick to clean that stuff up. I'm a little slower to clean that stuff up. And she's As like, in you don't clean that stuff up? Well, just, I cleaned it up, but apparently, like, so I use this. We have this device. It has almost like a like a pad that sticks to it and it sprays water and it's not that absorbent but you clean it up and you rearrange the pattern of dirt and you're like all right sweet i did it my wife breaks out like a legit mop like a janitor would and actually makes the place clean mopping is, is a, a swiffer? what's that this device this mystery device called a swiffer <laughs> i think it no, might be a swiffer <laughs> but, mystery. but it's a legit swiffer because it, it has a like like cleanser detergent spray in front of it. Do all Swiffers have that? Dude, yeah, those things are trash. So. Don't throw those out. You want a wet and dry mop. You want to do uh, a wet mop and a dry mop. What did you sell carpet or did you get rid of the carpet? Um, no, but we have rugs like on top of the hardwood floors. We recently got a uh, like a like a steam vacuum. I think it was like 150 bucks. And mm -hmm. while I haven't used it, I am told that it is awesome. <laughs> it just gets up anything. Like the dog just took a shit right in the carpet. Just. <laughs> Just horrible shit, just right there. It's just smelling the, the house. Dogs that hate you. Yeah, and and and, and <laughs> apparent and and you know you just pass over it with this thing. I'm guessing turd and all, and it just sucks everything <laughs> up. <laughs> I made the person next to me laugh so hard they spit their drink out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, does your dog still hate you? I hates my fucking guts. I can't. Uh, 
So Kyle has this dog. It, is it a Belgian Malamar or something? What is yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And apparently it's like a smaller, more aggressive German Shepherd. And it was a police dog. It was going to be, except that uh, it was too, like, anxious. So it, it pretty much flunked out of police school. And Kyle sees the dog, likes it, buys it, brings it home. Dog freaking hates Kyle. Kyle's roommate wants to get the dog fixed, right? He wants to cut the dog's balls off. Kyle is his last line of defense. He's the only reason this dog still has his pair of nuggets, and he doesn't appreciate Kyle for order. Let's go like ahead and destroy some nuts, Kyle. You know if you get the nuts cut off, he's going to get a little less aggressive. Yeah, he's going to start know, liking you. That's what everybody you. says. My, my dad has this little yappy uh, uh, rat terrier dog who's mm -hmm. just super aggressive. I guess yeah, he's, but he's a terrier. They're, they're designed that way. So are these dogs, though, dude. They, these, these dogs are the exact same mindset as a terrier. They're just big enough to hurt you. Um, but that terrier, the, it was just really yappy. It was biting everybody and super defensive. My dad, I mean, I, you know, anybody but like maybe me and a couple other members of the family would walk around. It would, it would nip them pretty hard, like bring blood. Well, let me and, give you this advice. Craigslist has a rehoming fee program. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this dog was expensive. This dog was. This is not Give away for thirty dollars. <laughs> I had, I had that, I had that black poodle, Zoe. She was the oh, dumbest oh, we, dog I've ever fucking seen in my life. I had I got, I got rid of her for twenty five dollars. Are we comparing a poodle to a Belgian Malinois? Is that Wings is yes. Wings is yeah. Wings my my dog is an attack dog. It's it's a mean motherfucker. It's my it's, dog was dumb. <laughs> I mean like she literally shit where she laid at. Okay, well this all right. You cannot compare my dog who probably has an IQ of thirty. Like it's it's literally smarter than some people to your dog <laughs> who you just said shit on itself. <laughs> no, like 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 you're trying to crate train it and potty train it so it pe so it poop outside. It, I've never seen a dog in my life take a shit and piss where it would lay down at. But it would take a shit and then people. lay in it. <laughs> they take these dogs and they they sew their stomachs to the inside of their body so they can throw them out of hell out of planes. And they can paratroop them down into enemy territory and just fuck shit up. I do, I do that with my dogs. <laughs> I really do. No, this is a these are, these are badass dogs. I've I've been to the the school where they train attack dogs, and I've been in the bite suit and had the dogs attack me. And I'm gonna tell you right, I, I'm le I think I weigh like 180 pounds maybe. At at the time, I weighed about 200 pounds actually. This dog weighed about 75 pounds, and I stood no chance. Like I could throw the dog anywhere I wanted to. But he's just all over me. He's, they bite so fucking hard. It's like well, having a bite. Is the kind of dog that like throws his body at you like butt first, or is he the kind of dog that like, bites and pulls you? It's like, the kind of dog that weight. jumps up and can and and like you know bites just, wherever the 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 trainer tells it to bite. You know if it, if so, he it, so bite it bites and tries to pull and uses his body weight to try to pull you down. It it bites and sinks its teeth in and doesn't let go. Like, like big a, dogs tend to throw their body at you and try to body block you and get you down and then start biting. Those are the kind you can fuck up. I, I I now you have you already raised a ring against a big body dog. You have yeah yeah. Now we can I can, arrange, I can arrange for you to to fight a. Uh, all right, here's the scenario. Dog. Wings of Redemption starts on the dog's back in a standing position with a rear naked choke. <laughs> oh, <sunk> no. <laughs> I'm not rear naked choking a dog. Now. My, my throat's too close to his mouth. It does work. work. Choke they a dog, Wings. I have choked out a dog. It does work. Wait 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 wait. Back up back up back up. You choked out a dog. <laughs> yeah, Chris. Chris's parents' dogs had a dog. Right, I want to see. I want to see the pictures of uh, what, Joe Lopin with dog choking going around. What kind of dog? Animal abuser. Uh, it was like a collie or something. You choked out a collie. You choked out Lassie. I, I <laughs> Holy fuck, out a Joe! Collie all the way out. I put it in a rear naked choke and I squeezed until it made a little whimper. Dog was a dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll I'll give Peter your address. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Peter. <laughs> it was redemption a... dog choker. <laughs> I'm not choking dogs out. That's Joe choking dogs out. No, I heard wings. Yeah, no, knock it off, it's wings. Kind of but see, I've done way worse to dogs. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh my god. Oh, no, no, no. Let's go not go wings. here at all. Wings. Well, What'd you do no, to a dog? It's not as bad as you think, Lefty. Like I had a coon dog one time, and we were out coon hunting. And no, not the Thanks, racist dude. coon hunting, Lefty. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> that was good. That was good. As I like. As soon it. as he said coon hunting, I was like, "Not oh, me, who's no." Gonna, it's, who's it's like, be? It was actually a black and tan. Um, he said, "Not the racist coon hunting," and I had to process it to understand <laughs> the joke. <laughs>
Uh, but we had a, it was a black and tan. Um, but what happened is he treated a raccoon and we shot it, and the raccoon fell out the tree. And what happened is the raccoon was still alive, because we you use a twenty two rifle to shoot raccoons out trees, and um, so it just stunned it. So when it, when the dog went over to try to bite it and kill it, whatever, the raccoon came alive and ended up putting its claws right into his gut and ripped his guts up. So his guts were hanging out, so I ended up having to shoot him. Yeah, I mean, well, that's not bad. You just put that's, down a a dog that. That's not too bad. Yeah, that's. That's human. I mean, it, and some people out there are like, "Oh, you should have took it to the vet." But those people, I have. Yeah, let's I've, walk in the middle of the night with dog guts all over us. Well, I mean, I would have done that, before, but yeah. but I mean, what you got to keep in mind is how expensive that is. I've had a dog who who like a, a pit bull attacked a dog, and it like literally did the same thing. It tore its stomach open, and there were intestines hanging out, and it was like an eighteen hundred dollar vet vet bill I had to pay. It's expensive, like, and I mean that's. I was, I was going to say, with Great Danes, I was starting to talk about it earlier. You have to I tie mean, their stomachs to the side. You, you know how horses, their stomachs can get, like, kinked up and they, they can die from it? Yeah. Yeah. Is it called colic? Is that it? Yeah. 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 So Great Danes suffer from that same affliction. So they have a surgery where you can, like, tie their stomach in place so that doesn't what do you, happen. Are you telling me that you got a fucking dog so big it has the same issues that horses have? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All big chested dogs do it. Rottweilers too. How do much really? food does that dog eat? Because you've got a dog so big that f- feeding it actually becomes an issue. It, yeah, dude. It, it's you know, like, stomach flips upside down. I think is what colic is. The so the puppy who's still growing eats six cups of food a day, and then she gets six cups. Yeah, and the big and the the full grown one, he's down to like four or five. So that's it's dog food must be like a second job for you. Dude, it's like we put, and my wife gets them expensive dog food too. That's what I was gonna ask. Oh man, you get you get like the specially formulated bullshit, huh? Yeah, well, the Purina Plus plan or something. Like, stuff. Here, I had a dog named Hunter. He lived seventeen years. He lived off table scraps. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> nah. well, if you can live off table scraps at Wings of Redemption's house, you've done something. <laughs> <laughs> the um, uh, two of our dogs get like itchy and skin conditions or something if you don't give them premium food. So yeah, that's customer designed. I mean, that that food's designed to whip model money out your pocket. Get them to cheap, the cheap shit. No, don't do that. You want to feed your dog good stuff. Woody, you should check on a. Uh, Did you just not hear? I had a dog live seventeen years, and he would have he would still be alive today if the heat didn't get him that one summer. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait! By the heat, did you leave him under the same bucket you left that kitten under? No, he was a long haired dog. He was a boy. Kill the dog. He was a boy can span him. He was 17. He had arthritis in his hips and stuff. And uh, we had a really hot summer uh, probably five or six years ago. And, like, one of his 110 degrees days, just he just couldn't take it. Wings is the Hitler of dogs. See, I thought he meant, like, the police. Like, the police came and got no, him. No, and that's like, why he hates cops thunder. so much now because like, they killed his dog. dog. Yeah, like, the heat, the heat, he'd be just well, – we went out there and he was laying down. looked like he was asleep, walked over to feed him. Oh, you weren't asleep. Oh. That's sad. Damn, Wings. Joe, hit the music. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about it. I can tell you the time about the cop ran over my collie. Oh, uh, Goddamn cop. Yeah, yeah, fuck them cops. His name was Snoopy. <laughs> he was a collie. And a, a cop was, like, trying to run down somebody that was speeding. <laughs> and he run my dog all the hell over. I was like five back then, though. Oh. Now, Joe, don't you feel bad? No. No. Yeah, I didn't think you would. <laughs> Joe's like, I choked that collie. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, are you engaged now? Uh, yes. When are you getting married? Uh, debatable. Uh, next summer. So uh, Katie has nursing school, so she'll finish up in November. Mm-hmm. She doesn't want to deal with that. Get the prenups, it. dog. Get the prenup sign. Oh, yeah, right. This is just a beacon of good news and hope. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, what do you got going on, girl wise? You got a girlfriend? Nothing right now. No, I kind of been putting that on hold. Folks. Just Joe. Before I get called a dog killer, <laughs> this dog's alive and, and well. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look how he holds it up. <laughs> He's like, oh, this one ain't dead yet. This I one. Have- <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This one ain't dead yet. <laughs> That's exactly what that was like. This one ain't dead yet. Who thinks we should try to get Jimmy a girlfriend on the show? 
Yeah, so who wants to date Jimmy? Yeah, he's a, a cop, he's, so you got to look past that. He's a professional athlete. He's on TV every week right now. He's a policeman. Um, who says he wants a girlfriend, Woody? Okay, go ahead and get him a boyfriend. I don't care. Oh, Who's a girl? <laughs> Whatever <laughs> Jimmy doesn't want, I'll take the leftovers. All right. <laughs> How many girl, I got 4.8% girl viewers this month, so I'm doing pretty good. 4.8%? That's not bad, dude. You're a no. ladies' man. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, you big fucker! You uh, my pit bull out and see which one's bigger. What kind of dog is that? Uh it's a bulldog. <laughs> nice. I want to get one of mine. Hold on, I'll be back. I'll see if I can wrestle one up. He's got to go get a dog. Risky, come back. Come How big is that one, Joe? Uh he's like seventy pounds. That's, that's a pretty, pretty big dog. Good. Damn. That's a big enough dog to whip your ass. Yep. <laughs> Katie's 90 pounds right now. <laughs> you seen Katie, Kyle? I have not, I don't believe. Uh, I think when I was there, you had just the little dogs. Yeah, that was Shalene's puppies. Um, I, I recently got a, uh, a red nose. Red nose pit. So yeah. You're getting puppies, buying trucks. <laughs> Well, the the pit bull was actually a rescue dog. Oh, okay. Oh. Dogs are dogs can be expensive, man. Especially if you if you ever have if you get into any kind of like medical <laughs> bills. Holy fall. shit! What are you what are you doing? Good <laughs> lord! <laughs> what are you just brought a dog in that's bigger than? Where, where's the? Yeah. What are you, is your back hurting after that one? The dog's like, what are you doing to me? What are you doing to Sally? No, so confused. It oh, looks like a Dalmatian that's a horse. <laughs> that dog's like, I don't like his shit. <laughs> She's looking at the ground. God. You're making a spectacle of me. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is her feet on the ground right now, or are you still holding her up? Her back feet are on the ground. I'm... God, God damn it. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this shit. <laughs> so this, this is hard. Oh, that's a cute oh. dog. Look at it. Look at it. Here, I'll put myself on the on the big screen. Here she is. Aww. How old is that dog? He's like seven or eight months, I think. Oh my god! It's no. not even. So is it's not even all the way grown. No, right, she's gonna be big. Ready, Holy she'll, shit! She'll probably be seven or eight feet tall by the time she's done. <laughs> <laughs> that is a pretty dog, though. He's wings is right. It looks like a horse-sized Dalmatian. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I got going. I on. remember that's the puppy that you got a while back. It was yeah. in a block. Wow, that thing was little not too long ago. I know, dude. It's huge now. It's. It. I don't know how Kaya comes up. I say that all the time too. <laughs> she grows. This is actually my mama's dog. I bought this from my mama about three years ago. Uh, and then I think our other dog is still bigger than she is at this point. And then we have a lab too. We have three dogs. It's like a farm. It's <sighs> labs are cool. That's what I own me a lab. That's what I should have got. I, if if <coughs> lightning ever hits my dog, fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> fingers crossed for there's, or there's against. A, there's a dead tree right in the middle of its pin. I'm not telling anybody. Like, <laughs> I'm hoping that really, tree just. Just... If you really want me a, a lab, they're giving one away right now. <laughs> On, on the Craigslist, it's fully I, trained. I'm not gonna have two dogs. I, I'm not gonna do that. But if I could get, you know, um, if, if I get my dog to die, I'm gonna get. <laughs> I don't want a chocolate lab. Our, um, so here's my experience. I actually like two dogs. I consider us a two dog family. It's my preference. I feel like with the second dog, they play with each other. They're kind of happy. Like I, I like having two dogs. The third adds nothing. It just cre <laughs> it's just harder to walk around. There's always a dog underfoot. I, I like I can't trans I, like I have two horses and a dog in my house, and they're like they come at your feet and they sniff you and, and um, Great Danes do this thing where they lean up against you like to get attention and love, and there's always they're like boxing you in from either thigh, leaning up against you looking for love, and <laughs> it's uh it's it's nonstop. They overwhelm you, so two is good. Three's a crowd. Oh, yeah, I can... there you go. You like the freezer crowd thing? Yeah, I like that reference. I liked it. I liked yeah. That. It was good. What is it? Two's a party? Three's a crowd? I don't know. I've only heard three's a crowd. Three okay. could be a party. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, we all know exactly where Kyle's going. Though. Yeah, yeah. This this is no mystery over that. There's no mystery uh, over that. No idea what you're talking about. Punching chicks in the face. Oh my god. No, no, just stop. Joe, ever hit a girl? Uh just in training. Just in training. All right. Jimmy? He said he shakes the shit out of him. We already discussed this on this PK. <laughs> <laughs> in what situation would you shake a girl? Uh, Being irrational? Yeah. It's like, a, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> We're being crazy. <laughs> That's Where's how he wakes dinner? up for breakfast in the morning. <laughs> I want eggs. Jimmy? What's your I history with girl violence? Probably not even shake a girl. It's pretty borderline. <laughs> to me. Um, yeah, I try to stay hands off, and hands off is a great. Uh, what awesome. if it's? What if it's? What? Well, what if it's like that girl that Joe was describing, who you know does MMA? Like, what if she is like pissed off at you for no good reason? Like she's drunk and she's coming at you swinging. What do you do then? Yeah, you step aside and just you reason with her. Just like any girl. She is unreasonable, literally. Uh, matter of fact, let's tie this into one of my topics. Let's oh, do the Woody, uh, the Woody rear naked choke slam on the airport on the TSA guy. Oh gosh, <laughs> did you guys see that? No. So there's an off-duty cop, and uh, he was at, I guess we'll call it airport security or something like that. He looks exactly like me, but it wasn't me. But, like, he he wears clothes that I would wear. He's about my height and build and, like, coloring and hair and everything. But it wasn't really me. Anyway, he's an off-duty cop, and he sees this TSA person, who clearly has no grappling skills whatsoever, struggling to get the upper hand against a woman. So, the off-duty cop goes in there, and I forget what he did. It might have been, like, a judo over-the-hip throw or something. But instantly, he, like, gets her in some sort of side mount and uh, puts his hand up, like... I got this, bro. And everyone settles down while they, like, subdue the woman. So, Wings, where were you headed with this? Police brutality. <laughs> Police brutality? <laughs> really? She was asking for it. She wasn't asking. It was an eld it was a homeless black woman mm -hmm. that wanted to get through airport security, so she was trying to force her way through. This cop jumps over the railing while he's off duty and, like, basically choke slams his bitch. <laughs> like, I have to see this video now. I have to see this video. I'm, I'm looking for it. it was, it's it's linked in the chat. I've got it here. Yeah, can, I'm showing uh, it to our our the people watching the show right now. I'll I'll re put it into the into the. Oh, chat it might have been out. a woman. Two women wrestling. I think that's the yeah, deal. The, yeah. Yeah. Oh, read, the, read the report. The the black woman is actually homeless. You see, and, and I don't. I'm not a, against him getting involved to break it up, but I just he think, did it way over the yeah, top. The, he could have easily like just pulled her off and like pushed her up against the wall or something like that. As I watch it now, he kind of like He's, grabbed her in a rear naked choke and used it to throw her to the ground, and she landed kind of face first into the carpet. <laughs> it was a good move. I approve. <laughs> it was a good move. Yeah, yeah it was a good yeah. Move. sound move. Yeah, I'm good, down uh, with this. I was hoping they'd show a replay. I'm gonna play it one more time. <laughs> I was hoping if they had like three more, three or four more cops, they could have took turns stunning him, maybe kick him in the face in handcuffs. Look He'd at him; right he's now. in there like a hero. Wait, did you say stunning him like Stone Cold Stunner? Like hit him with one of those? Like, like actually taking the taser out, maybe the, the people's elbow on him. <laughs> yeah, jump, jump off the top rope. <laughs> the people's elbow is is such a great move. I want to see that. I want to see that done in professional fighting. I want to see somebody just be like, you know what, fuck it, and just just roll out with the people's elbow. <laughs> had to really, the guy had to be already knocked the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that happens occasionally, you know, when the guy's down and you, they, you know, you jump on him and, and get a couple love taps in. Joe, did you see the the video yet? Yeah, I just watched it. I think it looks perfect. Like, what? Like, do you want him to just tap her on the shoulder and ask her politely to stop with he's beating up some other woman? Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Was she was she really beating up the other woman though? I I, I don't know. She maybe was, I was... they were like struggling because she wanted to get by, and the woman was restraining her, and she was having trouble doing it. Uh -huh. when someone's in a uniform, you don't struggle with them. You do what they ask you to do. The guy in Germany about didn't 60 years saying, ago who, uh, who <laughs> thought the exact same <laughs> way. Oh, sure. Let Lefty goes straight to Hitler. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I didn't don't, even think don't. about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to have damn a reason it. for me not to go there. you got to have a reason to stop me. Well, I mean, it was a secure area, police perhaps. isn't a reason. Uh, it was at an airport, right? Yeah, I understand. He was also in Hawaii. This person was out of line. I still think he took it overboard. 
I'm sure two or three men could have easily pulled her off without slamming her into the ground. Two or three? I mean, I don't think there were two or three. That hands. guy could have. Do- that guy did it. Like ten seconds. Ten seconds goes by in the video. There's like eight guys there that could easily pulled her off in. I love how he's like looking for a tag after he gets her on the ground too. Like he's looking <laughs> in the corner for his tag partner. I pictured him saying, "It's okay, I'm a cop." Like with oh. his hand up. That I didn't hear any audio, but that's what I imagine. I'm gonna do that next time. Next time I slam somebody to the ground, it's okay. I'm a cop. <laughs> when was the last time you slammed somebody to the ground, Wings? Fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, but you said next time to make me think it was like a weekly occurrence. Like you could make that new video series. Well, I'm just saying, slamming like, people into the ground with wings. Is bullshit. We're back on this shit again. It may, every time I think about cops giving me bullshit, I think about the uh, the cop that was killing all the other cops in California. Now they would run people off the road and shoot their vehicle up and get away with it. Let me run my vehicle. That sounds like, wasn't that a Clint Eastwood movie? No, 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 no. This actually well, no, they actually did that. No, L.A. cops actually shot they up. They actually them. ran people off the road that they thought was the uh, Christopher Donner guy and shot their car up and well, got damn. completely away with it. They messed it up. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. Oh, and then um, they wanted See, to give her... See, those cops, not the guy that's writing you a ticket for going over the speed limit. You, you don't think he'd do the same thing? Cops are bullies. No. Bullies. Not all cops are psycho killers, bro. Not all of them are. Some of them are lazy. Some right, of them but, are but here's my something. point. The, the guy bullies, that's writing a ticket isn't violating your civil rights. <laughs> I like Wings' comeback. He's like, I know they're not all psycho killers. There's the lazy ones, the adulterers, the rapists. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> all... Some are lazy. Some are power hungry. And some of them are just some regular are just guys that are trying to get a paycheck because they they need a fucking paycheck. What am I, Wings? What am I? I don't know. I haven't seen you. <laughs> Jimmy, you tell us. Which one are you? you, you we've given you the choice. Power hungry, rapist, bully, or lazy? <laughs> yeah, I'm more towards the lazy one. Or one gay. Of- There's also gay. Don't forget gay. <sighs> Let me ask you this, Jimmy. If somebody's on the side of the road and need their tire change and it's a guy, would you stop him? Stop and help him? Help him, yeah. That's okay. like what I do. That's my job. It's just to be like a community. Like Thank help you. Them. All right. If, he, if somebody needs a jump on a dead battery, would you stop and help him? Absolutely, yeah. Most wouldn't. Do you really well, do that? Yeah, I really would. Yeah, like I, I remember when I I had I had a car left the lights on going into the movies and the battery died. So I'm like, I see a cop. I'm like, good, there's a cop. We're trying to wave him down. He knew he had to see us. But you were trying to wave him down with your middle finger. That's not <laughs> work. I was like, I was like eight. I was like seventeen then. This so a, you're somehow incapable of giving them the finger at 17? No, I was no, like, oh, there's I think a he's saying it's have jumper cables. We can uh, get at home. It's Before pre-police hate. Mm. Yeah, this is pre-police hate. <laughs> and, like, this bitch is not just goes on. He know he had to see us. There's, like, three guys there just trying to wave him down. What if we were trying to get a rape victim saved? I, I don't know. He didn't know why we were waving him down. <clears throat> So, I'm not against you hating cops' wings. I just think you're you're just you're hating the wrong guys. You don't know who I'm hating, though. I don't hate Jimmy. If I seen a cop stop stop and like help change a tire, or do this, or maybe even give directions, I'm like, good. That's a good man. When I see a cop kick, you know, people in handcuffs, want to mace, want to do this bullshit, want to take women down and in, in, with excessive force, no, that's <laughs> not the man. You can't tell me that wasn't excessive force. No, I, I, I thought it was good. No, it looked about right to me. She was being, uh, she's being difficult. I watched the video again, and she was he kind her of up and slammed her down. That would be excessive force. He grabbed her and pulled her straight down. wasn't wasn't even super forceful. You know, he didn't have to even you know really like jump all his weight into it. He just kind of dragged her down. And I also, she was kind of giving some shots to the old lady, to the old TSA worker that was trying to grab her. I, I could have got. I don't that know what the TSA worker did to her first though. I could have got that lady off in a nicer manner than he did. But you would have squished her. No, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't even did that. He didn't even need to take her to the ground. I can show you excessive force and how to throw someone on their head. That's I can good. show you excessive force, too. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is that Wait, picture don't of that do video it. right there? Yeah. That video I just watched. That was not excessive force. I think it was okay. All right. All right. I had a question. Pussy, you guys, you guys are like Johnny Lawman. No, we could just no wait, wait. You wait. know I hate police officers. You I know, know I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you're just you're going off on people writing you tickets. And okay, I don't yeah, see how I'm be being dick, the sissy but... here. I'm okay with violence, and you're not. Oh, That's man. a good point as well. 
You ever see a picture of those officers slamming fourteen year old girls to the canvas? Because see, they that's talk the oh, thing. Oh, to the yeah, canvas. Oh, that's oh. excessive force. One hundred percent. Yeah, like just imagine that's Hope, Woody. Some, say Hope wants to smart back to him and he decides to kick her in the chest and knock her across the room. This is going to sound terrible, but to me, it's like there are people that you use a lot of force with and there's people that you don't. When you see that like 14 year old skinny boy so on a skateboard. Almost elderly black lady you use, a, you use a lot of force with? Let me keep going. When you see that like 14 year old who's skateboarding in some inappropriate place, you don't have to wrestle him down and beat him up and all that stuff. Like he's. You can grab by the seat of the pants and pick him up. You yeah, don't I, need to fuck with him at all. He's skateboarding. Uh, well, I'm so torn Trying on to that. Like, I totally get that. Blocking. On the other hand, like, if you're grinding on my curb or something, I don't know, my stairs to my retail place, you are going to wreck the, the edge of it. It, that's, it really does cause damage. But um, if he's just skateboarding by or something, there's no need to get physical with that kid. If um, if you're talking about hope, if people don't know, I have a 13 year old ginger as a daughter, and uh, <laughs> and there's really no need to like you know wrestle her to the ground and do whatever. I mean, it, it, she'll cry if you speak to her harshly. So you know you can call it call it good there. On the other hand, you know if you have like this really athletic looking 22 year old guy who seems to be imposing some sort of threat then, uh, you know, that's a scenario where I think maybe you, you can use violence as a precaution. I, I was t I've was talked to my cop buddy about this a lot, and he's a guy who, who's had to throw down a bunch of times. Like, there have been... He, he doesn't use his taser because of the paperwork that's involved every time you deploy it. And he doesn't use his pepper spray for the same reason. He ends up in fist fights often. <laughs> that, like, 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 often. Like, like, I don't know, maybe a dozen times a year. Um, because it's it's a rough Damn. area. He, it's a rough area. He where patrols. you live? You know where I live. Yeah, I and remember chickens and cows <laughs> and like <laughs> something to do with fish, right? You gotta go to the other side of town. Okay. Yeah, go in the middle of town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but there've been but you know these guys will swing on him, you know, and and, and as, as soon as that happens, you know, he's a he's he's shorter than I am, but he's really stocky and and really well built. And he he has beaten the shit out of many uh. Uh, a stupid dude didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, yeah once you swing at a cop, it's all over. He Your started. He, he was wearing. Uh, he was wearing some gloves, uh, some tactical gloves that have Kevlar knuckles, and they made him stop wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, who's your favorite person? Who's your favorite type of person to beat up? Like, what gives you pleasure? Uh, I typically don't get much pleasure out of beating people. Oh come up. on! You train uh, MMA as a professional fighter. Tell me you don't. You don't get a little joy out of that, like new Come guy on, who comes bullshit. to the gym, like, thinks he, he's gangster. It, his job's a cop, and he he trains him. Like... <laughs> the guy be Wait, what, Jimmy. What Joe say? I can't hear. That's the point. Nothing. Whispering he, secrets. Yeah. Actually, the people that like they think they can beat me up, like if I'm like wrestling with someone, but I'm going kind of light, and the person gets like pissed and thinks like they like getting the better of me. I just, I get, like, enjoyment out of just crushing them and watching them get frustrated when they can't win. Uh, I like it when the, the perfect specimens lose. Is that you, Kyle? I, I don't make noise, dude. It's a good wing. Uh, you liar. It was you. It was not me, dude. I'm a professional. You liar. I blame <laughs> every, Joe. No, I blame time, Joe. <laughs> no, you'll never hear me talk to anybody in the room. You'll never hear me, like, that open a like door. A thing, Kyle. Do you have, like, a little kid over there? I do not have any little kids over here now. I've got, I am, I, I've, got, I've got my glass over here with some ice in it, so you'd hear a jingle if, if anything. But I, I heard that noise. That sounded like a, I don't know, a dog pitter pattering around. Was it you, Joe? Who was playing with stuff? Not, it wasn't this. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's totally what it was. Yeah, totally that. Totally that. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, next topic. Lefty, what do you got? Wait, I didn't call for the change in topic though. Did, did you guys talk yet about the that uh, the woman in Colorado that didn't know what a magazine was? Did you guys talk about <laughs> 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 no, please tell me the story. This lady is pushing is pushing gun legislation, and in her and basically what she says is she's like with these high capacity magazines, we just need to ban them. Because then the ones that are in existence will against, eventually just get shot up and they'll all be gone. She, <laughs> she didn't know the difference between a magazine, which for those of you who don't know, 
And there's nothing wrong with not knowing this unless you're a politician <laughs> writing legislation you're about passing it. Passing laws on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there's nothing wrong with not knowing this. A magazine is the thing that holds the bullets that is inserted into the firearm. Hold on, I get one. And it feeds the bullets into the firearm. It's a it's a metal box basically with a spring loaded thing in it. She it's thought a metal, it was a bullet. It's a metal box with a spring. She basically. didn't know the difference between that and bullets, basically. Yeah, Wings had one extremely handy, almost frighteningly handy. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh. I I, I want to take stock of this. Hang on, Woody. I just want to point out that you walked over, opened a closet, put in a code, and removed a magazine. <laughs> Wings reached next to him and grabbed one. He grabbed it out of the gun. I got a, I got a three fifty seven revolver, a Wings. knife, and an assault rifle behind me. You win, dude. Although, I will say, you don't have kids living in your house. You know, it, I can't I keep loading. That would stop wings. Unless it's loaded. It would stop wings. What? Wait, wait. Did you, you said you pulled it out of a gun, though, right? Yeah, I pulled it out of the assault rifle behind me. Yeah, see, I can't keep loaded assault rifles laying around my house. <laughs> <laughs> I have a special needs son. You can't even, like, train him to do gun responsibility yet. Like, it's... Well, when the kids were here, I did be fair. I did hang it up high. <laughs> Load it, though. Load that it, way though. they've got to like get a bunch Should of Should I unload the gun? Nah, fuck that. I'll just put it up, <laughs> put it up in the ceiling. Nah, don't worry First about off, it. they're not supposed to be in my office. So if they shoot this up, it's their fault. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Woody, Woody, grab your grab your sight. Show 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 them your show them your AR. Wait. What did you ask I, me to grab? I, I was gonna. Uh, you was, know, I, I kind of kicked myself that somebody offered to sell me a F two thousand really cheap about two years ago. Now Which they're one? like four grand. I don't know the one with the sight on it. Oh, they both have sights on it. Yeah, I don't care. Show them anyway. All right, hold on. Everybody was. I want to see that AR fifteen. All right. So, did they sign the legislation or did they just introduce it? In this Who knows? Know, but, it, uh, it's it's always like that. I just want to point out that Woody has one of the most advanced optics in the world on his <laughs> AR-15. That's how you know he's totally badass. Woody has a Canadian military L-can on there. That is a $4,000 scope. And uh, you, you, you cannot get your, lay your hands on one. It's not there. mine, though. PKA, <laughs> we come packed. America. America. Wiggs just casually loading an assault rifle and just laying it down behind him where he's sitting. <laughs> just like, oh, no big deal, just loading up this assault rifle. I don't know rifle. if you know, that chair right there, that's the assault rifle chair. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, where that's I put the assault rifles. <laughs> that, that, no. That's an assault chair. <laughs> That, that's designed so when somebody knocks on the door, I can go. <laughs> Look at Joe. Door. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a I've got a little uh, Walther that I keep here. It's not loaded. It's also fake, but <laughs> <laughs> I was be going until for a I second. Saw the red dot on the barrel. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, I got more. <laughs> oh, I, I get you all beat. <laughs> Please be a super a sick soaker. Two, sick two two six. I got to shoot one the other day. I fell in love with it. It's a very nice handgun. It, it feels so good in your hand. Yeah, it's got a good sight plane. It's similar to the 1911. That's the gun I want. Right there. If I had some disposable income, that's I'd be I'd be so buying that. They're uh, they're fun to shoot and they're they're easy to take apart. Uh oh. That's the jet ski gun. Yep. Yeah. yeah, they're very cool guns. Anyway. I like both of them, actually. I, I don't know if I like the AR-15 more or less than this one. F-2000 just has cool look. It's just cool looking. You don't see them that often. Yeah, yeah. that's that's why I bought mine. You, you, you know, you, people are like, oh, you got an FNFS-2000. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. What, you got AR-15? Yeah, you and your three buddies over there. Look at this. Yeah, the the thing about the AR-15, we we we've, we've had this discussion before. Is it's so customizable. You know, it's like a Honda. You can put so much shit on there. Every little piece on it can be replaced. Right. And, and for a while, there was this concern about a ban too, and like, you know, if they ban, if they can't sell any more AR-15s, they'll still be selling like scopes for it, and you know, whatever, all sorts of accessories that go with it. It'll always be a really popular gun, just based on how many are out there. So yeah, everybody has one. But there's some advantage to, like, everybody having one because you know stuff the thing. The thing about it is that a lot of people don't realize is 
you can make your own if you want. There's there's you can make your own personal AR-15 completely legally with no paperwork. But you you do have to register the uh, what's it called? Depends what state you're in. Put this away. Uh, what's the is it is it the receiver? It's the lower it's, yeah the lower the receiver. lower receiver. You, you ever see the how they sell like machine guns now? I've seen this one Browning machine gun that's a rep. It's supposed to be a replica. They sell you everything with the firing pin, and you can put it together yourself. Mm. You're not supposed to put the firing pin in it. See, Wait, but that's think. the point where we've gotten to. We've gotten so paranoid and, and just so ridiculous. We are now letting the government say that you cannot have a certain size metal box with a spring in it. And yeah. if it's larger than so, this, you have to register it with the government. Because, you know, having a 30-round magazine isn't because reloading the magazine while you're shooting at the range for fun sucks. It's because... It's so you can kill extra kids. That's the thing, yeah. You know, I, I, I bought a handful of 30-round magazines just because they're what I prefer to shoot with. I don't want to reload every 10 when I'm at the range. I got a high-capacity magazine for my 22 rifle. Yeah. It's, yeah. Right. And, and there's always this, you know, discussion of, well, why do you need that? Why do you need that assault rifle? And it's like, why is it I have to justify my hobby? Like everything, no one says, why do you need Call of Duty? No one says, why do you need your, you know, 500 horsepower in your car or your triathlete bicycle or any of these other things that you might have an interest well, in? I get, I get this question. Why do you need a truck wings? Because well, I got a dick. But hold on. <laughs> the, the interesting part about what Woody was saying and, and what you need and what you do, why do you need this? Why do you need that? Well, I can justify need for Woody's a hobby. Rifle isn't specifically mentioned in the founding document of this country. The Call of Duty isn't mentioned as a right. Neither is a truck or woodworking or anything else. Guns were specifically laid out for a, for a very specific reason. And all of a sudden it's, well, why do you need this? Why do you need that? If all of a sudden we started regulating things that we may or may not need all the time, then why do you need to be secure in your home against unlawful search and seizure? I mean, it's not like you got anything to hide, right? The interesting thing about guns, too, is it, they're they're equalizers. You know, Wings, you might know the quote. What, what is it? Like, all men were... Or men were God not created... created man, Colonel Colt made them equal. Thank you. Yeah, so Colt being, you know, the Colt 45, the gun. God created men, Colonel Colt made them equal. If there was no weapons in play, right, then guys like Jimmy and Joe could just run around doing whatever the yeah, hell they, they wanted. they could take my sandwich, you know, right. take my car. Wait, 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 wait. The first thing Wings thought about that he wouldn't want taken from him <laughs> was a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, guys like Jimmy and Joe would just rule the town, right? They'd do anything they wanted. They could go to a bar, they could beat people up, they could do their thing. And well, technically, if you get two or three weak asses like me, we could beat up them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't care how bad you ass you are. Three or four guys, you can still whip your ass. No, I don't know. Go, go the other direction, Wings. You think you could beat up three girls? No. Really? I mean, how big? How, how old? No, just regular old girls. I don't know. Hot what, ones 22? from high school. Yeah, I could, I could probably beat college up College or whatever. I don't, yeah, I think you could. I don't know. It, it, but that, that'd be pushing it. I, I, I've never been punched Could in I the face by a no. pro-level fighter or something. Like, I might get knocked out. It is just, you know, maybe girls I don't... What's that? Girls are vicious. <laughs> all mean, right. Technically, all you got to do is grapple one of them, and the other two start beating them in the head. So where I was headed with this was, without weapons, then it's really just a matter of, like, schoolyard bulliness type things, right? But when you start, like, arming women, arming smaller guys, like, it, all, all of a sudden, you know, everybody becomes equal again. And you know, that's one argument that people put forward in favor of firearms. Back to the girls thing, Woody. I just th I thought about something that was re really well with this. In gym class in, mm -hmm. in middle school, we had we had like eleven boys and something like eighteen girls okay. in the gym class. So we had a tug of war one day, and we thought, oh, it wouldn't matter. We don't need equal teams. We can beat the girls. We're guys. But you middle school guys. Girls. Yeah, no, huh? middle middle schoolers like heck. Girls might be bigger at thirteen or so. Yeah, but you know, obviously, all the guys are stronger than the girls, and it's like, nope, nope, not we lost to every tug of war. Yeah, no, I know. Those I'm not six extra, that. extra people really whooped our ass. I want to say if it's college, and you're talking about 18 girls against 12, 11 or 12, I don't know, 11 guys, then it might be a lot closer than middle school. I, what is, I still think the girls might have a chance to win, though. What's Joe looking at? Uh, Watching uh, some girl in Invicta, one with a flying arm lock in like 12 seconds. 
Don't they? I'm just saying, like, the power in numbers can win. Jimmy, did you roll with Rhonda? I did, yeah. How did that go? Uh, pretty good. She, like, to me, she was still a girl. Like, you could tell she was awesome. Like, really good at what she did, but she's still a 135-pound girl. So, um, there wasn't, like, she beat the shit out of me. Like, if she was my size and equal, like, athleticism, she was awesome. Like, you could tell she was phenomenal. Uh, but but she just couldn't overcome the strength. Yeah, it was just I'm way too big and strong, um, regardless of how technical she was. But, like, you could feel her. You could see her move. Like, she was awesome. Like, it was really cool to get to, like, just even grab her. Because I actually I took it down to a lighter pace so we could actually just work together kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really fun to be able to kind of train with her and see how good she really is. Cool. So lay out some of your grappling accomplishments, right? You get, Didn't you do something at Pan Ams or...? Yes, I won as a brown belt like two years ago, I think. Uh -huh. and, and before that, I'd won a couple of times like Gi and no Gi at the purple and brown belt levels. Um, the fans, I did a bunch of times. This is Gi and no Gi. I think something like four or five times I won that. And uh, like I lost a couple of times like at the finals when you lost in both the absolute division and the regular, which sucks. <laughs> and then second twice in the same tournament. Um, was it the same guy? No, it was two different guys too, which made it even worse. Mm. Uh, the first, the first guy sucked. I just got caught with a triangle choke and I was dominating him. And the second guy was actually really good. It was a pretty cool match. Um, but yeah, I finished second twice. That kind of sucked. But um, then the only other really big thing, uh, well, I won a world championship as a purple belt as well. And then the Abu Dhabi trials, probably the other big thing I did was. A brown belt and in the black belt division i finished second so you got second in abu dhabi's uh the trials not the actual uh, okay yeah it's different it's not the one you hear about as like the big abu dhabi like invite only tournament it's the uh, world pro trials it's a different type of thing yeah someone i know got second at abu dhabi's but she's a girl so it's not the same thing but <laughs> i got a question for uh for uh, jeremy jimmy have you ever grabbed a hold of somebody and he was a lot stronger than you thought he was going to be? Yes. What do you do in that situation? You try a lot harder than you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the thing I fear about any time I have to physically, like, you know, muscle around anybody. Is like, how strong is this guy going to be? Cause you never can tell with some people. Yeah, it's like, you just, like, hope that if they're stronger, you're technically better. Like, for me... A lot of people say that about me. It's like, oh, you're a lot stronger than I thought. Um, and it's just, it's really just the leverage you use and stuff. It's, it comes down to being strong, but also using like technique and stuff. Um, but no, I've never really had someone like, oh shit, I don't know what to do. He's way too strong. Um, but I don't know if Joe maybe has done that. I have no idea. We get one kid at my gym that is way too fucking strong for how <laughs> he's like 150 pounds and he's a. Uh, uh, like a trash guy, you know, he, he picks up big fucking heavy barrels of trash and dumps <laughs> them in the truck all day, every day. And I, you would swear he's 200 pounds. He, he's like so fucking strong. It's retarded. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> just like he has nothing else to add, just that this guy is retardedly strong. Joe, remember that guy that you rolled with in Chicago at that gym? That guy who I don't know, he looked like he was like 22 or something, but he was just incredibly muscular. Yeah, yeah. for for some reason he asked Joe how much he weighs. Like like that was going to influence his decision. Joe's like 170. He was like, oh, okay. You might like the Incredible Hulk over here. <laughs> yeah. That guy looked ridiculous. Like, like that guy's had veins just popping out everywhere. Yeah, that, that guy was strong. He, he was way stronger than me. But uh, you just you can't fight those guys with strength. You know, you got you to gotta use angles. You got to use speed. You got to be a little bit better, a little bit more technically sound. There's actually an awesome video on YouTube, if you look it up, of me grappling a guy who's not only, like, superhuman strong, but he's also technically better than me, too, and he just rips my arm off. I recommend it. It's Ricard Ricardo Abreu, I think. You got my name and his name. You just see some humans. I might have to link that, because I can't spell any of these names. <laughs> I'm from South Carolina. Uh, what was I going to... Ah, Jimmy. Jimmy. Ah, I had some question. I lost it. Oh, oh, are you going to stay at 185? Um... Probably not. You know, we tossed around the idea. It depends on you know how well I do and stuff. Um, but probably I'll end up trying to make the move down to 170 to just try to really make. A how push. the hell you drop 15 pounds like that? 
Uh, just eating right. A lot of water. Like probably like 10 or 15 pounds would be water weight towards the end. But you just kind of get a diet down and get super. Lean. It's gonna suck miserably. It's gonna be really hard. But it's. Like, what do you do when you're like you want to eat something you know you can't? You just feel like you just don't. I try to complain and stuff and then just <laughs> a complainer. And... Joe plays music for you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you, was it? What do you walk around at right now? One ninety-five? No, nah, about two oh five or so normally. Um, I got a little bit heavier after the show, so I took a little bit of time off just to rest and kind of mentally take a break. From now we know what kind of cop you are. Like I'm on Wings's list, you made lazy. He's a lazy donut eating cop. <laughs> <laughs> So you're at 205 and you want to wrestle and you want to fight at 170. Yeah. Well, I would walk probably let I would diet down and try to be at like 195 or so walking and then like that last couple of weeks you'll diet even more strict and then cut like 15 pounds. How, how tall yeah. are you? Uh 6 feet roughly. Okay. I'd have to try like I probably do like a mock cut at 170 just see how excruciating I'd be cuz I haven't weighed 170 since I was like 16 years old. So um, Some of the guys on the Ultimate Fighter this season are like incredibly strong looking, right? Like, who's the guy that lost the first fight? Last name was like Guilford or something? Uh, Gilbert Smith, yeah. Yeah, Gilbert Smith. And then um, the guy that you beat, Clint Hester, do I have his name right? Yeah, he was a freak. Like, both I, of them. Like, like, right now, is like, I'm a little bit big for 170, but I'm very small for 185. I'm like kind of right in the middle of those weight classes. But, like, guys like Clint. He's like the top end of 185. Like he was enormous for that weight class. So guys like Clint and guys like Gilbert, do you think they get that big on purpose, or it's just that's how their body responds to the same training you do? Clint, I think he's just genetically a freak. Gilbert, I know he just is in the gym lifting all the time. <laughs> Joe's being racist. I didn't uh, say a word. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert, Gilbert is also very short though. He was only like five feet tall. Like that's exaggerating, but he was really short. So he. Like, to me, Gilbert wasn't big for the weight class. Clint was, like, 6'2 and humongous and ripped. Um, so that, that was a little different. But Yeah, there was a discussion on Reddit. Like, I didn't know if, if he looked like... If you guys see him, for starters, they're black, which is why Joe and Lefty are so racist about it. I, and, I said nothing! <laughs> you bastards! And, um, but if you saw him, they were just, like, jack superhero action figure looking guys. One's taller like that, and the other's shorter like that. And... In my head, it was like, well, they're grappling and fighting and stuff all the time, and that's how their body react to it, whereas other people maybe get to be like that sort of thinner garbage man type guy that Joe's talking about. But So the question is, do they get that strong looking on purpose? Are they hitting the gym, or is it just grappling? I think just genetics, really. Um, all right. It sucks, too, because like... I think I look like I'm in pretty decent shape. And then I get an occasion, I stand next to Clint Hester, and everyone's like, you look like a bag of shit. That's <laughs> <laughs> and huge. Like, it makes me look pretty bad. Yeah. And Josh looked pretty in shape, too. Yeah, he was pretty huge. He was probably the second biggest guy behind Clint in the house as well. Had pretty big dude. Good uh, guys. Yeah. What do you say? They're good draws. Fight the two biggest guys in the house. Yeah, yeah, well done. Um, I had some other question. Oh, oh, I know you can't tell us, but do you know who you're fighting on, what is it, April something? April 13th. Yeah, Dude, they, that's like a week from now. Yeah, it's on Saturday. So, so what are you going to show up and be surprised? Go ahead. Do you know who you're fighting? They, uh, yeah, they called us probably like uh, maybe a month ago and gave us a heads up on it, but it was obviously like don't tell anyone. Um, I was even afraid to tell people I had if I, even though Dan had like made it public, we're all going to get a fight. I didn't even want to tell people I was fighting on the 13th. I was very nervous about like getting sued and stuff. Um, so you know yeah. who you're training for? Yeah, they gave us plenty of notice in that because we obviously know who's in the finals and who's not. So right away, I knew out of the pool of 12 guys who. Joe, like, that's could... loud. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they gave us plenty of notice to get ready for our opponent and stuff. So it's not a big deal like that. Cool, cool. He, right. he violated his non-disclosure. I know exactly who he's fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's going to jail. 
Not How does it feel to have your life in Joe's hands right now? He could just blab right now and just break your NDA all to pieces. I just say he's a very lucky guesser. Like, I don't know why. Like, <laughs> really lucky guess. <laughs> you go over there and me tweet it from your computer. <laughs> <laughs> this is being recorded, right? You guys all heard yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. He's yeah. busted now. Joe's, Joe's contract is over. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> New topic? Uh, yeah, hey, Kyle. All right, so I watch the. Uh, I, I like. I, I love movies, and uh, I love movie trailers even more than I love movies, if that makes any any sense. And uh, I recently saw a trailer. I think maybe Ethan Hawke is in the movie, and uh, I can't think of the name of the movie, but basically it's sort of a futuristic America where everything is perfect now. There's one percent unemployment. You know, it's the land of the free, home of the brave. All they've changed is for one night a year, there's there are no laws. You can do anything you want. No, there's, 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 there's nothing's against the law. Go hog wild, and and uh, and basically, this guy and his family are locked up in their house, and uh, you know, to hide from the murderous, rampaging psycho people. And uh, his daughter opens the door and lets this guy in, who's running from a mob of people. And the mob surrounds the house, and they're like, "That was our target for tonight. Either let him out, or we're gonna kill you and your whole family." And it's kind of like a horror movie where the people are trying to get in and get him. This sounds awesome. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I, like I the, really uh, want to see this. Outside. Yeah, it's it's it looks really good, and all the all of the like the the crazy mob are all wearing these fucked up like bunny masks and shit. It's 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 a really yeah, good. It sounds exactly good. like the strangers. It, it sounds a bit like the strangers. I'll admit. But no. but it's what's the name? Of it? oh. Is the movie out? No, it's not out. You're, are they in like this safe room? Like um, they like, ha- they have a how their house is like locked down with like this super security system. How's the strangers? Is that good? It's basically the same thing, but with a teenage girl. But I don't really know if it's, it's called the Purge. The Purge. That is the name of the movie. And those masks are fucked up. Fuck that. Not seeing it. <laughs> I don't do scary I'll tell you movies, a movie dude. I want to see. Have you seen that After Earth shit with uh, Will Smith yet? After Earth? What? Yeah, it's called After Earth. The Purge. That, this this looks like something I want to see. And I don't yeah. know what's wrong with Lefty. There's no black people in the whole movie. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> uh, you know... <laughs> you're lucky I'm getting paid to be here, damn it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it Not much, like- but it's there. It, it looks like an interesting concept for a movie, though. I, I, w- I was like, huh, all right, all right. It really does. Yeah. I, so, Kyle, in this world where the one night a year you can do anything, are you the attacker or the defender? Uh, I'm definitely the defender um, because I, 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 feel like, I feel like that would be more fun, you know, setting up the defensive perimeter and all that stuff and, and you know, hoping that somebody would come after you, I guess. Yeah, but would, you beat that be down when all, all it comes after you is like crackheads trying to steal your shit and you're shooting them down. Well, I mean, if, if that's what it comes down to, you got to defend yourself. But I wouldn't be like roaming the streets, you know. Now, what happens the next day? Do you have like a paddy wagon come by picking up bodies? I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. There goes Wayne's trying to break the realism off the bat. They're making an iRobot 2. I just saw that is on said, IMDb. It? That's what they say. Then I'll watch IMDb. it. It's a, that was a that was an underrated was that was was that movie well revered when it came out? It was in my opinion. I loved it. I, yeah, I, I thought, thought it was great. really good. I thought I, thought I, I think I cried actually because that robot was so sad. Oh, ooh, I had it mixed up. I was thinking of the Will Smith movie. Uh, it is the Will Smith movie. Oh, what's the one with the little boy? That's oh that's yeah, that, I Steel cried at that one too. AI? Maybe I cry at too many movies. I, I always cry at the robot movies actually. Someone I feel sorry play the, the music. Jesus. Will Smith is down <laughs> for some sequels here in the next couple years. What's what else is he making? You got iRobot 2, Hancock 2, Bad Boys 3. He's making a Hancock. I'd a Hancock like to see that. That was a yeah. great movie. Yeah, it was great. I, I keep having this argument with one of my friends, and, and they think Will Smith is a shitty actor. He's a great actor. I no. think he's an awesome, awesome actor. Awesome. I, I don't like him in um, Men in the Black. Person, the person that says Will Smith is a shitty actor is is me hating on Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, I, I don't get it. Cause, oh, it cause, I like that story. Will Smith has done a lot of movies that are, you know, they're goofy comedy movies and action movies, but he's also done movies like Seven Pounds and Pursuit of Happiness and um, uh, I Am Legend that are just really good movies. I want to see this After Earth Will Smith. Yeah, I'm looking to see him that with his oh, son enemy of the playing state. his son. He was awesome in Enemy of the State. Will Smith is good. Another thing that's good about Will Smith is the movies he picks. 
right? If Will Smith decides that a movie's worthy of him, then it probably is. What about yeah. Hitch? And he also did Hitch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like Will Smith is selective about which movies he'll do, and I think that's cool, as opposed to um, Samuel L. Jackson. He ain't okay. working. Really. <laughs> that's perfect. Like, from Seven Pounds to Men in Black Three, he's like four years he took off. Is that right? Yeah, he's got to do something with all that money. What is he gonna do? <laughs> Can't keep working. Oh yeah, and also uh, along with Hitch, Wild Wild West. Hey, look at Samuel Jackson. He's Wild West was pretty keep good. Working. No, Wild Wild bad. West sucked. Wild Wild All West right, so was Wild bad. Wild West was supposed to be like a blockbuster, though. Like, like it was really expensive to make. It was awful, and it just flopped. It was well, it deserved to flop. It was so bad. Did you hear the whole Kevin Smith thing about the spider? No. <laughs> so Kevin Smith, I have his name right. He's the guy that did Clerks. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So he was writing Superman and uh, he was working with this guy and he writes like the first draft of the script and the guy comes back and he's like, it's cool and everything, but you need a giant spider in it. And he's like, what? He's like, well, yeah, giant, they're, they're the most badass insects on the planet. And he's like, but Superman fighting a giant spider? He's like, yeah, trust me, get it in there. So he like does a rewrite or something and he has to work this giant spider and eventually the script kind of goes south and they decide not to run with it. And uh, he did some other film with this guy and he's like, you need to write a giant spider in this thing. And he's like, what? He's like, yeah, they're, they're the most badass insects on the planet. You have to have a, a spider involved in it. And he's like, no, no, it can't happen. And then sure enough, like a couple years later, this guy makes Wild Wild West. It's a fucking western, and they managed to slip a gigantic mechanical spider in the thing. And he's like, what the fuck? I, I, I you know like what? fuck you, Kevin Smith. I'm gonna do it on my own. This is a giant you know that, spider. That movie almost reminds me of if if, if Django was a comedy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was a comedy. Oh, it was a there were racist some funny bits in there. I laughed so fucking hard as soon as Samuel Jackson came on the screen. Oh yeah, really? I couldn't stop. What was funny yeah. about it? I've never watched a movie had to be more painful from laughing. Yeah, with that powder puff on his head. He, and <laughs> Jamie Foxx called him Snowball or something. <laughs> the house? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. They gonna <laughs> stay in the big house? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Shame understand Samuel L. Jackson. Shame Samuel L. Jackson's got to be worth millions, and he'll take like lifetime movies. He he is <laughs> he has he been does. in more movies than any other actor. Money whore. Money. He has to be yeah. money whore. Or maybe he just enjoys his. his, yeah, his I art. could give a crap if he money whores. Whatever. I'll watch the ones he, he wants. Yeah, awesome. wanna... Anything yeah. he does, he makes his own. So, I mean, yeah, the other problem with Samuel Jackson, if you see yeah. Samuel Jackson on the cover, you can't determine if the film's going to be a blockbuster. Or made for TV movie. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Samuel Jackson does not sell me on a movie ever. George They're, Clooney does Japanese coffee commercials. They all do. All those A-list celebrities Tommy do. Tommy Lee Japanese. Jones, right? Was it Tommy Lee Jones? In what movie? No, no, no. In uh, Japan, in the vending machines. Wasn't it Tom? It was like Boss something. Oh, you it. saw them when you were out there? Yeah. I don't remember that. It was on all the vending machines. It was called Boss. It was Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. Boss. Dude, it, is, Jones it was boss. Soda. It is. It is. Yeah. If, if I was if I was an A list celebrity and some Japanese company wanted me to show up in their coffee commercial, I'd do it. Huh? Yeah. Right. Who so, cares? Yeah. It's, it's kind of those ads. They're just a picture of him. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's just a picture, old of him. picture too. When he's younger. Just sign the check. It's George Clooney. Make sure. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one I'm talking about is George two Clooney. Woes. And uh, like, I, I guess they talk about how like amazing the coffee is, but in he thinks they're talking about him. So they're like, oh, it's so dark. It's so handsome. It looks rich. It looks th like they're describing favorable characteristics of coffee that would also apply to George Clooney. And uh, he comes over to like introduce himself, like to pick them up and realizes that they're talking about coffee and not him. And I saw it and thought, I'd do that shot. I don't know. Yeah. You know, you, your money whore inserts insult sting for a day and the money lasts forever. So fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Until you spend it. Then it's Until gone. Spend it. I don't spend then shit. You gotta spend it. <laughs> <laughs> the same Tommy track. Lee Jones is taking, George Clooney has taken his Japanese coffee money and investing it wisely. Mm -hmm. Probably. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Wait, wait, there's pictures of these, these ads. It's just Tommy Lee Jones like standing next to people. What it's the hell awesome. is this? What it's like? It's there's like a Japanese like a teenager or twenty something, and then there's like a Japanese cop or an airline pilot, and then it's Tommy Lee Jones. Just yeah, 
I'm just, I'm going to put some stuff on the, like, the, so now they're seeing, like, all these Tommy Lee Jones boss advertisements. I, I don't think any less of him at all. I don't care. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I wish I would have squeezed in one more U.S. Marshals movie before he got oh. too old. He did two identical, that U.S. Marshals movie was like a complete ripoff of uh, that, of, of uh, The Fugitive. The Fugitive. Complete right. ripoff. But I, I think that was like I don't know if they were trying to do that because oh, yeah. like, they were people totally like trying. responded to the the crew that was chasing the fugitive Harrison Ford. But I wish they would have gotten one more in because I like that I like those movies and it had Wesley Snipes in it. It had Wesley Snipes in it. It was. I'll tell you it, what was, I'd like to see. I'd like to see a sequel to No Country for Old Men. I I think they kind of. I think it's over though. I think they kind of tied everything up. No, yeah, but Sugar is still alive. Well, I yeah, because the bad guy, there. the bad guy lives. I understand that. Why can't we just keep following the bad guy? Because Sugar's an awesome character. They're, they're doing another Riddick movie? Come on now. Oh, they're <laughs> doing a couple of Riddick movies. We talked about that last week. I'm excited. Yeah. I think Wing's right. I, I'd give that guy another chance. I'd like to see the character again. I'd love to see Sugar again, even, just to see what happens to him. I don't know. The um, He was the new James Bond villain, in case anybody didn't recognize him. Yeah. Oh, he was. Yeah. He? he was a blonde gay man. Like, yeah, <laughs> oh, it was that was that was pretty awkward. I I love that scene though. You know, he's, uh, isn't his name like Javier Bardem or something like that? Ha- Javier Bardem. And, and, Bardem, yeah. But he starts hitting on James Bond, like rubbing his thighs, and he, and, uh, and James Bond says something. Like, he's like, "What do you think? It, what makes you think it's the first time?" <laughs> he just like completely <laughs> yeah, turns it on, life. turns it around on him. Like he doesn't care. <laughs> Dude, he's, 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 bonds, he's, he's a very good actor. Like. I've yeah, said it before. Great. The best scene in cinema history is the quarter scene in No Country for Old Men. My dad talks about it all the time. He loves that scene. That is probably the best scene ever put on, on film. What's the it's, most you ever bet on the coin flip? Yeah, I mean, it's got no music. It's got no <laughs> action. It's got hardly anything to do with the story. Did, but did you, you can watch that it? bitch and never see the movie, and you'd be sucked in from the moment it comes on. Yeah, it's excellent. He's like, call it. I ain't going to call it. Call it. No, I ain't going to do it. I will call it for you. <laughs> well, goes, I can't call it for you. It's not my. T- <laughs> you can call it. I can't call it for you. And yeah, that's a good there. movie. That's 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 one of the better movies I've ever seen. I think it's a little bit long though. You know what I watched recently? Have you guys seen Primer? Uh, yeah, I saw it a while back. It's a. Bit, I, I'm usually really good at wrapping my head around movies like. Um, yeah, that's the thing. I, I wanted to get the Primer people on this show because. Like, dude, so if for people who don't know, Primer is a movie about time travel. And they have an interesting little take on time travel and that you sort of turn the machine on. And then later in time, you can get into it and go back to where you turn the machine on. But mm-hmm. it gets really complicated because, like, people there are, are like, use. There, there's multiple use. And then, like, there's two people who know about the machine and they start, like, competing with each other. And they're trying to get back further than the other one because whoever goes further back has, like, control of the future. And you're watching things play out and then later they explain it in a different way and I watched the movie and I didn't get it so I went to Wikipedia and I read the page about it and I didn't get it I didn't get it until I kept studying the damn Wikipedia I was like ah damn they made that movie for seven thousand dollars it's a very low budget film Um, I mean their time machine I remember remember putting it on and like it looked really good yeah, so they made it for seven thousand, and I think it has about five hundred grand in sales so far. So that's good. It's a success. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's it's a, big... a it's it's a it's it's a really difficult movie to wrap your head around. I, I watched um, Inception, and I was well. I'll take that back. I thought I understood Inception, but as Woody pointed out, no one understands in- Inception except for that guy who gives that twenty-five minute presentation. Did you on watch YouTube. that presentation? Oh, the whole damn thing. There's a dude. <laughs> So I thought I understood Inception, a dream within a dream within a dream. I'm like, all right, I got it. I wrap my head wrapped around this. No big deal. What's everybody's problem? Uh-uh. uh-uh. <laughs> this guy, th- there's a guy, on, there's a YouTube video of this guy giving this sort of presentation, like a PowerPoint presentation in, in front of like this college classroom, I don't know, maybe a film class. And it, I'm guessing the video is 20 to 30 minutes long. I thought and it was he, like 45. It's long, It though. could be. It's, ve- it's a long video. And 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 he's go he goes on and on and on and he has studied this to no end like so far as that all the music in the entire movie is the same song played at different speeds. Every song in the entire movie is the same song just played at different speeds. Hmm. It's ridiculous. If anyone would like to see what we're talking about, 
you can Google search on these three words, Google Talk Inception. So Google the company does these I, things I take called... it you fellas have not beat uh, Bioshock Infinite yet. We have not. I haven't played it. it it's, it's a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ruin it. Oh, oh, well, thanks. But you're saying the plot is really good. It, it, it's, it, it's like Inception. It's really complicated. Okay. okay. Well, that interests but once, me. Once you, get, once you see the entire thing, you will make a conclusion, though, for yourself. Even, be it right, be it wrong, be it whatever. It's, it's like one of those games that hits you right at the last line. It's like, oh. Hmm. Does, isn't you felt story... like you were part of something great. Don't ruin isn't... it, Lefty. Well, no, 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 no. I, I remember pre-release, Ken Levine, the head writer, was talking about Schrodinger's cat. Does that play into it at all? The, no. The quantum mechanics? Okay. Well, it... it, it... Anyway, I, I don't give it away. Okay. anyway, back on topic. Away. Google Talk Inception will give you the thing we're talking about, and that movie was so much Bioshock. more complicated than yes, you it, might infinitely think. more complicated than than you than I thought. And I, I think I'm a pretty smart guy, and I usually get usually I'm the guy that we I, will watch a movie, and somebody be like, "Well, I don't understand. What was that guy doing there?" I'm like, "That's his father. Why did you not get that?" You know. But this movie, I was just I thought I had it, but after watching this guy talk about it, first of all, I'm I'm shocked at how much that guy knows about Inception. Mm -hmm. It's frightening. It's frightening how much he knows about Inception. Yeah. And then wrapping back to Primer, I think you were going to say that as well as you do with understanding movies, you didn't understand Primer. I had a really hard time understanding Primer. Um, it was confusing. Yeah. I had to go to the Wikipedia page. But I watched it again just recently. And on my second viewing, still didn't get it totally. <laughs> like I needed, yeah. I needed... I've lost it. Damn it. Yeah, we were we were watching movies the other night, and that popped up, and she was like, "Ah, let's watch that." And I'm like, "That one's too complicated to watch." She's like, "Ah, now what are you talking about? I'm I'm smart." I'm, I'm like, "I'm smart too. It's too complicated for me." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I don't want to watch it." You Which don't means get a it's, chance. It's four times too complicated for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, honey, you don't understand. It's too smart really for me. Try. Joe, what are you studying? Nothing. I'm emailing myself. Well, let me let me ask this while y'all figuring out what Joe's studying. Mm -hmm. How how long do we wait till we can talk about Bioshock Infinite's ending? Like I've been wanting to until do a video on it for a while. Until, <laughs> until I'm not on the call. Yeah, <laughs> until me and Woody play it. I, but but see, to be fair for everybody, because there's a lot of people that listen to this show. Exactly. It, until me and Woody play it. Kyle, it doesn't have a co-op mode, does it? I I don't and know. It doesn't. But you're mm -hmm. you're doing yourself a disjustice not playing this game right away. Hmm. I, I'm saying. It's, How many it's hours a fantastic is it? game. Well, if if you do it slow, you're probably looking at twelve to fourteen. If you do That's it fast, you might get it out in eight or nine. I yeah. always trend towards the higher of those numbers. And you know what? I'm not a bad gamer. Like I'm pretty good at video games. I play them almost every day and you know, people fuss at me online, but they're idiots. I'm actually pretty good <laughs> at video games. But I still find myself towards the slower end. I think it's because I get lost. I get lost, and I also like to stop and smell the roses. I don't, I don't see it as a race, mm -hmm. unless I, I see I'm it there as a to race. Destroy the video game. No, nah, <laughs> I like to go in a straight line, but I'm <laughs> no, incapable no, no. of doing so. <laughs> I beat the game on the first day it came out. I beat 1999 mode within four days of it coming out. That's pretty crazy. No, the, the games like like Fallout and Oblivion though. That's a stop and smell the roses kind of game. Literally, at some points, I mean, you stop and you're like collecting flowers. You know, it's, yeah, it's, you're, you're trying to make shit to make a stem pack. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're making stem packs. You're you're just running around looking for. I, I I'll tell you one thing I didn't like about uh, um, Skyrim is they didn't have the specialized arrows like they had in um, Oblivion. I liked Oblivion because you had glass arrows and like you got those in Skyrim too. I only saw like they didn't you have any like make special. Them, dude. Yeah, but they didn't have any special arrows, like 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 um like ones that did magic damage. Joe, you have a oh, gaming no. PC? Uh, no. I, got, I have my MacBook Air. Oh my god! Trash. Wow. I was gonna suggest. Gamer, yeah, my god. Call yourself a gamer and, yeah, a gamer and got a Mac. I was gonna suggest that we play um, Borderlands on the PC together. I got it. Since since Joe's, why are we could play. Why, why are you playing Xbox? Because it's a game that's supposed to be better on the PC. Good point. <laughs> I can I, I can probably. You have a MacBook. Do they have like a co-op Tetris for your Mac? <laughs> 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 Do they have Miss Pac-Man on there? <laughs> you can solitaire in that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> 
I bet I can. Uh, I can probably get it to run. Let's play a Minesweeper. Come on, on your on. Mac. You gold. Yeah, I bet it would run. Borderlands what? is a modern game. What? Borderlands is a modern game. Like it's a current. Yeah, but it, yeah, oh, you know Borderlands, it Borderlands 2. Does your Mac have a graphics card? It does. Really? Well, maybe maybe it will run. Do you, it's a, are we talking about a laptop? Yeah. Huh. I didn't know they had built-in graphics cards in those things. How, how else would you use it? Like they just use the integrated one on the chip or something like that. I don't know. I'm okay. Like a, a discrete graphic. I mean, you know, that's what I should have said. You Chose. can go to Can I Run It. You can Google Can I Run It. You can go to a site and uh, tell you. Has Intel HD Graphics 3000, 384 VRAM. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't think like, that'll do. I don't nah. think that'll do. I don't even know. It, would it, do they even make Borderlands 2 for, for Mac? I think he was talking about a VM, like a virtual machine inside it. That was my uh. guess. But um, yeah, you need a gaming PC, Joe. Yeah, PC, personal computer, not Mac. Yeah, t take some of that bonus money of yours and get yourself a gaming PC. <laughs> yeah, just go choke somebody else out impressively and I, I just do a bodyguard job a couple nights. Get your game. Oh my God. Didn't you get like Fight of the Year? Yeah, I didn't get any money though. Wait, no. there's no money for Fight of the Year? That's bullshit. No. I can't even get freaking Fighters Only. So I won Fighter of the Year for Fighters Only. For uh, the Jamie Varner fight. So fi fighters only for people that don't know. They make T-shirts, right? Uh, they're they're magazines. Oh, okay. Uh, in, the, in the in the over in the UK, and uh, they had like a big red carpet event in Vegas, like the whole thing. So I didn't go because I don't want to go to Vegas for some stupid event. So <laughs> they're supposed to send me the award, and it's been like months, and the award's not has not come. I know how you feel. I don't have a gold play button for one million subs. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. yeah. Let's you and I go Jay and Silent Bob style on these guys. <laughs> and then I got fight of the year for my other fight against Jim Miller from the mm -hmm. UFC. But that gets no bonus money. That gets an article on UFC.com. Dana, step up your game, man. All right. Get I, hand I, out some of this money. Quit putting it in your own pocket. Yeah. I mean, they paid me six grand to tap out a guy a bunch of times. So I'll take it. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! That was funny. That guy looked strong as fuck. <laughs> that guy was in shape. How he old is he? Uh, he was like, like late thirties, I think. Yeah, he looked that like guy he, is, I that had him, guy's ripped. I had him built, pinned at roughly forty, but from the neck down, he looks nineteen. Yeah, yeah he, he's built like a gorilla for sure. But I, I still think I was stronger. Hmm. Really. Yeah, I was still stronger. He God, said that, that too. Looks... Like I, you probably saw it online. He was talking to Joe Rogan, and he was just like, "You know, the guy's planted like a tree." And <laughs> yeah. Rogan was like, "What'd you expect? He's a professional fighter." Yeah, well, I mean, I train all the time, so I mean, it's kind of expected. It's like if, if I roll with someone and I'm I'm kind of playing around, then I'm obviously I'm just kind of having fun. I'm not you know trying to be that that much. But there was money on the line, so he he was getting it. <laughs> I'm so glad there was no money on the line when we How, rolled. <laughs> so, so what did you have to do to get the money? Did you have to you had to submit so, him so many we times. Had, we had a five minutes, uh, five minute round, uh, in the octagon with all the cameras. The introduction. Oh, I, I saw it. I just wasn't clear on what you had to do. Yeah. To yeah. Um, and I had to. I got a thousand dollars every time I submitted him. Ah. So, I, I so Joe was landing like flying triangles and stuff. Yeah, just like, like that was great. Teleporting around the poor guy's neck and laying in chokes. Everything I could get to just get it done quick. <laughs> I still uh, failed because I wanted 10. I wanted to hit 10 in five minutes and I didn't get it done. You looked so, all right though. Like you didn't tie. Too wasted time like between, you know, Can starting. you find this on YouTube? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's on yeah. What do we um, look for? Um, Nick the Tooth, Joe Lozon. I don't know. Yeah, Nick the Tooth should get it. I love that. That's the guy's. Yeah. The guy's nickname. Was he, he's the missing tooth. a tooth, right? He's missing a tooth. Yeah. You do Nick the Tooth. It's the first one. I put Joe Lozon in the Woody fights like fifth one down. <laughs> uh, Dana White UFC 155 Vlog Day One. If you just do Nick the Tooth, all one word, it'll be the first thing that pops up. Yeah. I I searched. Nick the Tooth versus and, and, Joe and Lozon, and the one? the fourth fight is us, Joe. Sweet. That's yeah, that thing has a fair amount of views. It's about four hundred and forty thousand views. 
So take that, Dana White's vlog. Got more views than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what should have more views than it does? Jimmy doing his damn shuffle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's, there is a, a, v, a vlog, I guess I'll call it, of uh, Nick Diaz hitting the speed bag for like 23 minutes in a row. Like, did you guys wow. see that? Holy shit. Someone said that I should put up a video shuffling for like 45 minutes. A yeah, it's a video response. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been awesome. You just be like, take this, Nick Diaz, and you go for 24 minutes. Okay, oh, this guy's got, got the blowjob teeth. <laughs> Can you define blowjob teeth for us? Well, yeah. <laughs> most girls that, re that really like to suck dick can it t tend to get that, that pacifier teeth where they kind of put a quarter in the middle. <laughs> Are you talking about people that have a gap in their front teeth? Yeah. So you're suggesting that like David Letterman and such that they like. Yeah, like that. I, I call that the blowjob grill. Now, why does this happen? What? What? Um, <laughs> well, it happens what? when you're a baby and you, they let you suck on the pacifier too long. I I I don't I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like the, the teeth gap that way is when people that they stay they stick with a pacifier too long on a child. And um, they don't get their teeth fixed later on with braces and stuff. I don't think that's don't, true. Don't people lose their te their baby teeth? Yeah, they do. So, but it still changes the gum formation. Uh, I don't think it does. I don't think it does either. Because my baby teeth were fucked up. Because I was, <laughs> I was a wild man. I was biting rocks and shit. I didn't give a damn. Like, like, like five year old me was running around naked. That, that, like, that was what I've always been told that happens that way. Let's put it that way. Okay, I don't think that's. I don't think that's the deal though. I think, no, just, I, I think yeah. pacifiers are actually specially designed to be like orthotics almost. Like kids that suck on them, they, they put their jaws and everything in alignment nowadays. That's a finished Google search, by the way. Is do pacifiers cause a uh, gap in teeth? Wow. The answer? I don't know. I'm trying to find a credible source. <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo the answers is Wings is right source. here. Come on, dude. Wikipedia. <laughs> um, I'm watching okay. this fight. Like, like he's like a three tap outs already in on him. Yeah, and, and that's that guy's big. Yeah, that's dude. He's big. It looked like he'd be yeah. able to pick Joe up and push him into the cage. Turns out Joe knows a thing or two about grappling. Ugh. Look at that. Look at that. It, like, he, like, jumps up on his head. <laughs> I wonder what like, he just I, saw. You can't submit him with that. He's not going to submit on that. Did he submit yet? No, he's not submitted yet. He, I guess he did. Like, why would he <laughs> submit on that? Yeah, that's where Joe Rogan helps, man. Like, it... Like, even as a guy who's who's trained, like, I've done a little training, sometimes I don't always see the tap or see what his next move is. He almost, like, coaches from right, there. Right. You know, what he needs to do is get his elbow further like from the Like a minute ten in the, in the first round, you, you jump up and you throw these uh, this, like, triangle on his head, and you, like, sink the back leg in. Like, what? where's the pain at in there? Because he had his arm in between your legs, so you didn't choke him. Oh, so when there's a minute left on the clock? Yeah, like about a minute, yeah. Watch it. It's in the first round. Uh, this is from the New York Times. Pacifiers can have some adverse effects on the structures of the oral cavity, especially after prolonged use, said Dr. Abhinav Sina. Uh, he's not a credible source. Director, director of the Pediatric Dental Clinic at New York Presbyterian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe he's a credible source. <laughs> so you say there's a minute 10 left wings? Minute 10, so we're in a ballpark. You sure it's not a minute into the video? Into the into the no, fight? No, 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 no. I'm look, I'm look, let me look. I'll give you the exact number. It, it's like a minute 15, like minute 10. Up. Let's see here. Yeah, it's about a minute in. A minute in or a minute to the end? 52 seconds into the in, toward the end of the first round. Okay. It's a triangle choke. Flying triangle choke. Yeah, but like, where's the pain at? All right, you got you got your leg around it, one side of his neck. You got uh, his yeah. arm there. You've locked your legs. So I, what you do is you, you get your legs together and you crush their neck into their own shoulder. And my leg gets the exposed side of his neck, and his own shoulder gets. Basically, you're wrenching his neck really hard. No, it's not that at all. It doesn't even hurt. So wings, you've got two arteries down here, like under your neck, and he's cutting the blood you supply. You just said off. it doesn't even hurt. Right, it doesn't. Doesn't. Why do he tap? 
Because he's going to go unconscious. Because it stops the flow of blood to your brain. So, it, it, but, uh, like a rear naked choke, right? You put your, your elbow under his chin and you use one, like, forearm on this artery and the other, you know, whatever, bicep on this one, and it chokes it off. With the triangle choke, he's using his leg on one side and your own, like, deltoid on the other side. And they squeeze in and they choke off the blood to your head. I bet you wanted that damn arm bar right there at the end. Is that about right, guys? I, I get the arm log at the end. It looked like the round ends and they, they pull you off. No, I, I finished it. That was what happened. <laughs> He's gave out, son. Look at him. Oh man, it's it's if you've it's never exhausting. wrestled with anybody, it's I don't know how to describe it. It's it's like there's a sandbag wrapped around every extremity of your body and then and you just kind of flailed around as fast as you could. You just burn up all your energy in thirty seconds if you're a normal human being. Yeah, if you're not in fight shape, man, fighting is exhausting. This, this guy is it looks like in pretty good shape. Like it, it, Well, he but his cardio's not there. Yeah. yeah, and he he grapples too. Like he was a white belt, I think. But he his, his he cardio is not at Joe Lowe's. What, what was this supposed yeah. to prove? He like, was a white belt world champ. White belt world champ. There you go. In the masters division. What is a white? What is white belt? White belt. White belt. That's the first one. Oh. Like you're a white. I thought it was like some kind of like um, real TV shit. No, <laughs> you're a white belt wings. He is the he is the same. He's in the same class as you. Except he's a oh. world champ at white belt, which has to yeah. mean he's sandbags. It does. It's got to be. It, it, he, he's refusing to progress to a yellow belt. Or blue, yeah. Blue belt. Oh, is it a blue? Okay, okay. They have world champion white belts, like entry levels? Yep. Yep. Uh, all right, so how, how deep are we in the show? Are we three hours, 15 minutes? Somewhere? Yeah. Like, I, I was wondering, like, are you allowed to strike in that? Uh, no, not in this one. Oh, okay. I was about to say, because, like, man... That he was like, like an waylaid you on that triangle choke. You, yeah, you that was like an really, Nah, you, you can't. If you're getting triangle choke, you can't really hit. You can't really punch. But uh, he was getting nervous because I was warming up and I was just kind of getting loose and I'm kind of bouncing around and I'm throwing punches and stuff like that. And, and he oh, thought, I see. I see the gap problem now. He's putting a big old thing of dip in right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so he was getting scared that you were gonna throw punches. Yeah, he he thought that they were setting him up because I think he had a mouth guard. And I had a mouth guard, but I was throwing punches, so he thought I was going to smash him in the face. Like, why is he having have this, like, conniption fit right at the end of the video? Ah, uh, because his throat's hurting. Because I, ch I choked him with, uh, one of the chokes. I think it was the first one, maybe. It was, uh, it's called a ten-finger guillotine. And, uh, it's super painful to your throat. You tried to get that on me. I wasn't uh, having yes. it. Exactly. <laughs> that sounded like you just grab him with both hands and did it like squeeze. I don't. Even, I don't know how to do it exactly. He like smashes your head into your own chest and like, I don't know, guillotines that way. Yeah. Sounds horrible. Uh, yeah. It was, I got him six times in three minutes. It wasn't five minutes. It was three minutes. Yeah. I. It, My apologies to the great Joe Lozon for thinking it well, was hey, five minutes instead I mean, of three. That's every thirty seconds. Before it was like every fifty. Yeah, that's much better. It's much more respectable. Absolutely. Right. I still think you suck. Hey. <laughs> so, Jimmy, when do we find out who you fight on the 13th? I believe on Tuesday they would announce it because the show will officially be done on Tuesday. So okay. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So. So Joe could tell, still tell us now. No, 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 he couldn't because it's I, in the, we're gonna I mean, it I could. I don't, I, I don't want anyone getting in trouble. I don't want anyone getting in trouble. I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't sign an honest disclosure. That didn't make you feel good that you actually have a, a legitimate podcast that you can get somebody in trouble for leaking information? <laughs> I, no, I don't want that at all. Like, I'm just saying, just you have that kind of exposure. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that they'll announce it all on Tuesday. So they'll do the last fight, the last couple fights. Two more? Yeah, this two. This How far is, is, this, is, this, is this ten finger choke? I want to see this. I must have missed it. So I got a question for you. Um, hypothetically, if Josh and Uriah Hall make it to the finals, who would you root for? Uh, I don't know. Really? Because on the show, Josh is made out to be less likable than Uriah. Oh, I see. It's at 215. You I basically take fire. both your hands and push his throat up into your chest. Yes, exactly. They each had things about him that were very dislikable and likable so it's kind of i'd be somewhat neutral pretty much you know like hmm okay uh, sure. he said so, no 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 you can't do that i'm a white belt why do you say that 
Uh, <laughs> heel hooks. Yeah, sometimes uh, submissions below the waist aren't like a lot of gyms don't do that to white belts because they don't always know when to tap. Yeah, like a heel hook doesn't hurt; it just tears your knee. It just tears. Yeah. Your knee. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, just tear tear that shit. But well, right it's up. bad because there's no there's no pain. So if you don't know, you're waiting for it to hurt, and it doesn't hurt. It just destroys your knee, and you're still like, oh, something popped, but it didn't hurt. Shit. And now you need surgery. Uh, yeah, that sounds awful. Uh, I, I was wrestling with one of my buddies one time, and I pulled like the, my inner thigh, That's and dude, groin. yeah, the groin like it hurt to drive for like two weeks. <laughs> yeah, gro- groin injuries suck. Yeah, I, mine was it hurt for ages, and it wouldn't get better. They, the hockey players get it too. Groin injury. That was your vagina. <laughs> no, let me let and me then, tell you what. And then I got hit with a comb too hard when I was hit with, <laughs> it was awful, dude. Uh, you ever uh, bit the side of your jaw? <laughs> like <laughs> wings is uh, your, uh, your injuries are so weak. I have a small start, so I my, uh, my injury, uh, Kyle, I got injuries that that, that would blow yours out of the water. It's possible. I'm I haven't done anything crazy. I just filter. What you got? I've I've had Wait, a half dozen. I've had a, I've had. Is, uh, whole, I fell off a melter. What do you have? What what was your uh, injury? Yeah, but that was a, that's just dude. A, that's that's act, not as not bad as as your gunshot injury wings. Yeah, I have um my injury on that is I have a uh, a chip in the spine and I it also ended up getting uh, arthritis in my back because of it. All right, and you got shot in the knee that time. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's pretty bad. I don't know. I've just had a few concussions. And... I'm just saying, like, I always end up biting, like, the side of my cheek, and it's really sore. And, like, when, before, I can never get it to heal right, and I'll bite it again before it heals. <laughs> it's because of one of my wisdom teeth. I never had my wisdom teeth took out. <laughs> I love that. Uh, you need a computer to, to, to set up a soundboard. You have to do that. I, I, I'll get on it. I, I see the wisdom of it right now. Hey, getting knocked out. How's that compared to getting choked out? I don't remember it. So I've been, I've been knocked out before. I don't know. I did it to myself though. Really? I was on a trampoline and like I I caught like a bad bounce and I like fell eight face planted right into the like the little little. Edge where they put it together, like Joe's trying to cue the music up again. I can see him <laughs> trying to do it. He's trying. To so <laughs> I put my jackknife, my face right into the bar of the trampoline. It's like, bang! I was out. I would, I would much rather get choked out than punched out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's another time I was knocked. I think I was knocked out. Uh, I ran, I like ran headfirst into like a a water fountain. It, it wasn't like it wasn't like a like one with a like with a fountain in the middle and the, and the concrete thing around it. This was just like a a stone pillar, in a mm. in a bath. How'd you do that? I was running for my brother when we were little kids, and I ran right into. I like into that it. one. That's like the Inception. I got you. I got you. <laughs> 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 oh my god! You need that playing in the back background of of your videos, wings. Just just randomly, like if you if you if you're in one of the, those videos where you're, it's kind of a downer type video where you're talking about you know your your problems and your issues, just have that playing in the background real softly. Gonna loop it over and over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, but I, but I strikes that shit. Uh, I forget. Oh, oh, Joe, what do you remember from your knockout? I mean, you say you don't remember it, but you came to and started remembering again. Like, what do you got? I, I remember I remember my boxing coach yelling at me, keep your hand up. I remember that. And I almost feel like, imagine like walking beside an in-ground pool and then someone like tackling you from the side and diving you into the water. And that's pretty <laughs> much how it felt. And next thing I know, it was like 20 minutes later and I have no hand wraps on and they tell, and I just knew the fight didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, didn't I listen to your coach is what you're saying. You didn't keep Yeah, well, okay. yeah. So for, for people who don't know, here's the scenario. He's in Tokyo. He's fighting Anthony Pettis. Uh, he was kind of, I thought, getting the better of the, the hands, you know, for the first minute of the fight. And then his coach screams out, keep your hands up. And uh, Pettis just like lightning hits him on the side of the like jaw, neck, whatever. This is your story I'm telling. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he hits him in this like jaw, neck area, and Joe is just insta down. And um, uh, you know he, he was so That's out. Cold blooded title. I feel bad. 
He was so out, I think his head hit the canvas, too. Like, he didn't even catch himself. I'm looking at this knockout right now. You ever see, like, a baseball batter just get a strikeout and he gets caught looking and he's just all wobbly-legged? So, and then um, I want to say they sat Joe on a stool and then he put his arm around one of his cornermen and they, he walked back to the to the room under his own power and he has no recollection of any of it? None of it. I, I, remember, but like, I remember being in the back room and, like, I wasn't sore at all. Like, my neck wasn't sore, my face wasn't sore. You know, it was nice to not wake up with a broken face. You had a little bit of a black eye. A little bit, yeah, but that was about it. You know, I think that was from after the fight. Like, after he, well, after he kicked me in the face, he stood over me, he bludgeoned me with his fist. <laughs> Dick. And uh, I, I think that it was from one of those punches. Now, do you have hard feelings about that? Is that when do you look back and you're like, "Wow, that was a dick move," or, or is that just the name of the game? Oh no, no, no. I mean, I would, I would do that to anyone in a, in a heartbeat. You know, I mean, that's that, that, that's the way it goes. I mean, it's he's like he's trying to get that fight money, son. Yeah, I mean, it sucks being their seeming end, but I mean, I don't, I don't fault him at all. I mean, he did his job. Like, what, what, what's the deal with the with the right hand there? He like threw the right hand up to stop the leg and missed. Yeah, well, I, I think I was trying to throw my right hand, and then I realized that his kick was coming. I just couldn't get my hand there to block in time. You can hear if you uh, if you watch it, you can listen. You'll hear my coach uh, scream just before the kick. Keep your hands up, and then it's pretty much immediate. Are you better right. keeping your hands up now? Uh, I'm usually pretty good about keeping my hands up. It, it's so he came out lefty. So if you fight a righty, you want to circle to your right. But when you fight a lefty, you want to circle to your left. And he came out lefty. I know how to fight a lefty. But it's, it was just it was everything was backwards in what we've been doing in training. Let me ask you this, Joe. Does it hurt your feelings to look at YouTube videos and like have titles like Anthony Pettis KO Joe Loves on? No, no, I, mean, I don't care. That I would mean, hurt my feelings. No, no way. I mean, it, it happened. He, he beat me. He knocked me out. You know what I mean? Like I can't, I can't dispute that that's what happened. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 I lost a one v one one time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't. I can't live it down. Yes, it, <laughs> what? Did they stream that shit on YouTube, Joe? Uh, <laughs> was there a live stream? Yeah, and, and, and so uh, you got super pissed about that. Like, try to think about if you had played, if you had trained for like four months, you flew all the way across the world for it, and then you got kicked in the face. You know what I mean? Like, it sucks. I'm from the south. I'm vindictive. Yeah, yeah. Someone right. cue the music, Jesus, Joe. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it, it sucks. But I mean, it's it's what we do. You know what I mean? Like, I, there's plenty of other guys that you know I've. You know, they've kind of been put on my highlight reel of, you know, when I do something awesome during fights, you know. So, I mean, it's it's only it's only fair that I end up on some of theirs. Good deal. And coming to, you didn't know anything. It's, it's like some people describe it, like Bubba, I think it was. I, or maybe it was John Jones. I forget. Someone on Tough was talking about it recently. Maybe Jimmy will know. Who said that he got knocked out and he just awoke from what he felt like was the most restful sleep possible. And... <laughs> that was how he described getting knocked out and after that he was like wow so that's the worst thing that can happen and it's really not that unpleasant he was ready to be a fighter at that moment That's maybe it's a different kind of knockout than when you get tapped on the chin because every time I've been knocked out I woke up with a pounding fucking headache and everything was all kind of like dark and gray like when you're about to go unconscious from being choked out still I've been knocked out twice I think there's gonna be. I think there's different kinds of ways to be knocked out. You know, I think there's getting caught just right and you go unconscious. Then there's getting like smashed in the face and it rattling your brain and that puts you out. But yeah. I got hit in like the neck, the jaw area. So I think it didn't. It didn't break anything, but it was definitely enough to put me out. You know, I think it kind of. It, it's where you're getting hit. Like if you go hit with like a baseball bat, you're gonna have. You know, you're definitely gonna have a headache. You're definitely gonna have. You know, everything else. But getting caught with a punch, like right in the jaw. Uh, I, I think it, it's not so bad. Yeah, with a baseball bat, you might have a cracked skull. That's yeah, I think that's that's what I mean. Yeah, when you get tapped on the chin or whatever, I get from what I understand, I guess it's it's vibrating your brain in a certain way and just knocking you out. I think it, I think it has to do more with the nerve. I think there's a nerve that goes in your jaw. Yeah, yeah, that that's right. You're right. Hmm. I, I've heard about that before. I, I remember this may have been Joe Rogan talking about that. He was talking about like. Like, uh, maybe he was on Howard Stern or something. He was talking about getting in a fight. He, he was like, you just tap him on the chin. You just tap him on the chin. He's like, he, he's like, well, and, and Howard Stern's like, well, I'm not strong enough to do that. He's like, you don't have to be strong. You just tap him on the chin. They're out. Hmm. All about catching, I mean, we, we always preach, you know, being fast. You know, my box coach, uh, Steve Mays, is always talking about being fast. You're going to hurt someone with a punch they don't see coming. You know, if if I say, okay, I'm going to hit you with this right hand, you know, you can freaking, you can get ready to take it, and, you know, everything else. 
and you know you'll probably survive it decently. But then if if you have no idea something's coming, you get sucker punched by someone that's not as punching nearly as hard, and someone that's not nearly as good. They're gonna fuck you up worse than you know the guy that knows how to punch. We knew it was coming. Hmm. I'm just trying to avoid my avoid my brain shutting down like that. Yeah, yeah. My yeah, experience has always been my head, except from alcohol. Then it, then it just hmm. hit. You always try to avoid it, but you know. No, you, you can't. Have, you can't go flawless all the time. Unless no. your wings are redemption. Steve <laughs> <laughs> Anders is the guy always putting the flawless gameplays up. Man. <laughs> I mean, I think I thought too. You, Kyle, said, "When's the last time you seen Steve Anders die?" <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's how it is. You know, you'll watch like six of his videos. He's died three times. <laughs> <sighs> He's just really good at cherry picking. I'm just stuck on this. Joe can't describe a knockout at all. He just says he doesn't remember it. Knockout's what happens when you lose the fight and you wake up later. I'm aware of that. <laughs> Joe, you can't describe it any better. Jimmy, you get knocked out yet? Uh, no, probably that where Josh was the closest I've ever come. Like, oh, that's I was right. Um, but like, I don't have any memory of it. Like, even when I was talking about the fight, I remember getting knee one time and then getting hit a bunch. Was that uh, knee to the chest or the chin? To the chin, but like I didn't know that. Like until I watched it on TV, I was like, "Holy shit!" I don't remember getting hit all those times. Um, <laughs> and I don't. That's remember probably getting... because you got hit all those times. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember like walking out of the cage. I don't remember like afterwards. I, I very. It's almost like that. You know when you're, like you're getting really drunk and the next day you're not blacked out, but you can recall patches of what was happening. Like, no, that's never happened to you. I swear it hasn't. <laughs> I but, have no. Trust me, I've I've I know how to drink. Yeah, it's yeah, that's kind of like how it was for me, like in the fighting sense. Like I can only remember bits and pieces of it just because I think I got hit so many times. It kind of just messes up your memory a little bit. But I've never been knocked out like completely cold. Hmm. We need to get Uriah Hall's last two opponents on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's uh? Full on, like super legit. Like they're calling him a contender. Like uh, he should win the finals and take on Silva. I think anyone that can like hit as fast as him, like he's still got to make it through. Obviously, the rest of the tough. Like regardless of whether or not you think he made it to the finals, based on what Dana was saying about him, he still, no matter what, has not won the finals. So it hasn't happened yet. Um, so they're already talking about being a contender. He hasn't even gotten through tough yet. Um, but anyone that can hit with that much velocity, that much power, that quick, like. He could knock out. He could go knock out Anderson Silva because he's just that quick. I mean, he's he's a guy with like really devastating striking. Um, so any guy like that could potentially be a contender. Something about Silva, man. He's not easy to knock out. Yeah, he's pretty incredible. But I, not just his offense, but like Sun had hit him. He set like a UFC record for how many times he hit him, and the guy didn't have a bruise on him. Yeah, he's a pretty unique fighter. Is Anderson Silva still the champ? He is. Yeah, he's yeah. still the champ. He's uh, I, I, I know I didn't want to talk about sports all podcast long, but he's fighting this guy Weedman. Is that it? Is it Weedman or Weidman? Weidman. Weidman. Yeah, and um, I, I'm not sure he's gonna, he's gonna beat Weidman. It's kind of a badass. Yeah, it's funny. A lot of people don't even realize that Uriah Hall fought Weidman like about a year ago, and Weidman. I saw KO. it. Oh, so he has lost four times. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but this is your how long ago was that last fight? Look how long ago that last fight, that last loss was. His last loss was to Yushin Okami, wasn't it? And that was by Yushin like... Uh, Mama. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, he upkicked Yushin or something and got this ball. Six years ago. Six years ago? Yeah, January 20th, 2006. That's a long time in fighting. Especially a guy who's learning, you know, like... He's, he, that wasn't, he wasn't established then, I guess. He, he, he lost that because he illegally upkicked him. Damn. He got disqualified. What was the last? What was the loss before that? Uh, two thousand and four, December thirty first, a submission flying scissor heel hook by Ryo Chonin. Ryo Chonin, yeah. Ryo Chonin, yeah. Nine. Wow, years. Joe, I'm uh, I'm on your YouTube channel and I'm watching you get your knee drained. It's like a, it's from four years ago. He's almost really lost two times, and both of them were triangle chokes, <sighs> and he lost <laughs> one decision. Yeah, Kyle, that's like one of the most painful things ever. I, I was gonna, I was gonna ask that. I was like, how painful is it to have your knee drained? Uh, it, that, that was so bad. Like I was holding my breath and my face went numb. Your your but, knee looks extremely swollen. 
Is yeah. it? Is is that? Because that was at, wow. so that was after I had ACL surgery. So that was yeah. like yeah, like, I can see you're cut up. Yeah. After. So wow, uh, when they when they go in, and they do that surgery. They basically fill your knee up with uh, water, and that gets, kind of gets everything opened up so they can see in there better. And then they they do whatever they have to do, and then it, it, it's all still swollen because of all the water they put in there. Now, why, why is this Weidman guy going to be any different than all the other people at Silver Fault? Uh, it might not be, but he's a really good wrestler. He's got great jiu-jitsu, and he's got pretty good hands. So he's kind of got everything together. you got Matt Sierra trained him. Any a UFC fighter? Matt Sierra, yep. Yeah. Dude, yeah. how big is this needle? It's like a turkey baster. Yo, you're telling me. <laughs> oh, man. It was so bad. Ah oh, man, but but did it feel better afterwards? Did, did was uh, that was that the trick? Yeah, I mean it felt better after. Yeah, it was it was pretty tender before. They went in through the same hole. They put the anesthetic in, didn't they? Or the water, I guess. Dude, the freaking doctor. He he stabbed me a couple times with the anesthetic to kind of numb it. He's like, oh well, let's hope that's working. I'm like, whoa whoa whoa, let let let's hold on a second. Let's give it a second. Like, freaking, I'm sorry you don't want to wait an extra two minutes here. But I would <laughs> like to not feel this needle going into my knee. Was it the needle going in that hurt, or was it the actual? Did you say like, that, or just suction? thinking? Yeah, I well, no, no, I said it. I freaking stopped him. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you sit down and relax for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, like you ever see me fight? Yeah, <laughs> here. And, He's uh, drawing a large amount of blood. Yeah, he took a lot of blood out of there. Do the doctors know you're a fighter and treat you differently? Uh, I think so. Like they, uh, when when I first had surgery, he told me that you know I I would be. I would be okay to train in like six months and probably fight in like a year. And then I ended up fighting like 10 months later. And, you know, they kind of they gave me a little bit more aggressive with my rehab and stuff. And they kind of gave me a go-ahead saying that I could go back to doing stuff. And I think that they they were telling me I could go back to full training, whereas I took it as, oh, I'm going to fight on the date you just told me that is okay, that it would be 100%. So I kind of I kind of jumped the gun a little bit on what they wanted. But you How'd know, that fight go? I lost. Do you think it was related to the knee? Um, I, I felt because I, you know, I, I so I fought main event in the UFC, and I told my I won the fight, and I, but I told my ACL in the fight, and then I had surgery like a month later, and then I I had such like a, a rapid decline in like my overall health that you know I, I basically went from you know fighting main event in the UFC to laying in bed I can't freaking get up and go to the bathroom you know without you know having someone help me and things like that it was just like really really bad so then once I once I did have the surgery and things were getting better I had such a rapid you know increase in, in my state you know I was able to, to walk around and I was I was doing boxing drills and I was doing stuff and I felt like my knee was awesome but it really wasn't it was still it was still just getting back so by the time that I actually fought 10 months later it was probably like 85% but I thought it was 100%, like, you know, three months before that. So I kind of just, I didn't realize how much better my knee had to get. I was just like, oh, it's, it's way better than it was. It, I, I'm good. I can fight. It was just kind of inexperience, I guess. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the top-rated comments on your video where they're working on the scar tissue is, this video is more action-packed than the Rishi Fletcher fight. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really bad fight. Uh... I, I freaking I was uh, I was talking to the guy that did all the grass and stuff on me and like he was laughing his balls off because like he had no experience dealing with like internet trolls and people making comments and like he was kind of like he wasn't getting his feelings hurt about this stuff but like some of the stuff they were saying was kind of you could definitely tell it was like coming close to home a little bit it was kind of bugging him when um I'm trying to think I oh when I had my um hand operated on after you broke it Joe. After Kyle broke it, uh -huh. <laughs> I filmed like that day, like the surgery day. And there's like yeah. me in the waiting room, kind of like you know, a little nervous. And then you see me yeah. dressed all sexy in the gown, and then um, like coming to from anesthesia. And I was like joking around with the nurses and stuff. The nurses were kind of the star of the show. Anyway, I came back like a month later to have the pins removed from it, or a couple of months later. And at that point, the first video it had like 450 thousand views. Like it did pretty well. And the doctor was straight up jealous of all the views that the nurses got. And he's like, my video. <laughs> and there was another one where they tried to remove the pins like in his office. And it was flat out barbaric. He has like a pair of like pliers from Craftsman where he's like, under the skin, just grabbing 
essentially nails and trying to like pull him out of the bone. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, he was really hoping that his video would get more views than the girls. You know why his video didn't get more views? Because he had that pussy-ass pair of pliers. That man needed some vice grips. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, why didn't he have vice grips? They would have been perfect. You know, latch on tight, and then they, they stay gripped. Well, yeah, why he... did you bring your own vice grips? Next time. Next time, next time I'll Dude, I, 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 I'm going to – if I had been in your shoes and, I, and you know, because that – for those of you who haven't seen the video, he's using what do you, are those forceps? They look very much like needle nose pliers. Yeah, they're they're like they're like the tiny. If you've ever gotten stitches, you know there's the little tweezer things. <laughs> they're not made for pulling pins out of bones. You need pliers for that. I, I would have been like, whoa, whoa, whoa! You gotta get some pliers, bro. Because <laughs> what happened was he kept grabbing these metal pins that are inserted into Woody's bone. And, and he kept pulling, and then they would slip off the end. And if you can imagine the, like, snap of that, I'm sure, on the end of it, is making him fucking vibrate. And it's got to hurt like hell. It, there's a real distinctive kind of, like, like he's he's got the needle nose pliers, essentially, and they're bouncing around. And you can see, he like, in my hand, I can feel it. Like, he's poking artery. He's poking, like, tendon. And then there's this real distinctive, like, metal on metal. Like, all right, he's got a grip on it. <laughs> and then, um... And then he, he's got this grip on it, and he, he's trying to pull it out, but it's essentially blood-covered metal, and it's slippery. So it, like, lets go, and the grip, like, you know, snaps, snaps. shut, and, and he's just trying this. We were at it for, like, an hour or so. Oh, and... God, dude. I'd have, went to, I'd have went to the local Home Depot. <laughs> um, How badass would you have been if you'd, if you'd look at the camera and be like, you know what, I'm done. I, he's like, well, we have to finish the operation. So, no, no, no. I'm going to Home Depot. You just went. Yeah, you, you went into Home Depot and like asked the guy for the correct pliers to remove the pins, <laughs> and you did it in the store. That's what he. Yeah, and then so he wanted to give up, and I'm like, no, 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 keep going, keep going. And he's like, I think we should operate. Mm. But uh, I convinced him to dig around for like another 15 minutes or so, trying to get that final pin, and he couldn't do it. So uh, so we went in. He you know anesthesia. He opens it up and where he can see it properly, and they pulled it right out, or so I'm told. I don't know. So, uh, so yeah, and I was way more bad about it, badass about it than Joe was. You compare the surgery videos. Yeah, I don't know, man. Stack them up. Stack them up. Stack them up. <laughs> Joe's in tears. There, it's on his head, though. It's right. It's right there on his head. Or the knee one. Look at the knee one, man. Dude, that knee one looks rough. Man. It did, it looks rough because Joe makes it look rough. Have you seen the one where I pushed the hematoma out of my out of my thigh, uh, my shin? I'm about to. That's a good one too. Is it called it's it's a tuma? Do you yep. do it yourself? Yep. <laughs> Joe Lozon is a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you see the one where I push the hematoma out of my own leg? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> I gotta say, watching people mud is the boringest videos on YouTube. Watching them mud? Oh, yeah, you like, mean like the uh, trucks in mud? Take a truck through the mud, yeah. I just watched this guy like struggle to get like an old 98 Z71 over a hill for like five minutes. Yeah. yeah I, I, 98s, they had trouble doing that. <laughs> no, it's of... not that they, they pretty much have <laughs> the same four-wheel drive system as the brand new trucks in the day, but... Dude, it's just so boring to watch him like shift the tires back and forth trying to get some solid grip. Kyle, did shit. you find it's a Tuma? I had it earlier. I'm I'm having a hard time right now. I, I will find it though. I just found it. I'll post it in the chat. Thank you. I don't want to. You gotta tag your videos better, Joe. Yeah, I did. I did. It's a Tuma Lozon, and actually, I did. It's a Tuma, and it was like the fourth. I didn't know how to spell Tuma. T -U -M -A -H. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this might be a good video. Oh, uh, what am I about to watch? Oh, goodness. How did this come about? How did this happen? Oh, my lord. Uh, oh, oh, my God, Joe. How did this happen? Uh, I kicked something. Or something. <laughs> I don't know. There was some kind of kick involved. Uh, and you yeah. figured out on your own that you can, like, push tumors around? Yeah, uh, it's it's a hematoma, but yeah, I figured it would be okay. I, I they told me after that I could have caused myself to have like a heart attack or something. But. Yeah, you could have you could have knocked a uh, blood clot loose and it could have went in your heart. Well, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to push it towards my heart or away. Away, away. I don't know either. I would guess away. You know they got people that they have degrees in this field. 
<laughs> yeah, I would go to see a fucking doctor. That's what I'd do. <laughs> Get the shit out of me. Now, well, if I had to guess, I would say this is more of an extreme achy pain rather than the pinchy pain of st- of the knee the knee drain. This was uh th- like my entire like shin was like throbbing. Uh huh. Does it go away? Like I'm a minute and a half into this video, and is it significantly less? Uh yeah, I, p- I pushed it all the way out. Push it out to where? Like I, I flatten it all out. It goes flat. <laughs> <laughs> that Good is, lord, I didn't even know that was a thing. That is fucking hardcore. The oh, look on your face is just determination and excruciating pain. Yeah, it pretty much gave me like an ice cream headache. Yeah, <laughs> uh-huh. I'm getting one watching. Yeah, okay, that's enough. That's enough pushing out. Yeah, Joe, I'll give you some credit. This one looks a little more badass and pain tolerant than, than some of your other ones. Especially like, the whole risk of heart attack thing. Well, he didn't know about that. <laughs> look at look at how big like that uh, the bruising is at the end of the video, and then go back and look at it at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I like the guys gathered around. They're like, "Whoa!" Oh, yeah. there's other people doing it to you now. Yeah, Fred. Fred. I think it was Fred pushed it. Yeah, end. it was Fred. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, you like fixed it. Yeah. All better. Somehow that, I just didn't think it would work. Like I didn't know you could do this. All that, all that, all that pain for eleven thousand views. <laughs> I hope you've got a good CP. Oh my god! I think I found Woody in like twenty years. Oh no! I oh. don't know if I'm gonna like this. I'm not gonna like it to you. This guy is taking a uh, a hot chisel and retreading his mud tires by cutting off like half the tread. And oh yeah. So up a little bit better. Yeah, dude. I I, I watch that stuff. I'm into those. Like off-roading videos too. I watched Tim Cameron. Um, it's like, dude, this guy. No, he's he's just got beat, beat up, used up, shitty tires. Like they're almost done. So Damn, what he does is he takes right. half the tread off, so there's still some grip on them, so he can continue to use them. I've never seen anything like that, Joe. That's cool. That's a really cool video. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good. One. Subscribe to Joe Lozon and Cookie Noodles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie Noodles, what's up? <laughs> Joe's got good branding. Everything Joe's got is is Joe Lozon, except for his YouTube channel. It's JoeLozon.com. Like spell yeah. that. I think I had Joe Lozon, and I think I must have done some kind of copyright something and gotten strikes or something. Uh, that's I, I, I tried to have them get me get it switched to Joe Lozon, and they told me that like if you go to youtubecom slash Lozon, it'll redirect, but they wouldn't give me back my username. Well, that's so. cool. At least you got the redirect. Yeah. It's a step in the right direction. Yeah. yeah. So are you gonna get on that Boston card, Joe? I hope so. You know, I. Uh, Who are you gonna fight? Call them out. Make it. Make it right here. I have no idea. There's so many people calling me out. There's like four guys calling me out right now. Really? Who are they? I don't even acknowledge guys like that. I like the way you it, think. Because that just gets them to talk more. I didn't well, even know there were four guys pricks. calling you out. Was, you want to know why? Because I don't acknowledge them. Exactly. They don't have. They don't have enough uh, <laughs> visibility. Their call outs are little mice whispers in the wind. Yeah, I just don't let, don't let that bother me. You know, like, now everyone wants to fight me because I keep getting all the fight of the nights. So, you know, they're, they're looking at it as a way to bonus and, and things like that. So we're, uh, we're not going to let them make any calls. We're going we're gonna to make the calls. We're going to pick who we want to fight. There you go. There you go. But hopefully I'm hoping Woody. Yeah. Calling yeah. So, so since we've, I've seen you torture yours, go through all this torture and like three, across, like, half a dozen videos, what is the most painful thing you've ever experienced? Um, the needle might have been the worst. Really? Yeah, I mean the grass, the grass in sucks, but it's like it's not. Eh, it might be worse. I don't know. I'd take the needle. I, I would take the needle. Dude, like my face went numb. Like I yeah. stopped breathing for like a long time. <laughs> yeah, I can see it, it. It just that goes on for so long. It seems like with the needle thing that it's just like a. Ex- it, it, Tell me about that pain. Like, 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 explain that to me. Is it a pinch? Is it a? Is you don't know. It felt like my knee was being turned inside out. Oh, from the pressure of the liquid. Yeah, like from just because uh, I mean the needle is like sucking out all the blood. Oh, I understand. So it's, it's, so it's Oh yeah, so it's like, yeah. Like and negative it's pressure. Yeah, fucking needle. You know, the thing is enormous. It's not it's like it's a little bitch needle. Sissy it factor. Lo- yeah, I would think they just put a <laughs> tube in there and like let it drain or something. Yeah. Like 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 one of those deals where they like put the needle in and then pop the back of the needle out and the, and the blood just pours out through a you yeah. know an IV or something. And, and some people if like there's some people have like uh, before they have surgery if they have like if they're in like you know mid season for something, 
and surgery's not an option right away, they'll get your knee drained like that like a couple times a week, almost every day. And Damn. fuck that. <laughs> the worst. That's that's the thing people don't know about like professional athletes. The the things that they oh. go through to like get their bodies in just good enough shape to compete when they have to do it. You know, you know all the all the cortisone shots and, and just ridiculous shit. I remember Joe on the subway in Tokyo. This is after the Anthony Pettis <sighs> loss. And he's like, MMA sucks. It's the worst sport in the world. <laughs> 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 and uh, he, you know, there were a couple things here. Like one, he's like, it's all pain. It's all pain. It's terrible. Like, you know, you, you endure it every day. You endure it at the fights, this and that. And he's like, you lose one fight. Suddenly, you know, people think you're done. You know, that suddenly, uh, it, it, I don't know. How you feeling now? MMA still suck? Uh, no, I mean, I still feel like it's, it's like that a lot of times. I mean, uh, you know, with MMA fans, you know, uh, in general, uh, you're only as good as your last fight. So I could have freaking 10 awesome fights in a row, but then you have one shitty fight or you lose one fight. It's like, oh, I, you were lucky, you were overrated, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like people are always, you know, they're really quick to, you know. On, on the other hand, Joe, and I don't know if I'm not able biased. to see the truth because I'm biased, but uh, I swear I feel like you're transcending that at this point. I feel like... There are a lot of people who think, oh, Joe, he's the guy that brings it every time. You know, so he's the, the bonus king. He gets these fight of the nights all the time. He's... Oh, I, I mean, it definitely, it definitely helps. And I, I feel like I'm, I'm definitely, like, I feel like... Like, even I after a think... loss. Like, the Jim yeah, Miller I... fight's a great one, where they're like, there yeah. were no losers in that fight. Yeah, you know, and it definitely helps having, you know, fights like that. But, you know, it, it, it's still, you know, like, it, it seems like that right now. But if I have one or two more fights that don't go so well, you know what I mean? People be shitting all over me all the time. You know, I, I, but I don't let it bother me though. You know, I just, I understand that's how it's going to be. Uh, I was, I was watching that fight and at the end, it looked like you had something, but, but I guess you, you said you didn't right there at the end, but I was just screaming at my tree at my TV. I was like, break his leg, break his <laughs> leg. <laughs> well, so I wanted one, you to win that things, so bad. One of the things that I always like, I don't hate on. But I think it's kind of doesn't make sense is like, you know, so a choke can take some time, you know, even if you have it perfect. It can take, you know, five, ten seconds for it to actually, you know, choke someone out or whatever. So really you need like 15 or 20 seconds at the end of a round to, to, if you're going to attack with a choke. Because the guy might tap quick, but if he's a veteran and he knows what's going on, he's paying attention to what, what the time is, he might last it out. And uh, there was 10 seconds left and I knew I was going to lose the fight, but I had, to go, I had to go for it just hoping, you know, just like a, a Hail Mary submission attempt. That, you know, maybe I would I would catch him and he would be, you know, frustrated, he'd be tired, and he would give up early and just, he didn't, you know, he just stuck it out. But I, I felt like if I had, like, another maybe five or ten seconds, you know, that could have ended the fight. But I, I knew I knew when I started I didn't have that time, and he knew that I didn't have that time. So, kind of sucks. Yeah. I, I That was one of those situations where I, you know, in, in the old gladiatorial days, the crowd would have been like, next round, next <laughs> round, next yeah. round. Yeah. <laughs> would you... Would you have been up for the next round? Uh, yeah. I mean, I would. I would have pushed me. I was obviously really tired. I lost a lot of blood. Yeah. Uh, so, I, but I mean, I would have. I definitely would have kept going. I wouldn't. Yeah. Have stopped. That's that's one of the things. I, I don't know if I've asked you about that. Was it the blood loss? Do you do you think that that pay, that was that a really big deal as far as your you know condition? Uh, yeah, it was everything. I mean, we were pushing a good pace the entire time. You know, from the start to to the end, we were pushing a hard pace the whole time. Um. You know, I mean, I, I lost a lot of blood. I mean, he landed some good punches. I landed some good punches, you know. So I always talk about how, like, fighting, it's almost like a video game. Like, when you get hit, like, your your energy drops. Your health, you know, your little, your energy meter drops. You just get tired. And, uh, you know, so everything is all kind of in there at once. Everyone's always asking me, like, oh, how much blood did you lose? Like, well, they can't really measure how much blood I lost. <laughs> they, they gave could. you the canvas. square feet. Yeah. On the mat. I don't know if everyone knows, but that mat that he bled all over? It's yeah. in his gym now. They gave it to him. Yeah. So I, that was I, I like to man. think of it like, you know how like a lioness will mark her territory by peeing all <laughs> over the place? Joe does Why? it with blood. Like he just bleeds all over the octagon <laughs> and it becomes that's, that's his octagon. That's hardcore though. That's hardcore. Dude. I can just see you like, like with students being, being like, that's determination over there. See that, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> Joe, is it on your website? Uh, picture of the mat? No. Yeah. It's still in a closet. We still have it in a closet because... It's so big that it goes from wall to wall in the gym. But I, I thought I saw, I'm looking for a picture for your website. Is it on there? Um, 
I don't know. Let me look. I, I think we had a, had a picture of it when we just laid it out on the floor, maybe. Yeah, I I like remember it. Maybe you can help me find it. I'm looking for it. Google search might grab it. Yeah, it's on uh, it's on my Facebook. All right. Yeah, here it is. Damn. So it's, it's on, too uh, big that you know we were gonna put it on the wall, but realistically it's too big to just put it on one wall. Like we either have to cut it or something. And I, and I don't want to cut it unless I know exactly where I want to put it and what I want to do with it. Yeah, it's on mixedmartialarts.com. Yeah, that octagon looks small on TV. It's not. But it's not. Wow. It's like, 30 feet across and then there's like two feet extra all the way around hmm it yeah I, I don't know I, I've never stood in a full size octagon but like I don't know because the fighters always seem to be at one end of the cage like close to the they're never really in the center center I guess they are but they're often near the, the edge and uh, it just feels like it's smaller like you can sort of corner a guy but it's it's a pretty big thing I don't know maybe I'm crazy well, I mean, it's also, too, because you're in the center of a big, huge arena, you know, so it kind of seems... Shrinks it, sort of. But, yeah, there's room to move around in those things. Yep. The octagon. <sighs> so, it's get, it's about 2 a.m. here. Are we ready to wrap, or you guys will have more to talk oh, yeah. about? Yeah, probably so. <laughs> Wings is ready to wrap, too. All right, man. Hey, I really appreciate you guys coming on. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Are you going to corner, Jimmy? Do you know? Yes. You I are? Leave on, uh, we leave on Tuesday. So I'll be in Vegas. Uh, we, we leave on Tuesday, and then I'll be there until the following Monday because we have guys trying out for the, for the next season of the Ultimate Fighter. From your gym? Yeah. Yep. That's – so that's kind of cool. Like you've got – so right now it's you, Proctor, and Jimmy are all training yeah, plus, there. Plus uh, Tom Lawler. That's Tom's Tom Lawler. I'm fighting a couple hours in Sweden. Nice. <laughs> Six hours or something. Yeah. Yeah. I I used to have it in my head that you kind of trained there almost by yourself. Like you were the only big dog. It used to be like that. And then we got Tom. Tom was from up here originally, but he, he was, he's been down in Florida since he was in like eighth grade or something. And, uh, but we got Tom moved in with me, trained for one of his fights, and then he bought a condo up here. Proctor's been like, for, for years, Proctor's been like my big training partner. Mm -hmm. you know, he's always been like my, my go to guy. So I uh, know he's in there. Well, then train with us, you know, but now he's in there. So he, he's actually he's staying with me for for this fight. And then, uh, you know, when, when everything goes well, in a week in, next week, he'll stay here. And he'll keep training. So it kind of started just me. And now there's, you know, four of us. So it's pretty sweet. Plus my brother, who's who, he's fighting right. in May, June. So it's good. That's cool, man. Anyway, yeah, thanks again for coming on. Anytime. Thanks, man.